Vishy Anand is leading together with Levon Aronian, and today the two leaders with, will face each other in what will definitely be the central game of the round. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik is just half a point behind the leader after beating Shahriyar Mamejarov yesterday in a very dramatic game. Kramnik was uh, comfortably better after the opening, but then things got very complicated and for well quite a long time it seemed like he was about to lose. However, the Zeri Grandmaster was the last to blunder and um, well, Kramnik walked away with a full point. At the moment we only have one player at 50%. Uh, this is Peter Svidler. And uh, well, since we have just crossed the uh, tournament equator, it means that again the mini tournament of the Russian players is about to begin. Today Kramnik will be white against Andrekin and Svidler will be white against Karyakin. Finally, we also have a uh, Topalov Mamejarov game. Uh, both players have lost yesterday quite painfully, I would guess. And, um, well, we can only hope that they have recovered a little bit after yesterday's games and uh, that they will well, continue to try to do their best. Yeah, I agree. I think we, we have some excitement coming today, and uh, well, in the second part of the tournament, obviously. Anand Aronian today, Aronian playing the white pieces. Of course, that's an extremely important game for both players. And, and an eventual winner of that game would have a commanding lead in the, in the tournament, obviously. There is, one could argue, some incentive to Aronian to push really hard, because should he make a draw, it's true, he will be equal with Anand, but he will lose any kind of tiebreak. Mm -hmm. So I think we will see a rather aggressive Aronian. Uh, in today's game. Well, he has the white pieces and also the tournament situation to some extent uh, is dictating him to press hard. But <laughs> well, I think Aronian, well, also we saw the press conference yesterday. He was saying that, well, it's not like I see Aron uh, Anand as my main rival here. I'm playing seven, seven different guys and I'm trying to make as many points as possible. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think also, well, I think if we go back to maybe was it after round four or under, after round five, we basically thought the tournament has been cut into half. And uh, it's going to be Aronian, Anand, Kramnik and Switler. And maybe again it looks a bit like this, but mm -hmm. just a day after two of the players lost and uh, we saw, for instance, Topalov suddenly being into it again. And I think it's simply too early to draw any uh, definite conclusions. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Let's say the two players on, on minus one, Topalov uh, and Mamejarov, well, I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, <laughs> they are still well, full of, of, of the wish to fight, I think, and, and so they should be. And of course, well, we have uh, clear leaders in the tournament right now, but um, uh, there are still seven rounds to come. No, I think very much so, and you saw the Topalov, and now we have Mamed Yarov. Mm -hmm. I think they're both going to push very hard today. I think and, so. Um, well, they, one of them would very likely be back to 50%, and that player would still have some kind of chance in the tournament. Yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. a bit depending on other results, but, but even so. Ah, there we saw... Vichy Arnaman, the, the tournament uh, leader and, and former mm -hmm. five-time world champion entering. And, well, he, of course, has a very important game today. And, uh, well, I think for him a draw today would be an excellent result. And he keeps pace with uh, Aronian and he will win all time breaks directly connected to Aronian. Well, you are saying that he's basically uh, f half a point, uh, still <laughs> half a point. Well, I would argue it's, it would be a quarter point because yeah, okay. if, if Aronian gets half a point extra, they're not equal, then, uh, That's true. then Aronian is ahead of him. So I would, I would call it a quarter of a point, but mm -hmm. I know that doesn't really exist in chess, but I th think actually to some extent it does, in, does yeah, here. In, in this particular case, yes. Mm -hmm. but I think we will see a very interesting opening battle. Uh, Anand, well, obviously prepared very hard for his match against Carlsen, but somehow Carlsen managed to go around his opening preparation. So I think, well, Anand is definitely going to have quite some preparation from there. And as far as I could sort of interpret the opening battle there, it looked like Anand wanted to play the Semislav against Carlsen. And of course, Aronian will have, the, I think, a rather similar interpretation. So it's interesting to see, mm -hmm. will Aronian go for a big battle there? Or does he have some kind of, uh, well, one knight f3, one c4 in mind? Yeah, no, it should also, it should also be mentioned that, uh, let's say, in uh, um, the beginning of 2000. Was it 13 in mm -hmm. Vikanze? Uh, Vichy won a very uh, beautiful game against Aronian with Black <laughs> in Semislav. Very much so. And there, I think, well, even that was a line that uh, I think, for instance, Anand second, uh, Rustam Kasimjanov, had played uh, this exact move 11 rook c8. And it's obvious Aronian thought he was ready for it, and uh, he very much wasn't. So 
I wouldn't be surprised if Aronian just tries to get a game of chess, but uh, that's maybe not so, so simple. I think also we have generally seen a very light atmosphere uh, among the players in the tournament so far. And still, I think they look rather friendly, but more tense than usual, I, I would say. Yeah, I think the tension must uh, well really start mounting in, 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 the, in the rounds to come. And also, well, we see every day more and more mistakes uh, in, in the games of the players. Well, at least they are, they are swinging uh, quite yeah. a lot. For instance, yesterday also, well, it should be mentioned that Dmitry Andrekin, um, he managed to win his first game uh, in the tournament and also quite a nice game against Veselin so, Topalov. Well, he was basically in trouble with White after the opening, but he managed to play very well uh, from from a certain stage. And, uh, well, of course, he's still on minus one, but he must feel, well, much more optimistic after he, after this win, I, w I would uh, guess. I would think so, but he has a very difficult game today. Yes. And he's also meeting a Kramnik who, well, think basically thinks that he, he got a, a huge present yesterday and instead of Definitely. being out of an, on minus one, he's suddenly in uh, on Shia third place and mm -hmm. very much in striking distance of the leader. Yes. So I think uh, Kramnik during the latter stages of the game yesterday thought how could I be so irresponsible and spoil a good position and now I'm going to be out of it yeah. and suddenly he's back in there uh, and it's going to be mm -hmm. interesting how will that affect him uh, but okay we, we will see here mm -hmm. let's see is it well gonna obviously be we start with with one c4 it wa it's one c4 so mm -hmm. it seems likely that Aronian do not want a fully fledged battle Anon have played c6 this is the exact move order that Topalov used against uh, Anand in round two. But it's also the same thing that has happened uh, very recently in Zurich in their game. Okay, that could uh, be. Aronian was white against Vichy. And, and Queen B3. Queen B3, wow. wow. <laughs> That's quite a move. So Aronian really wants Anand out of his uh, yes, <laughs> theory. Yes, he, he just wants to play chess and he's very confident yeah. about his abilities. Queen B3. <laughs> This is okay. well. I think Queen A4 would be even more weird. <laughs> so well, that's threatening <laughs> on taking on D5 after. Okay, this is. Uh yeah, but Queen B3. Well, we are checking immediately the the database because it's yeah. just an in interesting to see if it has <laughs> been played a lot uh, <laughs> recently, for instance, and especially on the on the Queen highest B3. level. Well, remember. <laughs> now I'm gonna make a move that's not gonna happen. But after Knight F6, D4 takes takes. That's Bishop a normal G4. position. This is how Anand played with black and managed to beat um, Mahmoud Yarov. Mm -hmm. But Queen B3 in this position. Well, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with this move, obviously, and uh, it has a very clear idea. Uh, Aronian is afraid that he will not get anything if he goes for uh, for a very well mainstream theory. So no. this is also, um, um, well, you <laughs> could say a nod of appreciation to Vicious uh, preparation. Maybe, maybe yes. I think, but also yeah. it's it's a sign that Aronian thinks that he's well that his best chance to outplay yeah. Vichy is but is in a well, just in a normal make game this of chess. normal move? Knight f six. What is what is your move? Is it g three? It could it could very well be. I think it's similar well, to what, what they what did else? before. <laughs> Has it even been played before? Well, it has been played. Queen B3 is not uh, is not unseen, but um, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, Vichy will. <laughs> yeah, this is well. It's a well, very interesting a concept from uh, Mahmoud Yarov, but I would also think with with some risk in it. But it could maybe go towards moderately known uh, sort of um, routes. Let's say Knight F6. Should he play G3? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't rule out that you could play g6 here, for instance. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that g6 become, becomes uh, quite, well, quite attractive. I guess also taking a c4 at some point will make sense. But in these positions, not having played d4, I think could be seen as some kind of advantage. And I doubt that this is what Anand wants. But, well, this is very interesting. Actually, if we remember back to Chennai, the World Championship match there, Anand was playing the move order E6, E6. against Carlsen. Mm -hmm. That's right. But here he seems to prefer the more pure Slav move order. So he went C4, C6, and after Knight F3, D5, Queen B3. Yeah, I think well, uh, he also he did a C4, E6 in Zurich as well against that, Aronian. Okay, that, that was that's, uh, that's true. I think that was also against the, Aronian. The move order. I think there he he had a rather uh, bad game. Mm -hmm. I think it was something like this: Knight F3, D C4. Exactly. Check knight bd7, queen c4, 
A6, at least mm -hmm. something like this. Well, there was nothing wrong with the opening phase, uh, not especially. Mm, maybe it's not. I think he was he was slightly label. worse. Mm -hmm. uh, at, well, at some point he was at least. Uh, or at some point he got mm -hmm. much worse. But Queen B3 is a very interesting move. What have Black played in this position? Well, um, right now I'm looking uh, at 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 a um, at a game by two female players, Alisa Galamova, the world vice champion. She's played it with White a couple of years back, and uh, her opponent, Marina Romanko, she played knight f6, g3, e6. That's one of the options for sure, but maybe it's limiting uh, black a bit, and also, I would guess this is what white wants. Uh, yeah, to it's a playable position. Yeah. Of course, well, there will be times where you take on c4 and play b5, and I think for a while, white will keep the pawn again at mm -hmm. d2, which is quite quite key here. Yeah. Well, I would not be surprised if a lot of things are, are playable in, in, in this position. But, but let's say uh, g6, well, looks quite attractive to me because, well, generally, yeah. I like to put the bishop there on yeah. g7. Uh, and uh, uh, there's uh, nothing wrong with it here at no, all, I think. No. Uh, but we are getting... I really think that the general trend in these candidates is to, s to try to surprise your opponent, uh, well, just to get him out of book very early. Mm -hmm. Not but necessarily, sometimes even at, at the price of, uh, well, getting into just some kind of playable position without a big advantage or without even chances for, for a big advantage. But they're just trying to play... But that could um, sort of be what's left in chess to discover. That, that is more like free, que free queen b3, which is a very playable move and puts mm -hmm. some pressure on your opponent and he has to solve uh, it himself. I mean, had... Aronian played, probably he thinks that sort of the main theoretical moves are objectively better. But Anand would be extremely well prepared, well prepared there. Yes. And now, instead, he's provoking a, a huge uh, struggle. Okay, he's yes. playing d4. He's playing wow. d4. I, I actually was suddenly just had uh -huh. the thought, what happens after after d4? And I was about to say that, okay, he's not going to play d4. <laughs> well, no. the problem here is that he has played c6 already. So yeah, the but, natural way would be to play c5. But the queen is on, on, on b3. Is d4 a novelty then? Uh, that I wouldn't rule okay, out. Okay, e3 has been answered immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. And do it's you think going he's going to play c5 now? I think, well, it is some sort of... Um, well, this becomes... Uh, uh, he almost have to. If he takes c5. on e3, I think... I think but isn't he just uh, too tempy down in some, s in some kind of... Um, Weird uh, Benoni. But the queen is on b3. But the queen is on b3, which is weird. Well, here I mean, we... let's say c5. Uh -huh. And, of course, queen b5 check might win a pawn, but it could also be rather dangerous. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think they could have a, a very interesting posi position here after... Very, very early. After <laughs> more or less... N n yeah. No moves played. Uh-huh. It's but true. D4, that is. Uh, but D4 is a, is, very, is, very is a big move to play. It's mm -hmm. quite surprising. That's what I'm thinking. Well, well actually, maybe it is rather sensible just to take on E3. How would you take back? Because well, uh, taking on uh, E3 is interesting. What I dislike a little bit is the pawn on C6, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, yeah. to say that uh, White has done. Um, yeah, it's just no. We, well, this position it seems hasn't been played even. Okay. <laughs> no, this is this is interesting. Hmm. So, can it really be that we have a novelty already? <laughs> a new position. It seems it's very likely. I'm wondering yeah. if you would take an e3. Well, th what I'm thinking is after something like fe3, it looks like a a, a very big center, but maybe g6, d4. Bishop g7, and even putting the knight on h6, maybe it's quite good counterplay. But uh, I'm a bit surprised that Vichy did play the move. Uh, well, you mean d4. that he played d4 and quite quickly? Yeah. Can it be that he was thinking about it? Yeah. I, I somehow, I don't see him sort of predicting. Queen b3. <laughs> no. Uh, well, of course he had. Yeah. I, I would be. Would be surprised. <laughs> But still, taking on e3 is difficult. Is he actually going to play c5? And then after... And <laughs> Do you think Aronin will take this pawn? Queen b5? Well, I like c5. Oh, but of course he has to be sure that after queen b5 check, queen he b5 can... But after queen b5 check, how will you do it? Well, 
For a start, I can play knight c6, yeah. and after queen takes c5, e5. But I, well, uh, he has to consider But I could even play queen, queen d5, d5, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or is that horribly dangerous, queen c7 and such? You really <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we have um, a very unusual position, very, very early on. Well, Something like that could, <laughs> yeah, fire, could, 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 ha could happen, yeah, of maybe course. Maybe just queen c7 and, well, you get knight f6 next and it's an awful lot of um, development. Yeah. Well, does Vichy have a choice? How, the other, other move I see is d takes e3. Yeah, I agree with you. There is not uh, much else apart from that. And I would assume a fr free, fe free. How is this? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, well this, is this could be uh, mm, quite nice for white, I think. Uh, well, the queen on yeah. b3. I was saying something like g6. Yeah, g6, d4. Bishop g7. And, well, let's say bishop d3 or e2. Okay, Vishy just okay, played c5. He did play c5. That's, yes. uh, I think. Uh, Okay, and queen, queen b5, b5 immediately. I think <laughs> this is the logical follow-up, and Aronian is gonna, you know, play it really hard and uh, quick yeah. because what else? Okay, Vichy has gone knight c6. Yes. Um, is there a recent terrible friend we've missed because they seem to be playing like this is? Uh <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think so. I think <laughs> this is some uh, well very advanced uh, preparation. This is uh, okay, Swidler is also probably a bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, what? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What, what is happening there? Okay. E5, queen, b5. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we, we are reasonably sure that right now this position has never been played. <laughs> Unless in some, in some blitz games somewhere. Yeah, this is... I'm oh, quite, maybe quite lost for <laughs> for words, basically. Yeah. Aha! Uh -huh, maybe there is one game where a six has been played. Mm hmm. But <laughs> well, this uh, is. But Aronian is playing really with fire here. I mean, you take a pawn. It's a rather important pawn, but also you're giving. You're upon a huge lead in development, and That's you're right. definitely playing for free results. Of course, it must be a huge advantage to have looked at this position before. And uh, but is it so difficult to, um, you know, to find moves here? Well, I Vichy. Think so. Well, he has forced uh, Vichy to. Um, well, which move would you play with Black? Actually, you would just go a six, but somehow this is pushing the queen backwards. Yeah. But there is a threat of knight takes e5. It's of course very uncomfortable for Vichy. Not, well, he, he um, I, I really assume he is, um, uh, well, he's finding his moves at the board. Yeah, I While think Aronian that would be Aronian's uh, gamble. Yeah. I think if you knew your opponent was going to find something like this, you would find some great ideas for black here. Mm -hmm. that, that shouldn't well, be impossible. Okay, right now the problem is that e5 is hanging. <laughs> that mm -hmm. he cannot give away. So let's say he plays a6. Okay, and well, let's keep the threat of knight e5. And so bishop d7. Just mm. very, very simple, but sensible. But now I can, well, let's say I've done my job. I want a pawn. Let's he go plays back. a6, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he no, went queen to b3. b3. He's mm -hmm. not, uh, but he's not, not pausing to think. <laughs> it's not very helpful to looking, to me getting moves right. Uh, what about this, knight f6? Well, knight f6 is a very natural uh, follow-up, of course. I think it is a moderate success for Aronian. He has made Vichy sacrifice a pawn after five moves, right? Yeah, but uh, I mean, Vichy is an extremely sort of strong player, strong player, and <laughs> yes. very aggressive. And uh, well, I think there was a. A famous uh, quote about Spassky. He had a tournament where he made a lot of draws, and they mm -hmm. said something that, well, this line is not that it can only wake a slumbering lion, it can basically w wake a dead one as well. <laughs> and uh, I think Wishy is not at all. Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's not a, a dead line, no. very, very strong attacking player. You're really playing with fire here. That's a good point. Um, yes. Aronian is provoking, and well, has managed to provoke Wishy to go for 
something yeah. that's uh, well that will be very sharp is going to be uh, very so sharp uh, which is sort of recent uh, lack of, of result in tournaments is mainly due to not doing very well in, in dry positions and things like this and not getting well not a, getting uh, not, not lively getting positions a, a lot of fun mm -hmm. i mean here but uh, well you got to respect Aronian. he's just playing his kind of chess against everybody and he will he will really take it uh, from there but it is kind of amazing and this is also the way you get into well, losing in 20 moves with uh, with well with, with both colors i would say in this position yeah, what are you doing after knight f6 I will. I really suggest that we just wait for what Aronian yeah. does. <laughs> Let's say ED4. How e4? is E4? Can you play D5 now? Maybe, well, maybe you, you have to. You have to. Else, uh, yeah. The else, it's gonna be good. But yes, D5 is is the move, most likely. But and now uh, you take on F3. Yeah, take on C6. Uh, it's not. It's not clear to me, but it's... <laughs> so you're saying EF3, DC6... And here Black has to make some s well, reasonably strong move. Yeah. Bishop C5 is how, you know, one would play it aggressively. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, Vichy has to take some, some gamble here. And no, Aronian apparently has evaluated this as a... <laughs> As playable. Yeah, and as a as a reasonable gamble. Mm -hmm. But oh, you think he actually could think this position is, is quite good? But mm -hmm. let's let's say e4 could be good. Mm -hmm. but how bad would it be just to take on on d4? Wouldn't you have reasonable compensation here? Maybe. Well, my fear is so that uh, for for black is that um, well, white will quickly uh, just. Uh, put his bishop on e2 and short castle. And then he's just a pawn up. You have to do something quickly as black well, as well. You're a pawn up. In a, but I still think there will be reasonable compensation. A knight is coming to c5 and such. But there, maybe you're right. that This, mm -hmm. is, this is just well, going to be this a pawn. Well, this has a potential of going slightly but wrong. But what else, <laughs> apart from knight f6, could he be thinking about? Knight f6? Well, he has... Uh, I wouldn't even call it lead in, de in development, but... He has uh, some space, Vichy, and yeah. uh, he should, uh, well, he should take his pieces out as soon as possible and, uh, well, and play actively. That's the only way to play this position. Mm -hmm. Well, you could also play a move like bishop e7. It is very much less fun, but the idea would be take e4. Mm -hmm. And then d5, the idea should be I have knight a5 and there's no queen e3 with mm -hmm. a pin. I understand. Well, there could be queen c3 and both g saying is having it as b4. It is a mess. Mm -hmm. But I really like knight f6 much more. Of course, yeah. Vichy's problem is that he has to not only look at the position with his own eyes, but also to a certain extent with his opponent's eyes and understand what, it, what is it that Aronian has evaluated as, um, well, playable and mm -hmm. uh, what is it that Aronian is aiming at in this game? Yeah, I would say this is the first time in the tournament where Wishy doesn't have a, an extremely safe uh, position. Yeah. Well, so far I think Vichy has been playing excellent chess and I think today he's also made only good moves and could have a very promising position. Mm -hmm. But he's actually being forced to play something very, very aggressive here. And, um, well, that could be good or it could be bad for him. What about something like bishop c5? You really want to protect. Okay. That's exactly what he has done. That's what he has done. Done. Mm -hmm. Now... Bishop c5. He's well, this is a practical move. I think he simply believes that he's going to have very decent compensation. Mm -hmm. I think what Aronian will do now is to play d3 and e4. Something or you think that he would play... But g3 looks so scary. No, g3 looks... No, but, you, but can you... Bad, How I is bishop e2? I thought bishop e2 knight f6. And I was wondering if d3 is a threat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe also if Wishy allows himself to have a lot of look at the other boards, maybe we should do the same. Actually, maybe we yeah, should. Yeah. Well, we should obviously, we're we going to come back, back to this uh, game again and again <laughs> very often. <laughs> and I think if a move will be played, we will even tell you. But let's have a look at Kramnik and Dwykin. Mm -hmm. Let's I do think, that and uh, see what has happened there. 
Okay, here we we are a bit back to well chess to chess, chess again. <laughs> yes, uh, Kramnik has played the the nice central move d4, yes. which we've implied to by d5, and c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, a6. Mm -hmm. Is the a6 slav a surprise by Andriken or no? I don't. No, uh, I, I don't think so. He's no. he's even aimed at it uh, in in his game. I forgot Kramnik, against whom. Kramnik has played. <laughs> Five G three. That is. That's a very uh, ambitious way to play it. I think. Very much so. Mm -hmm. The the point is that he's not afraid to sacrifice the pawn on C four, and he knows but that. You think so? You think if Andraikin takes this pawn, you think he? I think he's going to play A four and, and sort of. Well. Try and get it back, or you think? I don't know if he has taken it yet. No, <laughs> no. I think there is even some theory after E six, and now. I think Bishop G2 at times lead to some endings, and I think even yeah. Cheparinov, um, Topalov second, has played something like, like this, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and, and played for attack. Yep, that's true. And somehow, I doubt that that is what Kramnik wants, but it's it's a bit interesting that Andraikin is thinking already. Well, this position after A6, of course, even if it's one of his main systems, here White has. A mass of moves. Uh, for sure. uh, well, and G3 is in yeah. no way the most uh, popular no. among them. No, A6 is an interesting sort of prophylactic attempt, but of course, playing something that slow do give White uh, a number of options. But I think it G3, has H3 has even been played. Well, H3 I haven't seen, I have to admit. <laughs> but I, uh, well, Bishop G5 used to be, well, I think Bishop G5 used to be the first attempt by White when yeah. it just came into fashion and For it was sure. considered that A6, well, you cannot really play like this well, with Black. I think black. there was some games Anand against uh, Drev, I think. I think, well, you were probably thinking about some very this was sh sharp, a very sharp, sharp wild lines. line. I remember I was yes, looking yes, at uh, takes, many, takes. many years ago. Yeah. And there has been some fascinating games here. Yes, exactly. Here, mm -hmm. um, yes. But somehow, I think it has been concluded, black is actually quite okay there. Mm -hmm. So trying to sort of refute A6 by Im immediately attacking hasn't been uh, so successful. Mm -hmm. But G3 is interesting. Ah, here we see a rather young spectator. Yeah, and also think. in the background, we, we see Maxim Matlakov. This ah. is a young player from St. Petersburg, a very strong player, and he's uh, also Peter Swidler's uh, second, second here. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think mm. he's, well, uh, he's probably over 2,700. That uh, sounds very, yeah, so, very so he c well. <laughs> yeah. I think he was also his second in uh, um, the London Candidates Tournament last year, right? Uh, I think so. I Together think so. with Nikita Vitukov, who's yes. also from St. Petersburg, mm -hmm. they are, uh, well, uh, Sidla has, has, has a good, uh, strong team of seconds, They're definitely. Very much so. And, uh, no, I think also they have been doing a good job. Uh, Swidler has, well, partly gotten good positions, but also very interesting positions. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, but okay, G3, not too much has uh, happened here, though. Should we? Well, you, you spoke about Switzerland. Why don't uh, not have a look at his game? Yes, at his preparation today. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> and we have it here. Switzerland white against Kayakin. And this has been knight f3, knight f6, g3. I mm -hmm. think Switzerland has played e4 early on this tournament, and definitely also c4 against Kramnik, and, and now knight f3 and, mm -hmm. and g3. Uh -huh. Well, you see, he's, he's doing quite some work on the <laughs> openings. <laughs> Yeah, or, 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 or too little, <laughs> or none at all. I, but I, I think uh, I think it's I the think, the, I la think la 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 I think he's no. really trying to surprise, and mm -hmm. he feels very confident in in playing uh, interesting chess. Aronian has played the move d3 as we as we kind of expected. But mm -hmm. uh, well, let's do a tour of um, yep. the, the various games, and then we'll return to maybe well the leaders' games at least, and mm -hmm. I guess also the center of attention. So g3 d5. Bishop d2, e6, castling bishop e7. And now we played the interesting move d3. Mm -hmm. Well, quite often white would, for instance, play c4 castles and now d4, and we would get back to the main line of the Catalan. Mm -hmm. But Switler is playing it's it more aggress mm -hmm. aggressively. And if I remember correctly, I think somebody, and it could have been Grishuk, was playing this move order, or this concept at least, against um, Kayakin. Mm -hmm. in in Beijing in the uh, Sport Accord World Mind Games last December. So d3, c5, e4, knight c6, and now queen to e2. This is a very interesting move, queen e2. Mm -hmm. Normally, white would be putting the, the knight on, on d2 in, in this kind of position and play what we call a pure king, king's Indian attack. But Swidler is waiting with that. He's played 
castling e5 and now knight d7 mm -hmm. here i think also actually this is quite an interesting move and then after c4 you want to play knight c7 and even the move b5 later yeah. i think this exact setup was played by my compatriot Kurt Hansen at some point, and uh, he thought it was interesting to put the knight on, on e instead of d7. But putting it on d7 is, is more common. And well, things are actually developing in a clear direction here. c4, Kayakin played d4, and Switler has played h4. Mm -hmm. And well, I think to sort of explain it very, very briefly, Switler, he would play bishop to f4, knight to d2, and then well, rook e1, knight f1. rook f1, knight f1 to h2 to g4 on attack. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even a more broad line of just knight g5, and you're going to hack through on the on, on the, the king side. Actually, this position, well, you can get from many different lines. You can also easily get from Sicilians with e6, I yeah, think. Yeah, it happens... Well, it happens, uh, it happens in, in different ways. What you, uh, you would say is something like e6, d3 d5 and now not knight bd2 but queen e2 i think for instance bologan was was playing this yeah. this quite a lot and i think even after e4 e6 there is players who would play d3 d5 queen e2 to try to get the, the same kind of mm -hmm. things right that's right but it's considered i think well when um in, in in quite some books and quite some opening books it is mentioned that it is considered that black with correct play should have enough uh, well let's say enough counter chances but he has to well play on the queen's flank and quite uh, actively aggressively as well but i personally have never felt comfortable with black as well on the king's flank it's mate yeah <laughs> and what you're doing on the queen's side well it's just uh, sometimes white can just ignore it so it's a very sharp uh, concept and well, we can see Svidla walking around happily while while Karyakin is um yeah He's taking his I time. I think opinions are, are quite varied about this. I think you're right that generally there is some who definitely says black is very fine here. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, well, the, the very strong player Wolfgang Ullmann uh, of Germany, well, he's lived in, uh, living in Dresden. Mm -hmm. um, he, he has always been happy with black in, in this kind of position. I think he did a game on all uh, a book on all his games in the French, and he's very much recommending this and showing some games where he's done this very efficiently. But I'm sure there's also others who think this is actually a very pleasant King's Indian position for white, which gives a, a promising attack. Yeah. And uh, no, I think this is going to be an interesting game as, as well. And uh, well, I think we have quite some interesting games ahead of us. And I think even the game we haven't looked at yet, Topal of Mamedyarov, also has turned out to be, be very interesting. So well, as, as expected, actually. <laughs> yes, yes. Topal have played one E4 here. I think, is that a bit of a surprise? Maybe, I think he played, for instance, d4 against Kramnik, and it seemed that Mamelyarov was not getting very good positions in the, the Ragosin, uh, both against Aronian and also yesterday against Kramnik. So I would have thought that that's where Tupala wanted to, to aim, mm -hmm. but uh, apparently not. He's played 1e4, c5, knight f3, d6. And now we have a real Sicilian, no check on b5. So d4, takes, 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 knight c3, a6. So, well, it was the night of, after all, that Mamad Yar wanted to play. And normally Topalov would play, I think, 6 bishop e3 here, but he's played 6 h3. And this is this is quite a, a popular move of, of late. I yeah. think it looks a bit slow, but actually it's very aggressive. You want to play g4. And, uh, and long castle, basically. Yeah, I think, well, there's been an, a number of, uh, of, of top, top games there. And Mamad Yar have played 6 g6. Uh, yeah, no, this is in no way the most uh, common move No, but move this is all. also a very popular it, move, I it, think. It, but not so much on top level recently. I mean, I actually played it myself 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but uh, um, and I think I had a bad position before getting in a, a, a trick in, in some way. But I thought G6 is not the most popular game. Could I be wrong? Or is there a game? Dominguez Carlsen in, in, in this line. I actually think uh, so, if I remember correctly. But G4 happened, Bishop G7. Bishop g2, castles, bishop e3, knight c6, queen d2, bishop d7, and long castles. Well, we basically have a dragon here. 
but there is still some, some differences. Well, Black has spent time playing the move A6. Mm -hmm. I think A6 is a useful move, but maybe not a necessary move either. But also in the dragon, quite often white would have to spend time playing the move bishop c4 because he needs to keep the d5 square under control. But here somehow this has developed naturally. So I would think at first sight this should probably be quite pleasant for for white. What mm, do you think? I, I Well, I disagree. I think it should be a playable position. Having played a dragon, I think, well, for a start you can play uh, knight e5 here with the idea, well, uh, the the this point that the bishop is on g2, it really well, weakens c4. I'll have to play b3, I agree, mm -hmm. so I'll have to live with that. But I'm afraid and that mm -hmm. after f4 I'm really going to push you away. Mm -hmm. and well, I'm afraid that white will be very dominating I in that sense, and I will play f4, I might even play g5. And mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if this has actually been, been played yeah. a bit before. I think it was played just a second, I will yeah. check it. But but I think you are right. If he doesn't do knight e5, it is a bit difficult to get something going. Well, well I think he can also <laughs> go to a5 if he's afraid of, uh, of, of yeah, f4, but, but on it the looks hand, it <laughs> less, less attractive. Well, right? I was even thinking b5, and the sort of in a dream world, you get an exchange sacrifice like this. But yeah, you're actually well completely right. This position was played in Dominguez uh, Carlsen. Ah, this is exactly Dominguez yep. Carlsen. Okay. And uh, in 2009. And he played B5. And wow. he played B5. I was so yeah. this thing's about dream world. I will try and take back <laughs> if, if possible. Better. <laughs> yeah. And yes. if Magnus is listening, I'm very sorry. But uh, yeah. Well, B5. Should. Okay. And now happened F4. F4 happened and Rook C8. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it became uh, well uh, quite sharp after E5 B4. Okay. Well, I think the more I look at it, and especially knowing that it has been played <laughs> by these two players, maybe you, you <laughs> just changed your mind. <laughs> Very much so. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, but uh -huh. I, I also think. Well, I, I said it before that I think it's a completely playable position mm. for Black, and uh, okay. well, White has his own trumps uh, as compared to the Dragon, okay. but also so does Black. Mm. As yeah. as for instance, B five can be played immediately. Uh, but B five F four, it still feels like me. Ha to me that white has more control of uh, yeah, the board, it doesn't come out right, but uh, the, the center in, mm -hmm. in a certain way. And it is more difficult for black to generate counterplay than for white to attack, I would say. White, white is just playing very central chess here. And, uh, but maybe you're right, it is very complicated. And also, well, we mentioned it before when we talked about seconds. Mahmoud Yarf is, is helped by uh, Safali, I think. No, no sorry. By Rauf Mamedov. Mamedov, sorry, yes. By Alexander Halifman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I just read that uh, he has three seconds here, uh -huh. so I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I simply don't know who else. Uh, well, if but, anyone but he has a strong second team, mm -hmm. that's, that's just if a fact. If anyone knows who the third is or have any kind of other questions or comment, please oh, also yes, yes. tweet us. Mm -hmm. at tweet, uh, tweet us and uh, use hashtag candidates2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in this position, uh, well, the most uh, it it really seems to be the most um, uh, principled way to play this uh, b5 f f4, yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, b4 e5. No, it's it's uh, e5, yeah, that's very very yeah. interesting. But well, I will stand by. I, I think white should be better here. Mm -hmm. But okay, we still are in known territory in three games, but the fourth one, our, our top game, okay. that has definitely left it. Yeah. Should we try and go back to we this? Should, uh, we should go back to, to uh, Aronian Anand. Definitely. We left you here after the move bishop c5. And, well, bishop c5 allowed black, sort of allowed white to, to stabilize things to, uh, well, I would say, to sort of how get a solid position. Yeah, it is. It was uh, knight f6 was maybe mm. more ag aggressive in this way, but well, Anand didn't really want to enter these complications after e d5, e4, mm -hmm. d5 against an opponent who had optimally prepared it. So bishop c5 happened, d3 was played, and now knight f6, e4, castles, bishop e2, and well, this would be I think a check Benoni with an extra pawn for white. What a lot of development for black. Yeah, it's still, well... You still think a pawn is a pawn? No, I, th well, I think simply that it's very hard to say what it is. As, as uh, well, it's not that often that white simply has uh, an extra pawn out of the opening. And, well, he has uh, less space, that is true. Mm. 
but um uh, actually I, i'm sorry i think the move order was bishop to e2 knight of knight of six no it was d3 first right oh. i think he played d3 knight mm -hmm. of six e4 castles bishop e2 that's right mm -hmm. but how should black proceed here should he just play b5 for instance well, you have to break the... Yeah. You think that you have to do something very aggressive very quickly. <laughs> Not necessarily. Also, I mean, the check Benoni is a very solid, uh, slow maneuvering opening in some sense. And it's not like you can just uh, use your extra pawn for something very, very aggressive but here. That also reminds me, uh, in, the, in Zurich in a blitz game, Vichy was white against um, uh, Aronian. And Aronian played check Benoni against him. <laughs> You're saying that <laughs> he was uh, yeah, yeah. sort of a, a prelude in some sense. Mm -hmm. What happened? Bishop b4 check. Bishop b4 check, mm -hmm. okay. So what Vichy wants to do, he wants to swap bishops and well, I think he so possibly idea is bring bishop d2. The knight to he c5. wants to play a5, and then well, he's going to play for positional compensation like mm -hmm. this. It's uh, well, actually, it's a very interesting position. Yeah. It's an option, of course. I'm not sure if it uh, benefits uh, black uh, swapping the the well. <laughs> The pieces. But how would you continue here? I think also, well, he wants to put his pawn on, on a4, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, you would just castle, I guess, or you want to play a3. No, I think a3, well, it could run into well, a4. Well, a3, I, I will play a4, although exactly. a b4, a b3, rook a8. No, that's fine for black. I but okay, think. you can also just, after a3, you can take on d2 and then play a4 mm -hmm. if that, if, should that, that concern you. So I would guess castling. Knight d7. Mm -hmm. And in case of bishop takes b4, of course you take with the I pawn. I would take with the a pawn. Yeah. If anything, I would think that a move like bishop g5 suddenly becomes an option. And uh, Well, it is an extra pawn for white. But, well, this is maybe not optimal play from, from the black side. But even something like this, and let's say a knight on c5, mm -hmm. it is going to be hard breaking down the, the, the white, po yeah. sort of the black position. And well, you do actually have a lot of compensation here. If it's a, this is the kind of things that are, are very hard to, to evaluate. We will have see some kind of positions that we will say, well, this is obviously good for, for one player. I mean, normally it would be equal material, but now it's just a pure pawn up. Yes. And how does this sort of uh, implicate it? And how, how big is the compensation? It is, um, yeah. Well, the compensation, uh, well, it becomes purely positional. Uh, as as uh, well, it's not like black is managing to attack in any way. No. He, well, the game, uh, sort of the, you could say that the game has slowed down now. And uh, yeah, I mean, in the beginning we were thinking Vichy could have direct compensation mm -hmm. in sort of trying to uh, uh, assault the white position. But, but that's not what he chose to he's do. He's playing it sort of as a, a positional gambit. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, well, maybe Aronian is even thinking, should I go knight bd2 in this position? Well, and knight bd2 is also <laughs> a bit strange, as let's say, after a5. Yeah, you will get in, in, in that move. And right? after a3, well, for a start, I can play a4, but also just if I go back to e7. Well, let's say like this, and bishop. Mm -hmm. Let's say here. Bishop e7. Yeah. Well, I guess you will do castle, and at some point you will play b4 and take back with the knight. Mm -hmm. And no, I agree. There is a very definite compensation here, but it's also. It's also well, a let's say something like knight d7, b4, takes, knight takes. Maybe you will just play knight b6 and you will go in this direction, and you actually have very full compensation for a pawn. It's. Um, yeah, it's. It, it is hard to say also. I think. Well, part of what makes it very difficult for me to say something is also that all our instincts are based on <laughs> this being a materially equal position but this is just a, a pure extra pawn for Aronian and mm -hmm. I guess quite uh, different factors it isn't play here um, 
Yeah, uh, well, it's true. The question is how it is potentially in, in mm -hmm. let's say, 20 or 30 moves. Yeah. Will the, the extra pawn become a factor? Because right now, well, it's clearly not a factor. No, I mean, black has the, the Czech Benoni structure and mm -hmm. well, he's a couple of tempi downs, maybe compared to a nor normal Czech Benoni. But, well, I was suggesting that Vichy should play b5 here and try to do something uh, Very aggressive, aggressive, but uh, that was clearly not his intention. Well, he's given a check, uh, but after bishop d2, I really think his idea is just a5 f uh, and to play for, well, quite quite nice positional compensation. Mm -hmm. But my question would be, how come <laughs> when you are white against Czech Benoni and, uh, well, you haven't sacrificed a pawn, and, uh, well, you're probably a tempo up as compared to Vichy's position. How is it that you are not winning there? <laughs> well, maybe you are, but also, well, Vichy was clearly better against Aronian in, in this Czech Benoni. But, no, but, well, you, you are pr probably better. Uh, you are better, I agree, better. And, but uh, uh, well, you're not exactly winning there. I think there scenarios either. where you would get the knight to c5, but that's very difficult in the Czech Benoni. Well, actually... Because you have the pawn in c5, <laughs> and yeah. now you just got rid of it. Yeah, but in a normal... Check Benoni, um, let me show. Then they would, they would normally play, it, for instance, with this move order, at least to make sure that there is a pawn on c4, mm -hmm. right? Because, let's say, d4, c5, d5, e5. Well, white would often try to put a knight on c4 Yeah, here. they would just play and e4 most likely. Yeah. And, and, and here you can argue mm -hmm. that you have... You don't have a pawn on c5, which but gives us... But <laughs> of course, it's a pawn that has disappeared. It comes, it comes at a price. <laughs> Very much so. Um, well, yeah, normally, I think... Well, the opening positions we have here in the other three games, it was possible to predict them at least to a bit of an uh, sort of... Well, I mean, it would be in the mix. The position we have in Topal of Anand, I think... No, Aronian no Anand. sorry, Aronian mm -hmm. Anand. No one would have predicted. Definitely including <laughs> Andian, sure. and I think even <laughs> Aronian. Well, now he actually started thinking, but this is... Yeah, I think he's taking uh, what is his first serious thing uh, yeah. in this game. Let's say uh, Vichy has already used um, half an hour, which mm -hmm. is fair enough, as he has no, to work uh, out things. I, uh, I think so, and this is... Uh, by yeah. At the board. But this is one of the things that could really go either way. And, well, I'm sure that when this game has finished, there will be commentators and experts who will have some very clever things to say about it. But if you have to do and try and evaluate it without knowing the result, well, what, <laughs> what would you think here? You think this is a genius concept by Aronian or he's pushing it way, way too far? No, I think actually it's, uh, well, I think that it's a good concept by Aronian. Okay. As he gets, well, I don't see a big danger for White. I don't uh, see a scenario where... Well, where he gets um, worse here, and uh, he is a pawn up, mm. and uh, they are just playing a game of chess, where uh, yes, black has so some compensation, but I think it's uh, it could even be more difficult to be black in this position. Yeah, I think uh, also the 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 toughest uh, possibilities um, that black could have uh, chosen. They are already in the past. Let's say this knight of six could just objectively be slightly better for black. And this is maybe the risk uh, that Aronian chose to live with because he was counting, well, that, you know, there was some psychological uh, play there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, this position, I, I would uh, guess that Aronian should be quite happy, but also there is no, no big reason for Vichy to be unhappy with it. Uh, but I would still feel uh, a bit uncomfortable as black. Uh, again, well... <laughs> Vichy is luckily a very good player, so yeah. <laughs> probably he knows what he's yeah, doing. It's, uh, it's just uh, tough to be a pawn down, I think. And uh, well, mm -hmm. eventually it could. It but but could you matter. actually you, you like it. You think that he's taking a lot of risk, but it's uh, yeah. I think it's I quite responsible risk, and you think there is simply. I mean, we spoke about eight, knight of six, but no one is going to play like this against someone who's prepared it. And also, exactly. I'm sure that Aronian has checked it to an extent where maybe he knew how to make a draw or uh, well, something I, like I this. Well, I would really expect that. And mm -hmm. you can see that even from the way the players 
played those first five minutes, Aronian was just shooting his moves without pausing for a second. For sure. And it was partly psychological, well, as, as a means to intimidate your opponent yeah. and to try to quickly look for the ways to be solid. So he could have been afraid, well, that's just speculation, of course, but he could have been afraid of some objective problem <laughs> there. But this point has passed already. Sure, I, I understand, but well, my counter argument will be something like, well, you run some risk, even objective risk, but that might be okay. But, well, to run this risk also has to be some kind of bonus uh, at the mm -hmm. end. And, and you say you that if that's well, the I'm, only I'm bonus... I'm wondering, <laughs> if, if this is, is this position something worth risking for? I'm uh, well, I think we actually Black has simply. a good compensation, but uh, yes. I think you're right, this is a... Uh, well, it's a fascinating way of, of doing things and also in such an important game to play uh, a position like this. I mean, this is, well, I think for, for spectators, it, it's kind of a dream and, uh, well, things are going to happen slowly. Yeah, I think slowly, for, 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 for uh, the spectators, well, the yeah. scariest thing is that if they just play some very fast, yeah. very sharp line where they make 30 moves in, in the first ten, sure, ten, 10 minutes. You are basically saying uh, and seemingly s sharp game, but basically, well, basically two computers just, against yeah, each other. Exactly, yeah? just comparing notes. Yeah, that yeah. would be mm -hmm. not so good, but oh. I, uh, well... I think it's uh, it was quite logical to uh, predict that Aronian would do something different. Yeah, no, you're right. You and think I he's considering king f1 now, just to <laughs> say, no? <laughs> no, I don't no. think so. Okay. I think there's no way, because, well, bishop b4 check, it doesn't spoil anything for black. Uh, really. He can just as well bring his bishop to e7 later. Mm -hmm. I think he's just choosing between bishop d2 and knight bd2, and okay. that's quite interesting. Um, which one he will choose. As knight bd2, it's of course, well, his pieces are quite awkward there, and a5 is a, well, is a nice uh, move afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, be interesting to see how, interesting, how, they, well, how they do it in the next moves. It I will mean. develop uh, yep. slowly, I think, right? Should we go on and have a look at... Uh, one of the other games, maybe. Yes, uh, let's start from uh, the game uh, Svidla Karyakin. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Okay. As, um, well, Karyakin had uh, some uh, choice to make uh, just now. Uh, yeah, we left it in this uh, position you can see below, and um, here he played King H8, King H8, which is, of course, it's also one one of the. Well, it's it's a very natural idea, I think. Moving Wh it. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is how they played with uh -huh. black. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sooner or later. No, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, in which scenario is it going to be useful? And I think. Uh, well, well you we, got, we got yes, help. Yeah. Yes. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh, this was the point. Very. But this was played before. What I wanted to say is that the king on h8, when white is doing this direct tag against the king, mm -hmm. it almost feels like on h8. Something things could hit a bit harder, let's say a sacrifice on h6 or anything like this. Mm -hmm. But also, but well, it has no relevance. His idea was bishop yes. f4 and then f5. Yes. And uh, something like that has been played already. For instance, actually not f5, but, um, uh, well, uh, in, in a game, Sahis Smirin in 1995, after bishop f4, uh, uh, a very strong Israeli grandmaster Smirin, he played f6 instead. I think Sahis... I think he was known to be quite an expert, uh, or maybe, uh, well, he is an expert in this line, simply. And With uh, white. That, that mm -hmm. I have a recollection of that, actually. That could very well be, yes. But f6, but well, uh, he's played f5 But instead. he's played f5, yes, so, so it's mm -hmm. um, not exactly the same. But here we are already in the neighborhood of, well, also being in a new territory. Yeah. <laughs> Just to sort of uh, make it clear, after... Taking here, you would take back with. I'm not sure because well, I can take him back even with a bishop. As after queen takes e6, I have a nice move knight e5. But something like this, I would always be afraid of. Knight g5. Uh, yeah, okay. well, mainly that you have this square. You think he's he could take back with the pawn, or is that uh, is there something obviously wrong with that? No, I think that's exactly what has been played oh, in the two games uh, okay. that that exist. Mm. Okay, and now taking on e6 is. I have the feeling I'm very close to dropping my queen. Well, again, knight e5 is a problem, <laughs> as as d3 is uh, is attacked. 
But is it, you think it's just just like this? Yeah, I well, think you it's could terrible be right. for for white. It's terrible, even. Okay. <laughs> That's what yeah, I think. Yeah, no, of. it's not too too great. So. So. F five. Okay. Well, I am sure that Sudler has prepared this, so we will just uh, see his. Well, he has spent some time. Yeah, I mean, if he's even normal, prepared it this far, but well, no, I understand your point. You're saying this is actually there is some top games here yeah, and, exactly. and what else and it it's a it very yeah. human reaction in mm -hmm. some sense from, from it kayaking. It, it, it has been, well the idea of f5 if you don't take on f6 is of course to take uh, a very important square e4 under control mm -hmm. and uh, well g4 as well. So basically it, it effectively kills off white's ideas to mate black. Yeah. So but it is a very principled reaction I, I think. I think Ullmann in his book well, now I will make um, a couple of random moves, mm -hmm. but basically he is talking about this resource, queen e7. And the point is that after queen h5, you will always have takes, takes, and now f5. Mm -hmm. And you're not in time to take Ang Pasang because of the threat of exchange of queens, mm -hmm. and basically ending should be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure white can do this uh, much better in some way, but this is a common Just defensive sort of ploy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, Kayakin is doing it right away. Mm -hmm. If knight g5, would you take it or would you just go knight b6 or b8? Well, I think knight g5 is definitely one of the most uh, interesting moves here. Uh, knight b6, I don't know, it looks it looks like going very far away. Well, let's, let's try to have a look at this line. Knight b6 and uh, queen h5. You, you just uh -huh. want to take on g5? Well... I think I would have to, right? So yeah, you have to. So this, hmm. and what well, you could maybe even take with the bishop, and after queen e8, you have queen e2 protecting e5. Mm -hmm. This actually looks very nice for white. So this looks pleasant for white. So yes. maybe it would be logical for him to take on g5. Yeah, but I guess you can still take with the queen here. But also, I would consider taking with a pawn and then, well, have a look at this position. You play knight d2, you play bishop f3, king g2, and rook h1. I understand it's a lot of moves to make, but um, it, you looks, think this it looks like a nice position. Uh, sometimes you might even take this one. Well, I if, if I want to win, uh, to do it quicker, yes. Yeah. Of course, black will, uh, will put his knight on a fade and protect h7. But... Um, yeah, I, I would uh, well. I would really think that this position is promising. I, I would also. Say, I think actually, Bishop takes c6 could be a very strong move here. Generally, yeah, also the pawns will mm -hmm. be weak. And you're right. Well, you might be afraid that. Well, it's loosening the long diagonal, but actually. Well, the bishop is completely boxed. Well, in. exactly, <laughs> something like this, and this this bishop on c8 is going to be very very bad. Yeah. I think if, if people remember back to the uh, Anand Gelfand match, there was some free bishop b5 Sicilians where a common theme was, is this bishop going to be good and bad? And uh, mm -hmm. Well, I think it's hard to say that anybody won the theoretical debate about that, but that was the, the subject discussed mm -hmm. at least. No, I, uh, well, at the moment I think that taking on f6 uh, for white, well, leads to a much more double-edged position, <laughs> while knight g5 could just give him a comfortable, well, a very, very small comfortable edge. But then by some logic you are saying that you think f6 could be a better move here. Well, I mean, the, the, that could be the reason why yeah. <laughs> they didn't play f5 no, no. previously. I'm, I'm a bit curious, but Switler is, is he thinking? I think he's thinking. He is, right? yeah. he is for sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no. But I would say after knight g5, I, I quite like his, his, his position. That's, that's, that, well, that's my impression, uh, at least, that this looks, this looks pleasant for, for white. And I would say knight g5. And, well, when you take it, then just taking back with the pawn. Maybe Kayakin's move in this position is knight e7, and he will go to g6. Actually, this could make, make some sense. You're going out of the threat of bishop takes c6, and you're going to position the knight on g6. But maybe you're just thinking at here, bishop f3, knight g6, something like king g2. And actually, white will be quite in time for the for the attack. I think, <coughs> well, a problem with this position could be that black can um, somehow block everything and make sure that each seven is uh, safely protected. Yeah, you would say something, well, something like, like something like yeah, this. Yeah, putting the knight on a fade and really killing off everything. Mm -hmm. How are you going to proceed is not clear. But maybe bishop h five is what 
now, well, for instance, now soon you will take an F4 and play B6. Well, at some point when it doesn't lose a rook mm -hmm. uh, and, and such. But also A3, uh, B4 could be an idea mm -hmm. for what? Yeah, um, well, I'm sure there will be some who will play B4 Just directly B4 and directly. takes A3. Mm -hmm. uh, in oh, it, it it's gonna doesn't be an look interesting bad. To, to well, it, it looks quite I pleasant. think this, this could be Kayakin's idea, but I'm not completely sure. Sure. Okay, we see Andraikin walking around. So oh, yes. So well, let's so have a look at this let's game. Let's have a look what's, mm -hmm. what's happened in, uh, mm -hmm. in his game with Kramnik. Yeah, we left after G3 and... Uh, in move 5, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quite a long time ago, that's mm -hmm. true. And, well, I think I was mentioning that after DC4, the common move is A4. And I think one could then also by sort of try playing the move A4 in this position. And I think after E6 they go G3, but maybe here there is these are the moves. That, well, there is some move order subtleties here for sure. After G3, and Dragon thought for quite a while, and he played the move B5. And B3, Bishop F5 has happened. Mm -hmm. Bishop G2, Knight E4. Well, this looks very, very solid for Black, yeah, I would say. Yeah, this looks very, uh, well, also like Kramnik a typical way to took play it. this. Maybe after Bishop B2, would he be worrying about Queen A5? What would you? Wh why? Why not develop in this position? Mm -hmm. Queen e5 is definitely something to check. But, <laughs> but I doubt. Uh, well, Queen c1, mm, maybe. No, I'm just a bit surprised that Kramnik has taken here, castling knight d7. But he could think that this is a pleasant position for him. Why not? Yeah, somehow just. Well, well the concept uh, of this is, is bothering me. Uh, a bit from uh, the white perspective. How are you going to develop your initiative Well, here? for a start, you can do it in a very uh, common way. You play bishop h3, you play knight d2, and then... Uh, well, well, but... Yeah, but... I okay. mean, you can do well, it slowly. I, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to move as well. So, if I take here and play e6, you don't think black is fantastically solid here? That is uh, true, of course. I mean, course. after f4, I would go g6. Yeah, and of course, and in this position, yeah. what I would really like to have is a pair of knights, <laughs> <laughs> an extra pair of knights on yeah, the board. Yeah, that's going to be tough. <laughs> on the board. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh, so, so you're saying that... Uh, no, I'm just... Mm -hmm. It's not obvious to me how will Kramnik develop uh, his initiative. Well, if he has any initiative. I, if yeah. he has any, yes. Maybe would it be... You think he's thinking of bishop f4, and he thinks that he can attack almost this square with rook c1? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. Well, Kramnik yeah. could do something like that. He is quite good in the Slav exchange, exchange Slav. And yeah, here this kind <laughs> of structures. C7. Well, I think he, he won a famous game against Aronian at the mm -hmm. Olympiad, and he was That's basically right. saying that, well, these Slav exchange structures, they were surprisingly pleasant for white. Well, and and surprisingly uh, dangerous for black. Exactly. Uh, well, I think maybe something that, was the, that you that wouldn't was, uh, That was the biggest expect. surprise mm -hmm. <laughs> in, exactly. in, in a way. So, no, I think he's thinking hard how to develop his initiative mm -hmm. here. He is quite ahead in development, though, one has to say. Yeah, that's the point. Uh, even something like knight g5 he could be considering, which is, I don't know, maybe a bit out of but character, it, but, uh, but, but... Well, are you getting anywhere? So let's take takes. If I go e6, you will and play... And I go, well, e4, for instance. And after h6, you're going to lose your knight somewhere. So have <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, that would be the plan. Or I can play queen h5. Actually, yeah, maybe... I didn't do this very bright, I think. Well, yes, that's a good illustration. <laughs> yeah, something yes. like this. And yes. Well, there might be bishop a3 or ed5 first, but something like this. No, actually, when we go back to the position, knight takes e4 maybe is a very aggressive move. He didn't want to limit himself with bishop b2 and sort of things happening slowly. He's actually mm -hmm. thinking that there is some way in this position to attack and use his lead in development. Mm -hmm. That could very well be. But, uh, as I so must admit, it's not clear to me how, but well, we sketched out of a couple of the <laughs> possibilities and left it to Kramnik to find uh, out if they work. Yes. Well, knight g5 is, uh, well, of course, the risk with knight g5 is that there is nothing specifically dangerous with, no. uh, with uh, black's position, and then, um, well, then he well, might be just left without... Uh, maybe also we sort of built the atmosphere that this was a, a very important game for Kramnik and he uh -huh. basically needs to win it. But he is actually in unshared third place. And yeah. uh, let's say if the two leaders would make a draw, he still have to play them and will be only trailing by half a point. Um, yeah. it's, 
I mean, everything is going to look better than how it looked yesterday during the round. For Kramnik, yeah, yeah, right? for sure. Uh, this this is true. It looked for a while that he would be on uh, what was it? Three out of seven. Three minus out of seven one minus one. One yes, and and uh, really far away from, well, yeah. actually, f- far away from striking <laughs> distance yeah, even. Exactly. So, so it it looked very bad for him. But I I still think though that he thinks he needs to win this game because. Mm-hmm. Well, for instance, should Aronian win, he would be half a point behind him, and he's playing him with black in the tournament uh, uh, later. Yeah. So I think that he still sees this game as, as rather key. And mm-hmm. let's say that, I mean, would Wishy win the game? Right, then he would... St- well, then he has Wishy with white and a chance to do something there. Let's see, here was the move. Bishop to a3. Okay. Uh-huh. That's an interesting idea as well. Mm-hmm. He basically th- says he's just in time. There. Well, uh, um, it's, it's quite a nice move, actually. Yeah, this is. Uh, I assume it's against e6, as well, he wants to take on, on so, f8. Yeah. Uh, it's h- how bad would you say this is? After I don't all? think it's very bad, as. Um, but maybe now it's just going to be the c line with rook c1, right? Yeah. And even though you can take on f3 and play g6, king g7. Maybe white will will black develop. Is, some black is extremely solid, of course, in this position. <laughs> but his position is also quite passive, and white mm-hmm. has uh, well a lot to choose from, you could say. Maybe, but no, e6 uh, is uh, of course let's um, say G6. a risky. Uh, so let's say something like this. Well, you can start with queen d2, so that g6 doesn't even exist. Ah. That maybe is a bit more. Well, queen d2 taking control of black squares. Yeah. And uh, C takes D5 is always uh, well in the air. And uh, no yeah, I was thinking at some point to take on F3 and play F5, but it's not easy to get the timing. It's not extremely comfortable for Black at least. No, right? Bishop E3 is an interesting. What move. about Queen A5? Would you consider that? Well, Queen A5. I really think he wants to play Queen C1 after. But I know I thought else? you could f- actually get this, but maybe. Well, but then A3. A3 next that? will mm-hmm. will sort of um, spoil the the pawn structure and then, well, I, I sort of maybe only contained your initiative extremely for, for, briefly. For a very brief moment, I think so, so too. So actually you quite like Dominic's position. Well, I think Bishop A3 was uh, a nice move and a nice idea. Mm-hmm. And again, well, <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm already, uh, yeah, yesterday we thought after the yeah. opening that <laughs> this position is exactly in Kramnik's style, you know, and yeah. he will just torture Mameja for a really long time, but at some point he lost patience. So this is again, well, what could be said about this position, that black is very solid, but he's quite passive, so it should be nice to be white, and especially for Kramnik. But, well, in this tournament, he seems to be, well, at times losing patience too early and doing something uh, forced uh, on um, yeah, mistiming but it but a bit. But also, you can see. see, Kramnik still continues to be Kramnik, right? I mean, you could argue that he got a huge gift yesterday, and now was the time to be very aggressive. I think oh, he's trying think to be he very, is very aggressive. I think so, but mm-hmm. he's doing it in, in Kramnik style, mm-hmm. uh, in some sense. So, should we have a maybe a look at the two leaders again, and then after that maybe go to, to For a, a short, short, break. short break? Yes. But oops, Let's sorry do that. about this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we left you here when Anand gave a check. And and uh, Aronian seemed to have thought for quite a while, and he played the move knight b2, d2. And Anna has continued with a5, castling yeah. knight d7 quickly. Well, it seemed like Anna has chosen which setup he, he, will, he will do here, Yeah, right? probably he's chosen his setup, and he decided that, well, there's not that much to think about no. <laughs> anymore. And, uh, and it's a good point. He just played a5, castle, knight d7, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm... <laughs> No, I'm so puzzled by this position because, uh, well, I mentioned it before, but your common instinct somehow disappears here because of the extra pawn, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I like Black's position so much, but that's because, I guess, the well, sort you, of the, you, the you image I have, think, I, mean, yes. I would immediately say that this is equal material, but uh-huh. it's not. Yeah, it yeah. looks like a very nice Benoni, but it's, uh, it's an extra pawn. But you can see that she doesn't seem too nervous, actually. I think he looks quite relaxed for a well, for an important game like this. Yeah. And well, well, as strange as this might sound, I mean, I've been his second for for ten years, but I'm not so used to I'm used to following his games. But how but he looks during the games, <laughs> I actually don't know really. And uh, well, I've spent a lot of time analyzing positions with him, but not uh, not during a game. 
But I think you're right. Is this not, uh, it's not nervousness, I think. I think also, well, you can wake up, I mean, wish you up, uh, I mean, with some interesting chess position. He's going to think about the chess contents. And yep. sort. I, of course, something is at stake for him, but, well, he has four, five World Championship titles uh, already, right? I think, I mean, now it's actually a fun game of chess with a very unbalanced well, hopefully, position. Hopefully, hopefully uh, that's how he sees it. I, I, I think so. And, uh, and that is, uh, no, but it's, uh, how yeah. will you do this with what? I mean, I see some potential in the, well, let's well, say a move yeah. like Queen C2. Mm -hmm. I think White would like to play both moves like A3 and B3 to sort of keep the structure a bit flexible. Mm -hmm. And I would expect that Vichy would like to play A4 in this position. And if B3, he would even consider putting the pawn on B yeah, A3. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. No, but what <laughs> I, want this that I, yeah. I want to say is that Vichy will at least make sure that he has to break his structure with B4 here at some point. But uh, I think this is what uh, Aron has to do anyway. Yeah. As, uh, well... There is no risk for him in that. Well, what is the worst that can happen? He will lose well, the pawn on A3, but that's no, not going to happen. No, the worst that will happen is that I put a knight here and then I undermine you with B5 and your structure. Well, it looks very it's aggressive when I put these arrows. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> it's going to take a while. Yeah. Um, that's one option. I would mm -hmm. also consider, I, I don't know if Maybe it's you're right that you can just play some move like that, say knight. But the A3 pawn is hanging also. It's not simple and... This sort of normal Benoni counter play you have, but well, I think White hasn't done it very cleverly here. And also, this is my move, it's not a Ronyan's. So, mm -hmm. so. Oh, what I think about another idea could be uh, to play F4, maybe? For Come White? F with F White, F4, to prepare sure. F4. But well, you would do like knight e1 then? Well, maybe I would move my queen first, uh, queen, mm -hmm. let's say, c2. Or let's say a4, and then. And, uh, let's say knight e1. Well, yeah. normally you wouldn't. I'm not sure if you would play f4 here, but or you can play g3, bishop f3, bishop g2 slowly. But I was also thinking, what about something like this? Because even something like this could be decent compensation, and you would play bishop e6 and b5 later. Yeah, or but how will you make me play e3? A3? Sure, maybe I won't. You're saying that... Well, let's say I play g3 here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well... It's true that black is uh, containing uh, the this one pawn, uh, one extra pawn. Well, uh, there is actually effectively the, the move a three in such positions. And well, but then I would take that. I think sure, but I do get the b four square for the knight and, mm -hmm. and such. It's not uh, well. Now I think we are basically playing blitz games, which but yes, uh, <laughs> which That's is true. very nice. But let's see. Okay, he played queen, queen d1, to d1, but I think it's okay. uh, it's even better as, as yeah. uh, well, the knight cannot hit the queen. No. So well queen he d1? Maybe he's just going to... Uh, you think even he's considering... Bishop g4. This maneuver. Well, he could consider that, and he could consider a very mm -hmm. typical bishop e2, bishop g4. That's the most... So. Uh, well, well, if my point way. is that a3 and b3 is a mini threat, Anna should play the move a4 now, right? Or move his bishop. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to say is let let me make a couple of moves like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, after something like this, you are starting to to play b4. Mm -hmm. But even should you manage that, maybe just take a knight b4 is again going to be quite good positional compensation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, no, mayb maybe the standard Benoni plans are wrong for White. It's it's a very interesting position. It is. It is definitely well. While while Aronian no while Vichy is taking his time here and uh, well we will go for a short break and we will be back um, soon to follow the games with you. See you then. India is the birth land of chess, but until Vishwanath and Anand came along, the country couldn't brag about having any extraordinary players. According to Indian tradition, his name can be translated to Anand, the son of Vishwanathan, 
Confusion with the name started when he first came to Europe. Many thought that Vishwanathan was his first name and that Anand was his surname. Later, Vishwanathan was shortened to Vishi. He learned to play chess when he was six, and by the time he was 14, Vishi was already champion of India. At 15, he was an international master, and at 17, a world junior champion. From a young age, Anand played with great strength and speed. Incredible intuition is the strongest part of his universal talent. At the beginning of the 90s, Vishi was among the best players in the world, and in 1995, he earned the right to play a world championship match with Garry Kasparov. Anand lost the match, but in 2000 was victorious at the FIDE World Championship held by a knockout system. It was his first championship title. In 2007, Vichy's dream finally came true. Anand won a two-lap round-robin tournament in Mexico and became the new world champion. He defended his title in 2008 with a confident win over Vladimir Kramnik. Vishi Anand is the only chess player in the world who has won world championships in three different formats. Veselin Topolov's attempt to wrest the title from the Indian Grandmaster in 2010 was unsuccessful, and two years later, the champion retained his crown in a hard struggle against Boris Gelfand. Anand held the title for six years until November 2013, when, in his native Chennai, he finally succumbed to the leader of modern chess, Magnus Carlsen. A player with universal skills and a stunning defender, Vishi Anand remains a serious threat to any opponent in any competition, in any format. Levin Oronian started to play chess when he was nine, and already by the age of 12, he was a world junior champion. He achieved numerous victories in junior tournaments, and the most significant was success at the Goa 2002 tournament when Levon became world under-20 champion. By this time, his family had moved from Armenia to Germany, and to this day, Aronian shares his time between these two countries. The title of Chess Prince gave the Grand Master confidence in his career and convinced him in the choice of his profession. By the mid-2000s, Aronian had begun harvesting his first big successes in the international arena, the first phase of this part of his career culminated with a win at the World Cup in Kanti Mansisk in 2005. The Armenian Grand Master then earned the opportunity to take part in the candidate cycle. He was soon among the chess elite. His track record boasts first places in the strongest tournaments of our time. Week Anze, Linares, the Tal Memorial and Bilbao. In 2009, Levin presaged his greatness by winning the FIDE Grand Prix series. Aronian is a great team player. For many years he has led the Armenian national team and has presided over three team victories at chess Olympiads and once at the World Team Championships. Aronian is a past master of the rapid game and has scored repeated victories in Monaco and Mainz. As of the 1st of March 2014, Aronian's rating climbed to a personal record of 2,830. For many years, this grandmaster has held the number two spot in the world rankings, and world champion Magnus Carlsen names Levin his biggest threat. We are back, and uh, basically, well, we have a problem. All the four games are very exciting. <laughs> it's not so easy to choose from. Um, yeah, we have a very unusual position in the leaders' game. We have a, a pleasant position for White and Kramnik and Draken, and also, well, in the other two games uh, just as well. So let's just have a look at Svidla uh, Karyakin, as uh, Svidla has just uh, sacrificed a pawn. But Which I think your comment is, is also very generally right in the sense that, well, the two leaders are really battling it out. Kramnik, well... Yeah, Kramnik, well, I think he has uh, his usual kind of position when he is white. Yeah, Kramnik is happy just putting some pressure today. I think he can live with a draw, but of course would prefer to win. Yeah. And, uh, well, the two other games? 
Well, it's somebody who really wants to advance in the standing, who, who needs to do it. So they are, well, I think they're gambling, sort of. They're trying to play good chess, but they're also trying to play very aggressive chess. And that's, I think, that's going to be, well, great fun. And, uh, well, hopefully the rest of the tournament will be like this. That, so, but uh, let's be a bit concrete and have a look at the, the <laughs> games here. We left you after bishop f4, f5, and yeah. Switzerland decided to play the move knight g5. Knight g5, uh, and I think it's a good decision by him. It uh, is yeah, we, yeah, we quite liked it, mm -hmm. right? I think so, because, well, e takes f6 would have given black uh, definite counter chances. Knight g5 is more of a kind of a move which, well, <laughs> which is more one-sided, I would say. Uh, white has uh, quite some chances to attack. I'm not sure I can see uh, what black can do positively uh, so much in this yeah, position. I was thinking about the move knight e7, but I understand it, it's quite defensive and it stopped, but it stopped bishop takes c6. Mm -hmm. But maybe white will just start playing on the, on the queen side actually and be doing very well. Mm -hmm. Kayakin played more ambitiously, you can argue. He's, well, he's attacking the pawn on e5 with, the, well, with three pieces. Actually, you can't really take it immediately because there's rook e1 with a pin. But well, he I could also be protecting his knight from... Uh, well, as well, he's yeah. protecting the knight on c6, and I think rook b8 and, uh, and b, b5 would, f would follow. Mm -hmm. But I think, well, Switler decided to speed up things. You think Switler thought it's necessary to speed up things, or he simply thinks the pawn sacrifice is overwhelming? I don't think he thinks it's necessary, but I think he liked it. Well, actually, I think this is the kind of position where he could where he really has a choice what, mm. uh, what move to make. Well, knight d2 would, of course, come to mind as the most uh, natural mm. move. But, but I think he must have thought that, uh, well, maybe he, he thought just like you, that knight e7 was the more exact move. Yeah. I cannot rule that out. And I he thought that knight e7, well, that Karyakin not making knight e7 is a mistake. Exactly. And that he should take advantage of that. I think Switler thinks I've gotten a chance to play g6, mm -hmm. and it's a very strong pawn sacrifice. Mm -hmm. His point is that after g6, h6, well, queen h5, yeah, I would really <laughs> that's think... That's just finished, I think. It's not completely finished. You can play knight b6, and if you sacrifice there, it's not made immediately. But Well, maybe you can take on e5 even. But yeah. h6 is not the kind of move... It is extremely uh, dangerous, and yeah. I think... Well, here, for instance, Victoria has planned bishop, bishop to d2, king g2, rook h1... You can prepare everything, and I don't see black getting counterplay no. at all in time. So no. Kayakin took the pawn, and Switzerland has played knight d2. But now have a look. Uh, his plan is, uh, well, Switzerland's plan is to put his knight, I would guess, on g5. <laughs> yeah. Which, which looks uh, terrible, I think. I really but, think so. As how bad is it? Okay, let me yeah. go rook e8. Knight f3. And I play knight f8. And no. And in case of knight g5, you want to play knight h7? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think, well, I would say something like king g8. How mm -hmm. are you going to do something very bad uh, to me, actually, here? Well, I think uh, the main answer to your question is that, well, I have time. What are you going to do? Yeah. I can play again bishop f3, king g2. Mm -hmm. Um, well, here, maybe actually knight h7 do start becoming a move, mm -hmm. so maybe, well, it's also me who made your moves, but what you were saying is that if you had time mm -hmm. and you would sort of, well, I'm going to make some bit random move, f3. Now, I think knight h7 probably is criminal, because if you get in this kind of bind, mm -hmm. you're going to play king g2, king you will go rook h1, okay, this is and made. it's going to be made on h8, mm -hmm. yeah. basically. Well, this is obviously mm -hmm. just an illustration. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, but, well, I would say rook e8, knight f3, knight f8 is, is quite logical. Yeah, of course. Uh, hurrying with knight f3 is also not necessary. I could... No. Uh, Maybe you should get uh, something going in the h line. Maybe first I should start with, uh, let's say, if you go back... <laughs> Where are you going to put your bishop? <laughs> yeah, I don't have that many, uh, that many squares. But instead of knight f3, I could mm -hmm. start with bishop f3, let's say, and... Uh, um, but I thought you're never going to be afraid of g5. Aha, uh -huh, that's an interesting move. No, here there is bishop but takes the c6 and bishop queen h6. Bishop c6, yes. Well, I could be afraid of that after I have played king g2. Yeah, so, something like this. So, so bishop f3? Mm -hmm. Well, king that's g8? king g8. Okay, and you're saying that g5 starts becoming a threat. Uh-huh, that's interesting. It is a complex position, actually. And yeah. 
Well, I think we both thought this is very, very promising for Switler, but Maybe it's not so simple. Well, actually. from the first glance, it looks like uh, it's something yeah. that could be. Mm-hmm. But I still think that, uh, well, what he has to do it cleverly. Maybe he doesn't have to uh, hurry at all. And maybe he j- can just put his knight on F3 and even start with, let's say, A3, B4 a little bit yeah. uh, on, on the queen's side. So you think just playing normal chess here uh, sorry well let's let's put the the knight the here the knight on f3 and after na- knight f8 of course i would love to put my king on g2 but <laughs> it's yeah. i i don't have that many squares for my pieces here yeah. but this uh, sacrifice of a pawn it's really well it's almost not a sacrifice you could also play g4 at times uh, and yeah. such and even of I do believe in Switler's position. I think it's a good pawn mm-hmm. sacrifice, but well, maybe it's not as straightforward as... The, the, as, uh, the computer uh, is not uh, optimistic for white, especially at all. Well, it's a z- say z- z- slight zero. minus for... But it says yeah. around zero, and you have mm-hmm. given a pure pawn. That's not yeah. too bad either. No, no, but I think that uh, this is the kind of position that can look uh, quite dangerous uh, for, for a player. And yeah, I think uh, well, I Karyakin th- is taking his time because yeah. he understands the dangers of the position. Well, Karyakin is... He's playing very ambitious chess in this tournament, but I think, for instance, yesterday, he took almost too big a burden in the sense that he really tried to create something against the Berlin, and uh, Aronian was just playing very natural and, well, indeed, one has to respect, very, very strong very, moves. Very strong moves. And, yes. and suddenly, Kayakin was a bit uh, in trouble, despite having the white pieces. Mm-hmm. And uh, But... Probably Kayakin simply believes in the way uh, he's playing chess, and it's it's um, well, he thinks this is the right way, and uh, well, good things are, are gonna happen at some point. Yeah, I think that that he tried uh, well to be uh, ambitious yesterday makes a lot of sense considering his situation in the tournament. He badly needed to try to win against uh, mm-hmm. someone, and yeah. well. He should use his every wide game for that, obviously. Let's say, uh, well, we could check uh, Topalov, uh, Mamejarov. Definitely. Now, as we haven't s- uh, seen it's this game for a while. It's been a while since we've mm-hmm. been there, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, here, yes, we were discussing that in this position, uh, Black has played uh, B5 previously in the game uh, Dominguez Carlson. Dominguez Carlson, mm-hmm. yes. But Mamejarov did something else, I think. He played Rook C8 C8. straight away. It looks very logical, well, I would say. Very. And Topalov, well, as I, I sort of spoke of, he's just going to play a very, very central strategy. So he played f4, and he will simply say that his pieces are very well placed. It's really up to black to create counterplay mm-hmm. here. And, uh, well, Mamed Yarov did that s- straight away. He played knight a5, which is, well, heavily threatening to, to invade on c4. So white's hand is pretty forced. He has to play b3. Mm-hmm. And queen c7... Well, that's also attacking uh, this knight here, and I would be surprised if king b2 was a good move. So he's played knight d2, e2, defending it, and Mamed Yav has followed up by b5. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that you are quite optimistic about white's position, but I still think that nothing wrong with blacks. It is very difficult uh, for me to say, but it is true. It's not obvious for me how should white proceed in this position. Mm-hmm. Also, well, B4 could be, could be a legitimate idea as... as uh yeah, what would happen after G5? Because if knight h5, I mm-hmm. w- think I would be happy about playing knight d5. But is your idea B4 here? Well, B4 is an option. And maybe a, a good one. Uh-huh. I somehow... No, B4 is an... Ac- well, th- that's what you have to do. This is just going to mm-hmm. be excellent for black, right? Because you're going to get to take back on f6 next move. So that should be huge. Mm-hmm. And, well, knight d5, we will, we will happily no, this exchange. Is, yes, this is not so, so good. This looks like a very good interpolation by, by, by black. But, but what are you going to do then? Yeah, well, you see, Topalov also is asking yeah, himself, well, he's the same asking himself that question. And if you look at the clock times, Topalov has actually spent considerably more time. That's right. So this well, is yes, uh, well, I think the burden is on him also in this position. No, it very much is so. And well, Mohamed Yaffa found a very nice way of, of putting counterplay. I actually, yeah, it's... Well, yeah, I think, s- well, the s- point s- is that... If you do it very central with, mm-hmm. let's say, bishop d4, I thought maybe something like e5 would be good. But maybe... Will you just take it? 
Or will you go back to e3? Maybe if you take it, at least uh, the bishop on g7 has been sort of blocked. Blocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop d4 is. Uh, well but is maybe a nice maybe rook f8, and there will be trouble uh, towards the queen. It is a very complicated position, actually. I like bishop d4. I think this must be. Well, we have a computer evaluation here which says 0 0.4. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, it's that is uh, that is a lot, uh, actually. And we were starting to like Black's position, so maybe we are missing something here. But well, I don't Bishop see, a, is a, decent I don't one, see I a straightforward. Yeah. What about King B1? Could it be that the threat of B4 is not so strong after all? I think you have to play B4. As okay. otherwise, after G5, well, the well, G5, G5 square becomes. You could still have G5, B4. Sometimes, but I think. But maybe then you can even take G7 and F8 at times. So let's say B4. And knight d5 takes takes here. Mm -hmm. Could it be that this is good for white? Because you're just gonna go bishop d4 next. Well, of course, and start exchanging. The knight on a5 is not beautiful. Yeah, this is sort <laughs> of true. well. It's hard getting this one into the game without well some kind of uh, violence. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't really see any any aggressive things working. Well, bishop b5 would be very logical here, hoping to take an e2 and play queen c3. But it looks to me like this could just be very strong. What about just, well, uh, putting uh, some pressure on the e4 pawn by bishop c6, well, back in the in the position. So you're saying king b1? Mm -hmm. And now bishop to c6 yep, here. Something like that. Okay. okay. But we actually just... We got a move, so a move. maybe it's going to be a bit similar. Yeah. But I would still think that king b1, b4 looks like a very nice sort of uh, inclusion. Well, well this maybe one he, he wouldn't <laughs> this include one he, it. He's going to take, right? Yeah, he has to. Pawn takes. But maybe it's the same. Bishop d4, you can't stop. And uh, things can sort of... Well, well not having played <laughs> b4 here is a huge plus for black. Yeah, but even so, there is this threat of bishop d4 for next and... Uh -huh. Somehow this can end up in a very bad structure for for white. For sorry, for black. I think. And bishop d4 is a huge threat. Well, I think he has to do something quickly. Something like e6 or e5. Oh, well, I like e6 maybe more. Okay. Well, just to try to. Um, but well open up the position uh, a bit. But I, I could say. even consider taking it. I think. Yeah, and bishop takes e6, for instance. And okay, bishop something is happening in Aronian and Vichy. Okay, oh, something they has happened. They, they probably made a draw? Probably made a draw. Let's, let's wow. quickly run there. Okay. We are, yeah, we're sorry about yeah, not watching that, but it just, well... This we didn't see coming. Okay, they have simply made a repetition. Okay. Bishop d6, knight e1, knight c5. And after knight b3, knight a6. Knight d2. Uh -huh. That's quite amazing. I was yeah. really sure that we were in for a very wow. long fight. Yeah, we apologize for, for, for missing out on this. But, but uh, somehow uh, it was hard to predict. <laughs> it really was, and there was so much attention on the other boards that uh, distracted us. Mm -hmm. Wow, this has just been a draw. Well, I think for the tournament, this is actually quite good in the sense that Wishy keeps this, let's say, quarter of a point lead. Yeah, and Aronian really catch needs up, and Aronian to win. Will have to, um, yeah. The the situation hasn't clarified, and that's probably, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. What they are discussing is that, of course, they cannot make a m draw before the thirtieth move. But a free fall repetition should be. No, no, a free fall should be fine. I think. So May, let's I'm see. not completely sure. They have probably they haven't made all the moves on the board. <laughs> that hmm. could be. I'm not completely sure about that. Well, knight c5 would be. Which is about to play knight c5, which will be the third time, I mm -hmm. think. So oh, yeah. Okay, they I, may maybe they I did it all. I yeah, but we are, well, I, I am very surprised. I don't know what about you, Peter, yeah. but I really didn't see that coming because I thought that, well, the opening that uh, Aronian played also, it really looked like he's going, um, well, for a, for a long and very, very complicated game. Yeah, I agree. But I think he's just trying to be objective. And he thought that, yeah. well, my practical chances here are not better. And the tournament standings do not dictate me going all out at all. No, thinks. no, that would be, well, losing today for him would yeah. be uh, very, very bad. E exactly. Losing today, then he has to, ca 
overtake Vichy by one and a half point in six yeah. rounds. That's going to be tough. Yeah. Now he has to overtake him by half a point. Mm -hmm. So I think he's just evaluated that. Uh, well, he tried it. I mean, we cannot criticize him for trying. He really took a risk, played very brave chess. But he's probably come to the conclusion that, mm -hmm. okay, it has to stop at some point, And I don't want to take unrealistic risks. Well, apparently and he decided that the tournament situation is uh, such that, uh, well... Well, I think also, well, the position, are you going to play G3 and F4 here, or, I mean, yeah. no, I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's quite reasonable, but, well, I think we, somebody will ask him the question. Yeah, and yeah, we, we, will, we will, well, uh, why not hear it from the man yeah, himself? Yes, since it is quite early in the, in the yeah. round still, we will go for the press conferences, I'm sure that also the, the viewers, they would like to li uh, hear what, yeah. what the players thought about this, and what was the rationale behind, what? behind Do how you they think did this it. Is a is it a great result for Kramnik that he can actually catch up, or is it worse for him now he has, well, two r <laughs> at least two two players will share two first players, place with yes. him? But well, I think uh, Kramnik needs to concentrate yeah. on his own game. I think game. you have a Whether good point there. I think win is <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, the press conference is about to begin any any moment now, so we will go for that. Uh, but um, yeah, well, suddenly we have uh, three interesting games left. <laughs> Yeah, they can finish quickly, apparently. Yeah, but apparently, I think I think yes. the three we had once we have left, it's going to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely, yes, yes. Uh, and, well, mm -hmm. So no, that's and uh, well, I think, I mean, the draw on the top board will inspire those who are trying to catch up with even yeah. more in the sense that, well, look at it for instance from Topalov and uh, Mahmoud uh, Yav. The winner there is actually just one point behind the lead yeah, yeah, and still has right. to play uh, the players individually. So I think, uh, well, nothing at all decided yet. And but I would say a moderately good day for, for Anand, I would say. Well, I, I mean, would he think so. I think so that still this, this draw, as you see, has uh, the best tie break towards uh, Aronian. And of course, Ar Black against Aronian is, is not easy no, in this no. tournament. Uh, I think this I is the first time that Aronian, well, he was winning the two first wide games and he was uh, had a winning position against Andraikin in, mm -hmm. in that That's sense. right, yes. So yes. Yeah. Well, Aronian could be thinking that, uh, well, yeah. uh, he, he, he gets winning chances in almost all the games. So, <laughs> okay, so we are going for the press conference now. And uh, yeah, we'll be back uh, shortly. Dear chess fans all around the world, welcome for the uh, eighth round of FIDE candidates in Hante Mansisk. Уважаемые любители шахмат всего мира, добро пожаловать на пресс-конференцию после восьмого тура турнира претендентов. And we have the first game finished. Uh, it finished in a draw between Levon Aranyan and Vishwanathan Anand. Первая партия, которая закончилась сегодня, это партия Левона Ранян и Вишнатана Ананда, которые сыграли в ничью. It was interesting opening. Can you tell us what happened? Был интересный дебют. Пожалуйста, скажите, что произошло. Well, I mean, when he went uh, queen b3, obviously I've never seen such a move before. Um, Когда Левон пошел в ферзь b3, естественно, я такой ход раньше не видел. And, but I tried to find a setup to which uh, we could transpose, so Catala and Grunfeld, all that. And it didn't seem to me that Queen B3 could be exploited in any of those. It just seemed like a normal move. Ну, кажется, что это ход нормальный. Я пытался найти расстановку, которая привела бы нас бы либо к Каталону, либо к Грунфельду. And then uh, I decided, well, I decided that the pawn sack must be playable, so I went D4. E3. Well, I could take on e3, but I wasn't sure about queen e3. Жертва пешки, которую потом впоследствии провел, привела нас к игровой позиции. Я не был уверен здесь насчет взятия на e3, потому что мне не очень нравилось после ферзь e3, что будет. And uh, here, I mean, normally these positions should be good compensation. В этой позиции у черных должна быть хорошая what I was really annoyed was whether I should play knight f6 or not. То, что меня действительно волновало, было то, играть мне конь f6 или нет. Because then, if bishop e2, I will have this move d3. На слон e2 есть ход d3. Even there, white left compensation, but 
I'll have one idea. And uh, if he goes d3, then I can go check in one move. I, I think I mixed up something. D3, is shah ah, could be. I looked at queen a4 instead of queen b3, and well, I only realized when I played, because here... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually can't, can't see a move for me here. Uh, Levon is going to do this to me all evening. Yes. Uh, e4. e4. <laughs> but uh, yeah, d5, and then I thought uh, this should be quite, uh, well, 19th century style. Я считала, что это позиция девятнадцатого в стиле девятнадцатого века. And d3 bishop b4, I think, is just so horrible for me. Yeah, d3, yeah, bishop b4 check, uh, I think, is promising. Да, But what ужасно. I suddenly wasn't sure of what happens here. Yes. Интересно, что произошло бы здесь. Knight d4, then queen a4 check. Queen d4, ферзь a4, шах. Knight d7. Слон d7. Maybe knight d7. Или конь d7. Yeah, maybe I should have done this. I, I mean, I kind of went bishop c5, and then I immediately kicked myself for not having done knight f6. Я пошел слон c5, но потом сразу поругал себя за то, что не пошел конь f6. Incidentally, I think bishop e2 is possible. Ну, здесь слон e2 возможно. If I take the piece, I think white will have three uh, reasonable pawns. So Если черные выигрывают no uh, фигуру, то за это у белых появляются три сильных пешки. And here I realized that I was no longer in time to take on e3 because I can't exploit this pawn. И здесь я уже понял, что мне нет времени бить на e3. Um, I actually thought bishop d2 and knight a3 was a better plan for him. Я думал, что, может быть, лучший план — это пойти... I was happy uh, when this knight came here because I think... Слон d2, конь a3. Maybe on a3 it can pull... Well, bishop d2 is too passive, you know. Mm, d2 очень пассивно. Yeah, but I thought your idea is anyway just to go bishop if I get rid of that thing and play knight a3. Yeah. Because uh, if I take and give you double pawns, actually you control all the important squares on the b file. And this can be a bit annoying. And the second knight can... Well, I mean, it's hard to tell. I, mean, I have no experience in these positions. It's, it's basically a sort of check penalty where I'm simply missing a pawn. Of course, it's a lovely square. And if I had to lose one pawn in the check penalty, I would it would be this one. But... Uh, And then here, I went knight c5. I, wanted, I should have played a4, and in fact it, it'll transpose, but I think bishop g4 is a reasonable try for white. I was actually... Uh, yeah, I was, I was a bit concerned about this. And a3. Yeah, but uh, again, I, I thought he crowds me with his knights. Yes. And then, uh, yes, this one, knight d7, knight c2, rook back somewhere, knight b3, and knight b6, and f4, yeah? That's what I felt. Yeah, f4 have. and queen d2, and I thought uh, I know, f4 and f6, f6 uh, bishop g4 even. Maybe I'm okay, yeah, maybe f6 I was just uh, pessimistic. Yeah. 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 But um, I thought I'm simply not in time, so this was my problem. I also didn't see... Um, у меня тоже была в этом проблема, и я не понимал, что как я должен действовать здесь. I mean, I could have gone to, I could have played a4 first, and then uh, bishop g4. I mean, it's a normal position. At the end, you shouldn't forget white is a pawn up. So whenever I take some concrete uh, step, then there will still be some issues. Yeah, I think I Если could play. Если я начинаю какую-то конкретную игру, то белых строй лишняя пешка остается. Это существенно. Yeah. And then f5. But I got scared. I thought yeah, yeah. that this is... I got scared of this. You know, I'm a pawn up, but... Uh, I think this pawn doesn't count, <laughs> simply. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Queen B6, Bishop B4, Bishop B6... I would, Bishop I would dream definitely. of you having a pawn back to C5. Or he even dreamed that she would return this pawn back to C5. No, it's just uh, after 92... Um, I didn't know... What, I didn't see a specific plan. I mean, once actually black does something concrete, I mean, if I play b5, I have to watch for the c4 square. If I play f5, bishop f3, I didn't see a specific plan for me either. I mean, I can react to whatever he does, but... I didn't see a specific plan for the black. Of course, I could have reacted to what they do with the black, but I didn't see anything concrete for myself. So, I was also not averse to taking the draw. Of course, as soon as the game finished, Levon said he was worse, but... Uh, no, no, but you, you, you here never, I you never know whether to believe him, so... No, here I thought that, <laughs> <he> was, <laughs> I, I thought that was worse before. Ah, okay, okay, sure. Нет, Левон сказал, что у него было хуже раньше. Ah, you think I did A4 maybe, and then there was some... No, actually, when I played Queen B3, I thought I'm, I'm going to create another miniature. Когда я пошел Queen B3, я думал, что создам еще одну миниатюру. Against you. 
Когда я не так давно проиграл Ишванатану. Я покажу одну интересную вариант. Конечно, b3 никому нельзя играть здесь. And then first of all, bishop c3 might be good. And Здесь second, bishop d2, queen d2, knight b4, knight b4, queen a5. And then I will play queen takes b4, and a queen b4, knight b4. I Здесь cannot я... see any way for this knight to come to c2. It's just there like 20 moves to get there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, e2, f1, uh, I mean, g1, f3, e1, c2 or something. So, mm. well, it just, it just shows you what black's possibilities are, I think, rather than... Я просто показываю еще другие возможности за черных. Левонок, didn't you regret that you took this pawn on c5 during the game? Вы не сожалели о том, что съели эту пешку на c5 во время партии? You know, basically, basically, basically it was uh, uh, overly, I mean, overly optimistic uh, way of preparing. You know, I saw that d4 is the main move, and I saw this position, but I said I'll pull, I'll pull uh, Petrosian Karsno. You know. I'll slowly get everything together. <laughs> but during the game, I felt that uh, my position is horrible. And especially after I quickly played queen b3, I think I should play queen a4, definitely. Я считала, что при подготовке был слишком оптимистичен, желая получить нечто похожее, как в партии Петросян Корчной. Здесь лучше было отойти ферзем на a4, видимо, а не на b3. Поскольку я считал, что в партии у меня была уже ужасная позиция. Back to business. Because here I feel that, I don't know, I don't know what the real evaluation is, but during the game I felt that it's close to be resignable. Ну, во время партии я понимал, я считал, что эта позиция близка к сдаче. Не знаю, что было на самом деле. I regretted not playing knight f6, but I think the piece sack is an option for white, so it's not... A clincher by any means, I think. Maybe I should have done for it. Because next move he can play d3 if he wants, and then... Здесь можно сесть ферзем на d3. I think... e4. Bishop e2. Слон e2. And even some gf3, maybe. И даже, может быть, gf. And then, well, king d1. На конь b4, король d1. I definitely would have done something awkward like this. Если бы такое произошло, однозначно, я бы пошел бы на этот вариант. And uh, if bishop e2, he, I go something like this. Слон e2, также был слон c5. Ed4. Yes, I mean e And here, um, I don't think white is worse, because he played knight c3. I mean, I have compensation, but... Um, oh, d3, d3, yeah. 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 So, Queen d2. But still, knight f6 was more precise. Ну, конечно, конь f6 был более точный ход. have questions? Есть ли вопросы? Uh, Vishy, was the move, uh, the move uh, Queen B3 unexpected for you? Yeah, I, I, like I said, I've never seen it. Um, Я его не, не видел anyway. до этого в таких позициях. And it's certainly an intelligent move because. Uh, Но это очень разумный ход. If black just makes standard moves, then. Uh, Если черные делают стандартные ходы. White can also choose his setups well. Это белые um, могут выбрать хорошую расстановку. For instance, if I play e6, then he can get back to uh, e3, and I'm not gained anything. I mean, it's the same as queen a4 check c6 as queen b3 taken. Например, на e6 играется g3 и получается приятная игра у белых. A Grunfeld also I can't take advantage. So it's not easy to find Grunfeld to получить перевес. A clever setup, but that's why when I found d4, e3, c5, I decided that this had to be the way forward. Поэтому, когда нашел ход d4, то и решил уже идти на этот вариант. D4, E3. Возможно, что у ферзь B3 не очень хороший ход. Quite quickly you gave up a pawn. Weren't you afraid that you are coming into prepared position? Well, this this position you don't worry about preparation. I mean. Какой позиции не волнуешься о подготовке? I mean, some position like this. Такие позиции. What can preparation produce? Что? It's just a position where. Что подготовка может дать? Actually, it's a very nice position. So I've often wondered how to just remove the pawn and what would be it would be like if there was a knight on c5. And it turns out that. 
black has very close to full compensation, but Здесь the, белый, здесь there's nothing you can prepare here because my, my plans are полный. quite sensible. I'll put a knight on c5. I, I know I have to stop him advancing a3, b4. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't my concern. It's just that uh, I was worried that as the pieces came off, it might turn out that I didn't have compensation. But uh, other than that, I was quite uh, satisfied. Ну, здесь у черных довольно простые планы, просто коня на c5 переводит, и, скорее всего, здесь очень приятная игра за черных. Левон, uh, was it your tactic, like, say, let's say, for today's game, just to avoid playing some main lines? Левон, была ли ваша тактика означала то, что вы хотите уйти с основных вариантов? Not really. I just uh, convinced myself. That this is a good move. I saw it. Я просто убедился в том, что это хороший ход. I saw it while I was having a nap, and I said, "Okay, this is such a good move. It has to be played." Я просто решил, что это очень хороший ход. And uh, of course, I, uh, the computer thinks that white is busted. Computer gives a very good advantage for black. Здесь компьютер дает очень хорошую оценку для за черных. But somehow, uh, I overestimated uh, my own vision. Но я как-то переоценил свое видение. And only during the game I realized uh, what a difficult task it is for White to to get out and get a playable position. Но только во время партии я понял, насколько сложно белым выбраться из этих проблем и получить игровую позицию. So the reason I didn't really continue to play uh, was I think I the the stress of the start was a bit too much for me. Причина того, что я не стал дальше пытаться продолжать борьбу, было то, что я испытывал слишком большой стресс после дебюта, в начале партии. Есть ли вопросы? Вопрос, который, может быть, следовало бы задать вчера. And when he um, reached the position, when he actually took queen takes b5 and later played queen c4. I mean, for a computer, it's an obvious first line, but for a human being, it's a very unintuitive thing to do. Yeah? I was just wondering, how difficult was it for you to come up with all this after five hours of play? Mm -hmm. Вопрос к Левону Ираняну от Рустама Касымжанова по поводу вчерашней партии против Сергея Корякина. Рустам говорит, что, конечно же, ход ферзь c4 за белых, это был... Ну, Зачем? За черных, простите, по первой линии компьютера, но как легко ли найти его человеку за доской, ну, интуитивно, и как вы вообще это сделали? Well, well, thank you for complimenting me. That's Спасибо for the за start. комплимент. Uh, but uh, since I, I think normally it happens when your opponent plays, tries to defend really well, and you know he doesn't mix bad moves and really strong ones. Uh, You you play worse, and and in that game at that particular moment, Sergey was defending so well, finding the only possible moves that I was, I think, completely uh, concentrated, and that's why I I was able to find it. Otherwise, I would have uh, pulled another draw like I usually do in winning positions. <laughs> Обычно такие ходы находятся, когда соперник защищается очень четко, как это делал вчера Сергей. Поэтому у меня ничего не оставалось иного, кроме как находить лучшие варианты и очень сконцентрироваться на этой позиции. Если бы я бы этого не сделала, в противном случае получилась бы такая же похожая ничья, как все остальные бывают у меня. Большое уважение к вам за это, поскольку это, скорее всего, именно такие ходы отличают сильнейших шахматистов мира от всех остальных. Хотя, может быть, любителям кажется, что это очень простой ход, поскольку в компьютере он по первой линии. Да, приятно находить такие ходы. By the way, we amateurs actually yesterday this move, and they said actually to Levon that this was the first line, and all the others give a draw, right? So I paid attention, for example. 
as an amateur if you want to see the opinion of amateur player. Да, как любители мы этот ход тоже увидели за компьютером и увидели также, что все остальные ходы приводят к ничьей. Поэтому Да, параллельная партия была очень интересная. Да, две такие невероятные партии в один момент игрались, как мы медиаров Крамник тоже. Если другие вопросы. Спасибо за комментарии. Hi. We are back after a very nice press conference by the two leading players. Well, hopefully they have answered uh, some of uh, your questions about why it was such a quick draw. Both thought that, well, that it was a fine result and that it was a logical result from that particular position. And it made sense what, well, what they were saying, yes. Well, if you heard it, sort of, Aronian was at times s sounding like, well, he had an almost lost position, and Vichy would say that he think he had almost enough compensation, <laughs> <Yes>. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they were all also keeping something to themselves. <laughs> yeah, after all. I think they were very friendly, but still yeah. also they maybe, they still wanted to keep the sort of psychological thing that well, it was me who actually yeah, well, you got, know, got a draw, Le not Le you. Le saying that he dreamed of this move and that uh, it was, <laughs> it was yeah. something that he yeah. saw while he no. was napping. Yeah. <laughs> So it's good to come up with reasons for for having a nap, I think. So yeah, that, yeah. That. But uh, it it was very 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 interesting um, listening to this, and um, well, we still have some uh, serious um, uh, fights going on here. Very much uh, so. Yeah, let's go to Topal of Mamejaro first of all. There we have this very sharp Sicilian, and. Um, it does look a bit like Black could be in trouble if he doesn't do something. Uh, but it's. I think you can also say White could be in trouble. I think it's a well, very, very complicated uh, I position. I personally, I like. Uh, generally, I, I, I'm hoping for the Black's position <laughs> as, okay. as, as a Sicilian player. But um, of course, there are some problems here. In this position, uh, Topalov played he, Knight d5. He played Knight d5, and we were a bit surprised he didn't play King b1 first. But Topalov. Well, there is this Sicilian player who thinks King B1. That's it's a sort of unnecessary. Let's attack directly. So that's maybe yeah, what he did. He played Knight D5, takes takes, and now Rook F to E8. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea is to have. Well, we thought why not Bishop D4 in this position? Just a, a very positional move. But Topalov didn't seem to want to play it. But for yeah, me, it's this a looks, bit of a puzzle. Looks like why a very why sort of logical move. You want to take mm -hmm. off the bishops and play Rook E1, Knight D4 and do it very positionally. Mm -hmm. But maybe, well, Topalov is not the player that plays for, for minimum. He plays for the absolute most in, in, in a position. And he's but played the move rook h to f1. Yeah, I, are you so convinced that rook on f1 is better placed than on h1? Yes. You are. Well, <laughs> I think it's better placed there. But I would rather have it on e1 and... I was about to say F1 is closer to E1 <laughs> than H1. <laughs> well, if that's your logic. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's uh, maybe not... Uh, maybe in time pressure it has a bit of value, but else, else not. Yes. Uh, well, I think at some point Topala would consider playing F5 next mm -hmm. and simply <coughs> blocking a later E6 or E5 by, by Black. Maybe he thinks this is the, the correct uh, approach to this position. Yeah, we have an evaluation yeah. here which says actually minus 0 0.23 and uh, just a couple of moves it was 0 0.4 yeah uh, well so so well by that logic uh, white has done something inaccurate but i'm not com completely convinced that it is true no um, i think what the computer thinks is the right way here is the move e6 mm -hmm. and it looks well it looks like a good move well, it looks uh, like this is exactly why Mamejarov put his rook on e8 in the first place Very so he would so just be going well it could also be e5 was his idea but then i think f5 becomes extremely strong yeah i think well so e5 would just be a bad move but yeah yeah, yeah. that's why he, yeah no that that, that would really uh, would be very logical mm -hmm. yeah and he's and playing that right e6. now okay yes so that's a good move uh and i think well when I see, uh, when I look at this position, it really looks to me that 
Black's biggest problem is the knight on a5. Of course, you would really like it to come into play uh, via c4. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's not, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not going to happen as, well, there is no real attack there, as mm -hmm. bishop d4 will always block this monster bishop on g7. So what he well, does with e6, he potentially, well, he also uh, vacates the c6 square for, for his yeah, knight in the future. Uh, maybe there is a threat of e takes d5 in the sense that well, uh, after that, rook takes e3 might start happening, uh, and things like like this, and, and the c2 square would be weak. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not completely sure how I should proceed. Maybe Topala's idea is this move, bishop to d4. And after e5? e5? I think his idea could be bishop c3. Mm -hmm. And then you are attacking the knight, and should the knight go back, for instance, to b7, I think you could be in time to maybe play... F5, F5 or maybe King B1. That's well. That's a very um, well, a very concrete way to, but to do it. But I think of course. we even looked a bit at this, po uh, even with the computer. And actually, maybe Black has a fantastic tactic here, uh -huh. right? Well, I didn't. So. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> B4, and if it takes here, then this uh -huh. could be a this huge, huge attack. And after taking here, there is. Well, you're threatening the pawn here, mm -hmm. and also next will be e takes f4, opening for the rook mm -hmm. and for the bishop. And it could actually be a terrible attack that Topalov is going into. So mm -hmm. it's not clear to me that bishop d4, it looks like a good way to shut down the, the black attack, but actually it could just be opening up the position. Maybe here you could consider taking on e5, but that would actually be a very bad move. I just spot bishop h6, oops, <laughs> and uh, oh. we have problems on c2 here. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's true. This bishop d4 is, is probably not very good. No, no. Uh, should he have played it, he should have done it uh, before rook hf1. Uh, basically, the, this, this point when it was good uh, has passed. But maybe Topalov is playing purely positional chess. You think his idea could be this move, rook f2. No. And, well, and simply, he wants to defend. Yeah, we, to are defend. The, mm -hmm. we are the th uh, second rank, and also that e2 is protected by the rook. And then next, he's going to put the bishop on d4. Well, Let's say uh, e d5. Mm -hmm. He has, of course, won a pawn. But somehow, black's attack could have come to a complete stop at this position. Well, that may be uh, the strongest move in the position. But I well, don't think Topalov is happy with his position. And I don't know if he will but make it. But does his position I have down there. Doesn't it look like a pleasant one for white? I mean, blacks... Hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, the computer was saying before black is better, but rook f2 looks like an interesting move to me. Rook f2 looks nice. Of course, it's a very prophylactic move, and uh, well, your point is that you still want to play bishop d4, and for that you want to wait until uh, there is no more e5. No, exactly. And uh, Well, I think it's an extremely complicated position and mm -hmm. uh, well as expected we see these players basically caring mainly about their own plans of course they try to preempt the opponent's uh, aggressive to ideas but they are playing very positive chess i mean mm -hmm. well mamed yarov is definitely attacking on the the king uh, queen side and well topalov has taken over the center and such but does he look he doesn't look that confident. No, that's to me what I'm actually. saying. I don't think no, he's enjoying maybe? his position no. so much. But let's say this rook f2 that you are mentioning, mm -hmm. right? What about knight c4 now? Okay. That is, um, uh, I doubt that's going to be played, but uh, well, just uh -huh. out of curiosity. And after b takes c4, let's say b takes c4. I just want to open up the b line uh, for, uh, for my pieces. That is rather aggressive but <laughs> quite you're saying it's it's close to to brilliant here if i do bishop d4 you will do something like I c3 think, uh, c3 or e5 c3 but, I think. but e5 I would well guess you don't want to close the let's thing. say bishop c3 or something like this at least i, mm -hmm. I keep things a bit close but maybe c3 yeah yeah well, they do have enough to think about here. That, that For is, sure, that is this clear. is a, well, uh, of course, yeah. this, no, this of course knight c4 would be nice. Something like this will be in the air, as, as we yeah. would say. Yeah. And, um, uh, and rook f2, no, but I don't know if bishop d4 now becomes a threat. Yeah, you see, even. if rook f2 is almost too slow, then, then white could actually be becoming, uh, well, yeah. uh, basically getting well, into trouble. There's so little he can do Otherwise. positively in mm -hmm. some sense. And... You gotta play bishop d4 at some point, I would think. Actually, it's not clear to me what Mamadiarov's next move would be. But 
probably e takes d5 is a, is a threat because of these things in the i mean e3 will be undermined and c2 could uh, start, mm, and start also, dropping yes sometimes knight c4 yeah. is an idea as well okay mm -hmm. he's making a move okay he just he's played rook f2 this is quite yeah. amazing i yeah. think this this well, is really i think he got to it also partly by elimination maybe he saw that bishop d4 to to c3 um actually ran into some sort but of it trouble. is still an impressive move to make i think yeah Rook f2 is uh, not an obvious... Uh, well, what do you think? How will black continue here? Well, well, he doesn't play knight c4. <laughs> no. But then it's also... It's hard to make a move for black, I think. Very much so, I think. This is the kind of position... Well, um, Mamejarov got partly what he wanted. He managed to play e6. His bishop is well. The bishop bishop d4 is uh, not a threat right now because he always have e5. But that's a bit what I mean. Mamiyarov has put everything in the right spot. Mm -hmm. Maybe he would push b4 uh, and to have bishop b5 at some point, and then also just mm -hmm. to postpone uh, that that things are happening in a way. But yeah. it is uh, strange, but it almost seems not so swung, but it's actually difficult to do something. Very direct here from from either side from and either side yes. Tobolev has just played. I mean, look at the maneuver. Rook f1 to f2. Would anyone think about this in this position? I mean, this is a yeah, that an amazing way of that's uh, a very <laughs> of, of defending. Way. Simply mm -hmm. putting your rook there and defending the knight and uh, and also to a certain extent uh, mm -hmm. the pawn c2. Well, very anyway, uh, I think Mamajarov will take some time. So my suggestion is we switch to Kramnik and Draken, uh, which we haven't. Seen okay, for a while. Let's, let's have a look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we stopped after bishop a3, and uh, well, <coughs> here it seemed that e6 is not very attractive for black, as bishop takes f8 would be, well, exactly what uh, what Kravnik has put bishop on a3 for. We, we thought white so was pleasantly better in that yeah. position, right? And he played g6, uh, okay. and Reagan went for g6. The only problem with a move like g6, bishop g7, is that it w well it uses uh, a lot of time, <laughs> and he's already behind in development. Yeah. So I think... Well, Kramnik is getting the c line. Yeah, right? he's getting the c line, and uh, that's already... Uh, well, that's already quite nice, as, as we get... Well, of course, it's not extremely similar to the exchange slav, oh. but the ideas are... To, uh, to yeah, a certain extent. extent. Well, he extent took on d5 immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was any hurry, but uh, well, he wanted to, yeah, to get it in. So mm -hmm. takes, takes, queen d2, bishop g7, rook ac1, castles. And now, well, I think Kramnik has put all his pieces where he, he wants to for a start. And now he had to, well, make on up his mind how to proceed from here. And he played bishop h3, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a quite an ambitious move, I was thinking. Would would something like rook c6 make sense? That looks like a well. Bishop h3 is very ambitious, but what about just putting a rook on c6? And if knight b8? Okay, you think I'm? I'll have to make a draw now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you. I can. Is c3 not available? Well, queen a5, for instance. E7 is hanging. Sorry, mm -hmm, okay. that is true. Yeah, uh, here it looks like I will get rook fc1 the next time. Mm -hmm. Well, there could be a tactical reason, but I thought if you could put yourself on c6 and take over the c line, isn't that what you, you want? Well, Kramnik has obviously been looking oh, at I think at rook this. c8 maybe was a problem. And if I take on a6? Then rook c2. Oops, it could yep. be something... Something well, like that could be... That is still complicated, but I think you, you could be right. Mm -hmm. So, bishop h3 bishop was Bishop h3 playing? is also a very typical way to play uh, in this position. Yeah. The only problem is that, of course, white has to evaluate, well, exactly what well, happened well, in exactly the game. Exactly what has happened. Mm -hmm. They have taken and played rook e8. And, well, from Kramnik's perspective, I would be afraid of e6 happening and bishop f8. And you, you can end up with a very dead bishop. Yeah. But Kramnik is thinking, I'm going to get the... The C line in it return. It could also easily be very, very nice for white, actually. But yeah, well, e6. Okay. They are that's that's they, they are, are just following. Sort of, they're playing very well. <laughs> 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 that is true. Yeah. Okay, oh. you s you you say it's gonna be rook f c one. Yeah, And now that let's say like bishop f eight. Mm -hmm. What do you think the C line is actually a huge factor here? Probably it is a huge factor. Well, it has to be, but of course, well, again... Will you take on a fight or...? 
not. Oh, well, it's not oh, easy to say. Probably even taking it is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm well, let's thinking, say, uh, let's say, it takes, uh, well, maybe not a fate. Um, yeah. And, uh, well, uh, bishop f1, for instance. Yeah, I also want to get in queen f4 at some point. Yeah, but so Stop. far, well, rook c8 is not a problem. So let's say if I just play bishop f1. Okay, I thought maybe the queen will go to f6 now, but probably it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But your idea is basically you will yeah. play a4 and you're thinking his, his queen side well, structure yeah, will, will what I crumble. Th what I think is that, well, mm -hmm. this bishop is almost uh, completely <laughs> sort of stuck, mm -hmm. but not quite, because there is this idea of a4 and black mm -hmm. has a6, b5 on white squares. This is a but huge... You actually uh, then, maybe you're saying that you think white is clearly better here. Well, I think so, yes. Yeah. I, I, no, I I'm think starting so. to get around to that as well, that the c line is actually extremely powerful here and yeah. and also well he has a very clear objective a6 and b5 pawns they mm -hmm. are not uh, well they no. are just uh, gonna be attacked uh, sooner or later well i would say white has one weakness here this is the pawn on d4 but mm -hmm. well uh, like i think anand was saying in one of the um the commentaries with Aronian, it's gonna take a while to get the white knight to <laughs> c2 and i think the same would be said here to get this knight to f5 I don't see a very obvious route that yeah. I, I have to admit. Maybe this bishop f8 is really playing into uh, bishop f8. Sorry, is really playing into uh, White's hands. What you suggested as yeah. uh, well, you bishop think g7 queen is hitting d4. So you think all. queen f6 now? Or? Yeah, what about queen f6 now? Aren't we <laughs> losing a pawn? Well, you can start with rook c7, mm -hmm. attacking a knight. I would think. Mm, yeah, I will have to. Ah, you, I thought you said I couldn't defend the d4 pawn. Your point is actually that these <laughs> yes, two are hanging. Okay, the, that, the, the that two it took a while, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Mm. Oh, rook c7. Well, this is what what Kramnik had to calculate, of course. Yeah. Rook c7. Ah, he has actually played it. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Is is a bit unpleasant. Okay, let's see. Okay, I play rook a d8, for instance. Now you're weakening the a6 pawn. Yeah, I can see that, uh, yes. But I don't, I don't see a <laughs> very good way to defend everything. Me neither. Me neither. Well, maybe Kramnik will have to go in for some kind of complications where he will now start taking uh, a queenside pawn. But can you really afford to lose d4 as, as white? <laughs> that looks very dangerous to me. D4 yeah. is a very big pawn. You're saying if I go rook a7? Yep, rook a7 and queen d4. Rook a7, queen d4. And takes. takes. Yeah. This looks. Um, well, let's say rook a8. Rook a8. Yeah. This looks terrible for white, I think. You're probably worse. That that could 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 well be. I didn't do, do this too well then. Maybe. How about rook b7 here? Would that make a difference? And when you take here, do I have rook c7 then? Or is this just uh, giving away mm -hmm. material? It seems... No, not no, and Dragon hasn't made a move. He's just noted down Kramnik's move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I think this is interesting. Something like rook this. And I think if knight e5, I have mm -hmm. f4 poking the knight away. Yeah, yeah. It has to be said rook b7. It's not... Well, it's threatening to put the rook on c7. Uh, hmm. Although even there, I would go further in your line. Let's say after okay. rook c7. Yeah, here. Uh, well, let's say knight e5, f4, and knight d3. Okay. It's not like it's made uh, after you take on f7. Well, it's not made when you take on f2 either. But <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, I get your point that well, after rook f7. Knight takes f2. Yeah. No, this is not simple at all. No, no. I, I agree. This is So queen f6, what is Kramnik's point? No, I think that rook c8, rook a d8 is fine. But rook then you c7, have uh, rook c7, sorry, and uh, bishop b2, I think. Bishop b2? Mm -hmm. Because, well, losing the f3 pawn okay. will not really make a difference. And if he doesn't take the f3 pawn, I think it's... A very tough disposition. So yeah. I think Andraikin simply has to say it, it's great. I got a pawn and I got some active counterplay. Yeah, and, and now you could try something like rook a7 or b7, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you d just say that there is huge 
structure. But the knight is coming to e4, mm -hmm. I would think. Something like this. And uh, isn't this going to be an annoying counterplay? Well, maybe bishop g2 you have to play here. Okay. And yeah, some and somewhere around here. Well, uh, maybe, rook c7. Maybe f5, actually. Well, let's see. And then you're saying... Okay, he's about, he's to, about make to make a move. move. This is very important. It looks like oh. a queen move to a This is okay. a very good move. <laughs> well, uh, this is a very fighting move. I, yeah. I don't know how good it well, is, but... I think it's a necessary move. Yeah. Because else you're just considerably worse, yeah, I would say. Yeah, actually, yes. So but okay, Andrejkin is, is yeah. doing this quite well, I think. I think under the circumstances, yes. I think... Well, Andrejkin... He's getting into trouble. Not trouble, but he's... And I wouldn't even say out-prepared, because I think he's kind of aiming for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his style is not this sort of uh, extremely thorough preparation like Kramnik. He's actually allowing the opponents some very positive uh, options. Well, we yeah. saw it yesterday against Topalov, and then he, he really enjoys the, the struggle that comes ahead uh, yeah. later. And I think you're right. He's, he's actually defending this very imaginatively, and... Uh, I really thought Kramnik had everything under control, but it's not obvious to me. No. So no I still I like Kramnik's so. position, but well, I liked his position very much yesterday, and I thought that everything was under yes, control. Yes. So, well, this is this is very well, interesting. But also, then, well, uh, the question is, uh, why did he play Rook F C one? He could have avoided this quite easily by playing uh, well King G two, or, or you know, just making sure that F three is not hanging. And yeah, uh, and you're you're saying that there is. He doesn't really have no Maybe queen, queen f6, f6 and, and rook, rook c8, c8. Mm -hmm. but even okay. Let's put the bishop here. Yeah. It's queen f6. Let's say bishop b2. Mm -hmm. Rook f8. Rook c1. But here probably something like queen d8, and you actually maybe the yep. the knight will go like this and. You start expelling um, sort of the, the but intruders. Even here, I would play king, queen c2, for instance. Yeah, maybe. It, yeah. it looks very promising to me, like this. Well, I could have knight b6, and you could actually lose mm -hmm. control of the c line. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I confused with putting the knight on the other way, yeah, but probably, probably actually mm -hmm. this is. Uh, well, you can put it on c5. And, uh, Still, here, white has things <coughs> much more in in control than than in the other position. Much more in control, but also. Less aggressive in some yeah. sense, and no, I think. I agree with that. Well, Kramnik mm -hmm. is probably playing for maximum, but uh, well, yesterday he played for maximum and was, well, he was lucky in in the end to win, but uh, things were definitely out of control. Yeah, let's switch to uh, the game Svidla against Karyak. Actually, about to make a move ah, now. Should we just okay, get let's keep the camera on mm -hmm. this? Yeah, uh, let's let's do I that. agree. Let, let's have a look. But it seems like uh, he's. Well, I don't believe he will give away the d4 well, He pawn. is going to make him... It's probably just going to be rook c7. What okay. else? Right. He's, he's, he's a hesitating bit in doubt, a bit. Yes. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Rook okay, c7 rook c7. Rook c7. As expected. So, so yep, let's have nothing has changed mm -hmm. here. Let, let's go to, to the game Switler against Kayakin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is this very interesting <coughs> struggle where um, Switler has just uh, given away a pawn for, well, yeah. basically for the g5 and square, uh, they you could they have say. Yeah, and they have played exactly the moves we spoke about, uh, I think. So King g8, knight f3, rook e8. And here we were wondering if Switler should go knight g5 straight away. But he's done that at least. He's done that, yes. Yeah. Knight mm -hmm. g5 and knight to f8. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and here we'll... Ah, oh, now he's the one who's thinking, right? Yeah. Well, I think he's trying to f sort of find a way where he has, um, well, how to maximize his compensation. Mm -hmm. But would you say that realistically he's better here? I would say that I think he has for sure enough compensation for a pawn. I don't yeah. think he's worse in any way. But to start debating who is better here is... is um, it is tough. Uh, G4, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, at well, least uh, he's not lacking fighting spirit today. No. G4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, what else on the other hand? Yes. Well, I think, I think also if he just played it very slowly, there was nothing particularly wrong with his position. But uh, no, this is a very aggressive move. Yeah. Is D takes F5 a threat? Well, 
G takes a five is a, could be a threat. Yes, I think so. Well, what? Uh, how yeah, are you let, going let's to just make rook b8. Okay, let's say G takes a five. And bishop d5 check? check. It's probably. You're thinking bishop e6. Maybe. I was thinking something mm -hmm. like this, and I was wondering, are you what actually going to get here? through here? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're just gonna go queen f3 and uh, to, well, even to h1 would at least look sort of <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, something like that. I see. Well, again, after g4, he's not forced to take on f5 well, in any way. Uh, uh, the next move. No, no. Uh, and he uh, could prepare. Rook b8 was with probably uh, not a, uh, a good move either. No. I think. no. Especially as in this pos No, e6 is not possible like this. Sorry. So g4. But mm -hmm. No, maybe he's thinking that it's hard for Kayakin to make. A move, but I would think that the ideas of knight d8, f7, and and or knight h7 somehow eliminating this knight mm -hmm. would make quite some sense yeah, here. Knight d8, knight f7 is well, of course, quite defensive, but mm -hmm. uh, it could make a lot of sense here. Well, we we had generally been very optimistic about Spitler's position, and probably well, so so has he. <laughs> yeah, <think>. yeah, <laughs> that's true. And also Kayakin. It's not like he sort of uh, looks extremely optimistic to me. That's not how I see it. No, but well, it could be just the general situation on the time yeah, sure, for him. Sure. He doesn't that, have, true. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't have sure. much to be very optimistic about right I now. I think also at the press conference with uh, Anand and uh, Aronian, I think we, we heard um, Kayagin's second, Rustam Kasimdjana, was asking Aronian a couple of games about yesterday's game, especially. Well, I think Aronian praised Kayakin's defense a lot, but well, it wasn't sufficient. But but even even so, yeah. Uh, so actually, right now, well, Mohamed Arab just played the really amazing knight c4 move. Ah, so uh, so we, we should quickly there. switch to this very exciting Sicilian that seems to be. Yeah, uh -huh. simply I think you you actually heat, suggested that up. idea, right? Well, it's. It's it's a very uh, uh -huh. common idea here. So knight c4, b c4. But it's really uh, well, quite quite impressive to have played it here. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's easy to suggest it when you're just well <laughs> looking at it from. But you think he's <laughs> played it out of a situation of strength or out of desperation? He thinks no, that I don't think he's played it out of desperation. Okay, you think that he I actually? I think he just thinks it's it's a nice uh, chance and that maybe mm -hmm. even the position demands it. That's what I would. Uh, yeah. Well, sure. that's how I would mm -hmm. read it. Okay, okay. Takes, takes here. But, well, also uh, Topalov's, uh, this, well, maneuver, rook f1, rook f2. It is yeah. nice positionally, but it is slow. Uh, For sure. And so, well, if you just give two tempi like this, mm -hmm. um, yeah, then, then things like knight c4 start working. What are the principal options here? We spoke about bishop d4. Yeah, and c3 is uh, probably the move here. I would really think e5 as well but, but let's e5 say c3 yeah. I think that queen d3 runs into bishop b5 right mm -hmm. and is queen takes c3 possible I think so well it could also ah, but then <laughs> get quite we, we could things could yeah. start fizzling out exactly um, Something it like looks this. very this very exciting right now but uh, is this just a kind of equal ending let's see queen takes c3 yeah I guess what well. do we take with the hmm. <laughs> well with, with knight e mm -hmm. e yeah then I think bishop so. d4 rook d4 rook c3 and should uh, you play king what is that b2 it's now or okay black is a pawn down at the moment is he no I don't ah, think sorry so. he's not no no, no it's ah oh, okay okay so, so let's say after d takes e6 I guess you will take with the bishop <sighs> and uh, well. At least aim aim a bit in in the direction. And you're not of afraid of losing the d6 pawn. Well, I thought that there was not not much to do. Ah, you're saying here, but I would guess something like rook a3 is possible. And Even that. Sh I should be making a draw here. I would mm -hmm. say. Maybe I'm not at all better, but yeah, but, but that could like be this. quite draws. But. Well, Topalov is not the one who would normally no. sort of be afraid. Well, Topalov should first of all have a look at uh, if there's something better than that. W what is your concept? Let's say I go... Uh, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Queen b4, rook b8? I yeah, think. then queen a3. 
Aha, so you want to sacrifice your queen. Yeah, well, I, I have a lot of wood for it. And I think when you've given away your, your black squared bishop, some, somewhere like that. A1 could be... Well, no? bishop b2 check. Uh -huh. Okay, well, that I'll take. Mm -hmm. And let's say e takes d5. Yeah, if I s sort of suddenly lose material, of course, it's not going to be great. Let's put it on d4. Okay. I mean, you are very close to being busted. Mm -hmm. But well, so am I, maybe. <laughs> yes, I think <laughs> so that I. goes for both of us. But here... Yeah. Okay. Maybe C3 check. Yeah, but... Isn't it a bit hope-based? Well, very much so, yes. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can take it with the knight. And it's not... Yeah, I understand that if you take on I mean, D5... It's... <laughs> It's exciting to play like this, but my point is that should I get in bishop d4? Mm -hmm. Well, things could start turning out tremendously well for white as well. But I understand it is very dangerous. But, well, we spoke about that both players, I think they need a win, or need is too strong, and they will still be, even if they win, they'll be a full point behind the leaders. But, yeah. well, if they make a draw, it's one and a half point to go, to mm -hmm. catch up, with six rounds left. It's not that easy, and also it's not just one guy you have to catch, it's two or even three. Making a win winning today do make a difference, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, somehow think bishop so. d4, allowing c3 and equalizing. Well, maybe Topalov will do it because he thinks it's the best move, and maybe it's actually by far the best practical decision, but uh, I think he... It's not his instinct to play, play like this. That That's... Uh, I don't think he likes to play bishop d4 here and head mm -hmm. for a draw, but maybe he has no choice. And, well, we saw Aronian sort of hitting the brakes against Anand and repeating, or maybe it yeah. was Anand who hit the brakes uh, against Aronian <laughs> and repeated. But Topalov is not that kind of guy. I mean, he no. would uh, almost rather do something quite irresponsible than uh, doing something yeah. um, sort of... Well, uh, you remember uh, what he said uh, in his press conference after he beat uh, Kramnik, that he said that... Well, basically, he was tired of play of playing um, well correct chess and making yeah. draws, and he decided to well to take bigger risks. And in that particular game, it really paid off for him. Yeah, I think he played that one quite correctly, actually. I, I would say. Well, but he meant uh, the opening yeah. idea, which was a bit sure. well, dubious is maybe too strong, but yeah. in well, that looked, region, it looked <laughs> at least. reasonable. I think. Well, dubious. It, is Aronian today? <laughs> That's I th true. <laughs> I think maybe even a bit more. I think well, Aronian said it himself. So so I think yeah, we're not insulting yeah, yeah. him no, at all. Not at all. No. But, uh, <laughs> but I think he was. Yeah. Yeah. That's also interesting. I mean, most ideas the top level. I think we will see other players really copying. But Aronian's queen b three. You think we will ever see that again? <laughs> <laughs> it's well. sort of Almost like well, Kaiser Zose from this, uh, the usual suspects. He will just disappear forever afterwards. That could very well be. I, yes. I, I, I think free queen b free. I mean, it's. You don't it, believe. I, I don't. I, I, I think Aronian doesn't <laughs> believe it. I think, no. I think it was really a cool gamble, and uh, that he dares to play it in a game like this. One should have a lot of respect for. Mm -hmm. But I think this is going to be the the only time we see it actually. Let's switch to Kramnik and Draken now. Um, uh, well, mm -hmm. Andrekin has just won a pawn. Well, actually, this was yeah. uh, as expected. And he did not play rook d8. He's, yeah. he's uh, more ambitious, actually. He's just taken a pawn. Yeah. So knight f8, bishop c5, defending and this pawn. Yes. And he's Queen takes taking the other one. Mm -hmm. And what can Kramnik uh, do now? <laughs> yeah, you think he's just planning a4... And he's saying, well, it's actually not about pawns. It's uh, I will break from the queen's side. Well, he must be. Otherwise, well, else, he's, yeah. just, uh, he's just a <laughs> clear pawn down. Of course, this f3 pawn is not so uh, maybe so significant right well, now. No, also, if we think back to the Anandaronian game again, well, it's an extra pawn for one of the players, but the other one has a strategically much better position. Maybe... But, but I don't think there is any clear way for Kramnik to proceed. Uh, it's uh but no. But do you think he needs it? Let's say okay, a four. I don't know if I'm blundering the yeah, b three pawn. Right so let now. me go bishop mm -hmm. d two. Let's say well, queen f six. And let me do 
a4 here. But by playing a4 so soon, aren't you... Well, let's say I play b takes b takes and mm. rook fb8. Rook fb... You're also giving some uh, kind of chances to, well, to yeah. your opponent. I was thinking something like a5 and I'm gonna make a permanent weakness here and I'll put my bishop to b6. Mm -hmm. That this could be quite, quite horrible for you. I'm not sure, but at least it is close, I think. Mm -hmm. And, well, I will just pl put a bishop on b6 and the other one on f1. And, well, it's a That's not very difficult p position for you. And I think it could also be much better for white, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of... It's an interesting... Okay, yeah? Okay, Anish Giri is tweeting that Kranik <laughs> missed a double attack. <laughs> will claim it's a position <laughs> on sack. <laughs> yeah, today's a pawn sacrifice day. That's what I also <laughs> thought about. That, yeah, today they're just, um, yeah. You're saying it's pawn sacks in all games? Uh huh. Is it, what's the pawn sack in. No, uh, well, uh, positional, not pawn sack, but ah, positional like sacrifices. Yeah, Mamejarov just yeah. positionally sacrificed a knight, <laughs> so he's even. But Anis Giri's made an interesting, we will always say, accusation or poem. You <laughs> think? You think Kramnik sacrificed a pawn or he lost it? I think he sacrificed it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are also and official commentators. We should say like that. But uh, Yes, we can't, well, uh, we <laughs> can't say anything bad about our, well, our <laughs> oh, players. Yeah, no. <laughs> he played rook c3, not bishop f3. But well, uh, probably it's just as good. Yeah. Yeah, no. But, <laughs> but did he have a choice, Kramnik? Did, I mean, he, it's almost like he had to blunder the pawn to keep up pressure, right? Uh, well, we thought else it would be too solid in a way. <laughs> well, yeah. the problem is that, yeah, if, 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 um, if some more time was given for yeah. black, then he would swap a pair of rooks or even all the rooks. Yeah, he would get and control, it becomes, right? Yes, it becomes so much easier. Now he's under pressure and this A4 is, uh, well, is a nice thing to have. Uh, yeah. I don't think, well, also a good indication is that White is not going to risk here. Well, no, not yet. No, I think if you have to blunder a pawn, this is one of the better ones to yes. do it also. I think also, well, I think well, Giri is, uh, is having, well, he has a good sense of humor. Yeah. So I, think it, I think it's, yeah, well, maybe someone will dare ask Kramnik at the press conference. But I think also that might depend on how the games go. Yeah. Uh, but I still think Kramnik has, has quite a good position here. And the clock times are... Well, if I, if I talk a bit more, they're going to be exactly identical, I think. Mm -hmm. so, so that's in no way a decisive factor. No. And Dreyke, it's not like he looks very optimistic, I would say. But it's maybe to say he's normally focused. Yeah, maybe uh, he just looks uh, focused. I think even yesterday when he was about to beat Topalov, he looked also well, simply quite focused. But, but I think. why is he playing rook c3? And not bishop g2? Yeah. Is it maybe he doesn't want the queen to go to f5? What after queen h5? Bishop f1. Ah, you want to go to f1 straight uh, away? Yeah, yeah, for sure, I think so. That's interesting. I don't see a point to, to stop over on g2. Well, I wanted to do the stop over on d2. At least I would try and justify it by saying that it kept pressure on the d5 pawn. You never think that black will play e5 and somehow things are going to break out? I can honestly say I haven't considered e5. Okay. No. Because it ruins the structure too much. No, no, just ah, I just didn't consider. <laughs> you didn't consider it. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Sure. M maybe here it's very yeah, good. Yeah, it could actually yeah, work out quite well uh -huh, in, in some it's sense. Nice so I think actually I, I would guess that Kramnik, he would play it like this simply to to keep this this uh, uh -huh. this pawn under control. Yeah. And uh, the queen on h five is not particularly well placed as uh, far as no, I can see. So no, no. I don't think a tempo matters too much. Is, is something like rook c8 suddenly possible? Or because bishop f8 is not... You can just take and c7 first. That's correct. But then rook a7, I think that was sure. the point of... Well, then I let me take the, the other yeah. rook then. Mm -hmm. um, well, I always think that even bishop d6 should be great compensation here. I think mm. it takes a while to spoil the white uh, compensation here. Yeah, I think... Well, it's exactly... It is mm -hmm. a, a long-term classical yeah. positional compensation. Yeah. <laughs> 
that yeah. that will take uh, most likely a while. Well, I will be very surprised if they make a quick draw in, <laughs> in well, three that could moves. Be a, I mean, you could play rook e7, rook e8 here. And if you want to get it over with, it's not yeah, uh, No, not no, too I mean, difficult. but I don't think that's uh, going to no. happen considering the players and uh, the well, position. Yeah, I think. Kramnik is still moderately optimistic about his position, and I think well, and also. And so is the the, engine the computer. Even. Yeah, sure. Well, if if it shows plus uh, zero yeah. twenty when but you're a pawn down, you think it's Kramnik a good indication. is in similar mood than Aronian. That of course it would be great to win, but a draw also is no particular disaster. I mean, Kramnik is still white with Anand. Yeah, I, I well, it's we can only guess, but yeah. I think that this quick draw, if anything, is an incentive for him to push harder against Andrei today. He can ca today. catch the, exactly. the leaders. Exactly, he for can sure. catch the, both of the leaders, mm -hmm. and he doesn't. Well, he doesn't have a problem with uh, sharing with Aronian. Uh, um, as what do you well, mean? Uh, I mean that uh, well, they have made a draw in the game. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. His well, tiebreak wise, his tiebreak is is, <laughs> is is fine towards both of players and will be yeah. decided by some. Um, well, well they're, they're in a lighter stage, basically. Uh, yes. Encounters for sure. Yeah. So no, that's that's gonna be. I think for him it is an incentive. Another thing is that if his position will allow that, and if his opponent will allow that. Why is Andraikin thinking? That's because there is two squares for the queen. Okay, three even. There's e4 as well. Well, e4 is an unlikely square. <laughs> yeah, and after f3, I might uh, get it yeah, tra trapped, uh, right? Did I? <laughs> and, and I no, did I? No, I think. Did I manage? Oh, you did manage. I think so, yeah. Because oh, that's quite impressive. Yes. Here and then rook c1. and That's true. It's gone. So, okay, he has two moves to consider. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, it seems like he's taking his time considering the squares. And uh, okay. Well, should we th switch to things Topalov are happening in both Mamedyarov. games actually? But let's have a mm -hmm. look at uh, Topalov Mamedyarov because things could be around to clarify there. Well, I was talking a lot about Topalov not going bishop d4, but he did actually, and mm -hmm. it seems like he thought, well, that is necessary. And uh, well, the position we have um, in the bottom, well, we have it on both boards now, is what has happened at the board actually. Bishop d4 was played. And after c c3, queen takes c3. And are we just heading towards a draw right now? Well, it can't be ruled out. And also, well, Topalov played it because apparently he thought the other things were I too I dangerous. I agree. It looked very dangerous. Yeah. But I just thought that, well, there was nothing obvious wrong with it. But of course, maybe it is asking for too much. Or so he has to make a move. And would uh, he think he has a, the better chances? He yeah, let's say have queen a look. C3? Queen c3. We think queen c3. Well, knight c3, mm -hmm. I guess, bishop, bishop d4, d4, rook d4, rook c7. Is there any way white can be better here? Well, I think uh, d takes e6 still is There is the no move. point in playing king b2 first, for instance. Well, that hardly make a difference. Uh, makes a difference. No, I thought I would at least keep the rook away from a3, and maybe after it I can take on e6 and on d6. I'm just trying to think... What else? Any yes. kind of mm -hmm. uh, movie because, well, I thought d6, bishop e6, it seems to me to help. Oh, I think rook e6 is better. But here, uh -huh, even here, king b2 actually could be good. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, defending this pawn and it's attacking. There is no need to drop the d6 mm -hmm. pawn. I think rook e6 is completely fine. Yeah, it still it looks well, a it bit passive to me. And moderately pleasant. Something like white. king b2. I mean, there's not so great coordination, I think. Well, how would you... Rook c5, for instance. Okay. Uh, Rook d2. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Or you think that, well, white's pawns on the king's side are also weak, and, well, there will be some exchanges, maybe even bishop c6 maybe here. Maybe even bishop c6, that's what I'm thinking mm -hmm. about. Uh, it's probably it's too It is little. heading towards, uh, okay, towards we, a we very have this position. position. Now he's going to take back on c3 with the knight, which he already did. Mm -hmm. and I really think after that move, bishop takes d4 must be the only option, right? Yeah, that's what he's... Well, oh he's yeah. maybe considering e5. Could oh could really? he be doing that? But doesn't it run into knight e4? And, uh, yeah, it does. And something is hanging mm -hmm. on d6? That's right. No, he's not considering I had a that. Can he really be thinking of this move? <laughs> uh, well... It no. would be nice <laughs> if you had queens on Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, but, w well, what is it that... Which option is he seeing? 
Well, I think after yesterday, for a start, he's giving yeah. me some time. So <laughs> maybe really that's right. <laughs> if I start criticizing him for please play instantly, no, yeah, that's no, maybe that, not too that great. wouldn't be fair. But mm. he still looks very focused. It, there must be some option. Hmm. No, I really think, okay, Bishop no. D4 yeah. is going yeah. to make his most likely thinking about the position afterwards. Okay. Uh, just, well, as, as players sometimes do, they, mm -hmm. well, jump ahead in their calculations and trying to make sure that... That is not overly practical if, if sort of... But, uh, yeah. It is very droish. It is actually, and, and uh, well, maybe it would be ironic, but this could be the first round where we have four draws. It's not impossible. Yeah, and uh, well, that's. It really looked like the four most exciting games ever, more, exactly. more or less. But uh, it could actually happen. Well, maybe Sidler disagrees with you. Yeah, I he's still. Uh, he's I, so far. He's. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe we're gonna have four draws, but uh, I, I think. Well, that would be a first in this I, I, tournament. I think. Well, yeah, maximum three, but it could even be just two. I think. Yeah. But this one is actually, it's heading there. Yeah, well... I'm, uh, well, I'm puzzled why he's thinking here, I have mm -hmm. to admit. Well, he'll think a bit, but he will take on d4. Let's have a look at uh, Karyakin's, uh, well, Svitla Karyakin yeah. game. Because Svitla has done it very excitingly. After g4, well, Karyakin indeed went to d8 with ideas of knight to f7. And Svitla has played the... Well, fascinating move. King to, oh, but king that's, to, that's a very logical It's move. very logical. Mm -hmm. He wants to put the rook here, and one of the points of g4 was not only did it attack the white structure, but the king can go to g3 uh, like this. And, well, he will have a king on g3, and he will double in the h line. The king on g3 is nice indeed. <laughs> that, that much I, I yeah. agree with you. And actually... And it's very safe. I like the solidity of the black structure, but it would be better to put two knights on f7. I mean, if you go knight h7, I will take it and I will win some time. And if you play knight f7, well, then somehow the knight on f8 is a bit on a bad circuit. Mm -hmm. So it's not so simple for for Kayakin to, to, to make know, a move here, I think. It's not simple for either player. And I think, uh, well, Svidler, he's not exactly playing with fire, but okay. he's, he's playing it very aggressively today. Yeah, Gawain Jones is uh, tweeting exactly about ah, that, yeah. that enterprising play from Svidler and Mamedyarov today. Yeah, it's hard to do anything but just simply agree with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think, well, when you get praise from Gawain for playing <laughs> exciting chess, I mean, that's a guy who knows what he's talking about. That, it's, uh, that is true. I've, uh, I've always admired his chess, but I, it's not always that you can appreciate it r right away because he's actually playing it very creatively, I think. Yeah. And, uh, Instance, I think he had an interesting game with uh, Magnus Carlsen in, in London. Uh, oh uh, yeah, he played, that some was, that he was played a, a very, very nice position of queen sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out in the end, but uh, it was it was, it was very close. close and mm -hmm. uh, I think um, no, I, it was might even have been objectively good, but mm -hmm. uh, Carlsen somehow managed to defend. But Bishop d7. I really think that well, Rook h1. It must be Switler's pawn, yeah. right? And then let's follow up with the. Very logical move, bishop to c6. Or do you think that Switler actually has to take on f5 in this position? So that if you take with the e pawn, you have a check? Well, no, I, I, I don't really can believe maybe it. Maybe even take with I the g pawn here as well. Yeah, for a start and also. Mm -hmm. I think there you can play well, knight h6. Rook h1, mm -hmm. bishop c6. What is your next move? I think taking on c6 and playing king g3. Well, uh, I'm just uh, mentioning mm -hmm. the most straightforward sure. option. Sure. Takes, takes, king g3. Yeah. And, but now I would think it's about time to go knight f7, right? Yeah. How are you going to bump through here? <laughs> well. Are you going to take and play rook h8? But, it looks but that doesn't Then really I will just go knight d7. Mm hmm. No, it looks, well, of course, it looks nice what Svidler is doing, but uh, yeah. it, if it doesn't give anything this objectively. Is not somehow here, we didn't do it very well for Svidler. Could his idea be playing rook g1, not h1, and, uh, well, trying to do something along the g line? I'm a bit tempted to say no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and after bishop c6, for yeah. instance, somehow 
I think it also becomes easier for black uh, when you think well, it's going to go bishop h3 and just say this bishop is pointing out in something like no, that. It's a very interesting concept, but it's also well, a way to to become <laughs> worse with no, white but quite quickly. I mean, if you get like this, I mean, you can really bring in we say more guys to the that oh, oh oh sorry girls, Gr <laughs> girls to the attack sorry, yes. um, but um, th this could be dangerous. Still, I would say knight f7. Yeah. And rook g3? Yeah. No, but black is very take, solid. You could even, but you could even consider taking on f7 and when you take back, maybe even take or rook, just rook g3 first. It is actually not so easy coming up with... Maybe there's simply no threat at but all. But there from is my no threat. That's, but that's maybe what bothers me. <laughs> with rook g1, you might start threatening to sack on f5 and then get to g7. Yeah, but that's just one uh, one threat that you will most likely be able to parry. <laughs> yeah, but also there's not so much positive in Black's position, though. Mm -hmm. I, I still feel convinced that Switler has excellent positional compensation here, but um, maybe... maybe, yeah. maybe Let's I'm see wrong. what Let's he's see. doing. He has played... He, he took has on. just took... Okay, uh, <laughs> he has taken because, well, he believes that... And then... He takes f5 is dangerous. So Quickly, which one is he going to take back with? Well, I unfortunately I have glanced at the screen and I know which one is better. <laughs> ah, well, you know which one the computer thinks is better. Yeah, but exactly. Oh, no, now it's it, not so it's clear. It's anymore. very human to take back the e-pawn. Mm -hmm. Although you get the d5 square, I think that's... Somehow taking back with the d-pawn looks very scary for me. Yeah, taking back with the g-pawn and uh, allowing... Well, here... Then your rook g1 yes. plan as well starts Exactly, uh, uh, it starts in, to right? make sense. While e takes a 5 of course it is scary to allow the bishop to come to d5. But the good thing about it is that e6 is an excellent square for the Yeah, for and the I would knights. think that, let's say, bishop c6, queen d7. If we get in something like this, and, well, I would say... Uh, get you away from the d5 square. You could end up having a very bad position. But of course, Whitler yeah. will say, I'm going to do something aggressive in the meantime. <laughs> in the yes. meantime. And I guess that would be hmm. rook g1 here. Okay. Look, okay, he's oh, he's not thinking for long. He took the he e pawn. Took okay, this e is. Mm -hmm. That's going to be very interesting. Is <laughs> Yeah, I really want to give a check here, but maybe that's helping black even. No, I think you have to do that. At least I have to give a check. Okay, check really knight d6 so. and rook g1. For instance. Yeah, but it must be more about the g line than the h line. The h line here looks well, a bit... Well, the h line is a bit, uh, well, uh, empty. <laughs> you mm -hmm. don't really have any possibilities there. Okay, let's say bishop this c6 very, looks very, very logical. <laughs> and then... I would guess queen f3. Yeah, I queen f3 I makes sense. Uh, I'm not well, sure you have why. Ah, there's a threat on taking oh, on d5. There is a, there is yeah, a threat. You sure. have to protect f4, so but also... you have to protect this. And after, but what is your point after bishop takes d5? Uh -huh. Are you really uh, going to sacrifice on e5 as well? Can't I take here? And when you take on f4, I hope I can play d6. Uh -huh. I'm not saying it's necessarily very good. But well, it could be the only one you can... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's, uh, that's uh, nice. D6 is it's a good move. Uh, it's hard for me to evaluate something like this, and even knight E6 here, you're not going to... Oh, this looks promising for white. For me, it just looks complicated. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, well, uh, I mean that um, suddenly you have those two mm -hmm. uh, very, very strong pawns, and uh, even with uh, the rook from E1, you will protect E5. Easily. Ah, you're saying even if something like this... It's not like I have to break through. If I just, let's say, go rook e1, and it could even be queen g3 and f4, yes. I'm going to have these two pawns as, yeah. a, as, as Whether a you will win it or not, I don't know. But uh, no. again, uh, no. there is no risk. Okay. Well, I think <laughs> it's an interesting position. It's worth noting that Swidler has not given the check. No, not yet. Is, but is I think it's very likely he will. Well, you can go rook g1 first, but... Well, rook g1 must really, really be his this plan. This is where you want to put the mm -hmm. rook, right? I agree with and you, yes. And but bishop d5 could be bishop c6 the next move. It's an extra option. 
But I guess after Bishop, Bishop d5 check, check no. you don't really want to take it. So maybe it will just transpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could just be, uh, yeah, a transposition. Okay. Well, I don't know. Should we leave? I think uh, because leave things are happening Siddler in the Kremlin game, bit. right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we, we, yeah, something. Well, something now unexpected. I maybe make yeah. over dramatizing it a bit, but well, Kramnik has not kept his uh, well rook c3 queen h5, and Kramnik actually felt that uh, something more than just uh, positional compensation had to happen. He's played the move g4. Well, I thought about it, but I didn't even dare say it because I thought it looks yeah, I think so, I so bad. I would most likely have said something <laughs> critical <laughs> of, of that suggestion, but uh, wow, g4. Yeah. Okay. So well, he wants to put his queen <laughs> on f4 and attack f7. I okay, guess. so that's very direct, and he's played queen h4. If queen h6, would there be a very strong reply to that? You think he just want to take and play rook f3? Or is there something... Even that is a possibility. Hmm. Yes, something like something that, Something like instance. that? Or even playing uh, g5 and, well, locking the queen out completely. Something, and then, I guess, you go to h4. Ah, then comes queen f4. Exactly. Or, oh. or in case you play queen h4, ah, so you have just to play rook f3. So it's the same uh -huh, thing. Uh-huh, and rook f3. Okay. And here you could be in so, so a after very d4, serious trouble. Queen h4 has happened. Mm -hmm. I think this is the position we have on the board right now. It's really amazing. <laughs> g4. Well, he has to... Uh, well, someone who plays g4... <laughs> He has yeah. to have something very concrete in mind, and it has to be queen f4. Well, what else? Or rook rook f3, f3 is also mm. there, but I guess you will go f5. Mm -hmm. But you're saying queen f4. Yeah, I'm not sure what is, is his plan after... Ah, yeah, yeah. Two, right? If he plays queen f6 here, yeah. then maybe you play queen f6, bishop f6, and rook f3. Mm -hmm. And then f7 is dropping. Yes. After bishop d8... You will have to take with this rook, but yeah. even that is, no, is, is, is very good. That, that's, that's lovely so for white, yes. Probably queen f6 is not a, not a good no, move here. queen f6 is a bad move. But so now <laughs> f6 or f5 is uh, yeah. well, what he should be considering. Let's look at the most, I don't know, aggressive or natural move, f5 first. Mm -hmm. How is Kramnik gonna... I mean, black's position do look very solid. It does, yeah. You think he want to play something like, let's say, bishop d6 and... Uh, I mean, yeah, and then maybe rook takes g7. Even rook yes. g7, mm -hmm. or maybe a bit more solid, bishop e5 first. Is yeah, he, that is looks. Is this his concept? That looks attractive for sure. But well, at least this, bec and this is becoming a street fight almost. <laughs> <laughs> Something that, well, <laughs> no? strange again, uh, almost like yesterday. It's the same scenario. Yeah. He gets mm. a much better. Well, Kramnik gets a, a very pleasant. Uh, it did end Position. up well for Kramnik yesterday, but that was uh, a coincidence in some. Well, I that, think that was quite random. Yes. To say that sort of um, these sort of bare street fight things is Kramnik's uh, uh, sort of. Well, I don't think he's aiming for it, but maybe he's ending up in it. Yeah. No, he's not. Uh, well, I, I I still think that what he does is he still s simply believes that this is the best way to to follow up. Yeah. Maybe he has to play it sort of uh, an ant style in the sense of, well, just playing the position as it's fine and don't really caring about that you, you are lacking a pawn in this position. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering, f5? Well, it is uh, tough uh, in, in the sense of really weakening all the uh, black squares so in the position. So you say Let's you say like about f6. f6. I, I don't know, because the queen gets uh, yeah. very stuck in this position, so it also looks but dubious. But trapping it is tough. Maybe you can yeah. exchange it, but... That you can do. And, and you think endings are, are they... I'm not sure. Well, what about queen g3? Mm -hmm. Yes, you will take it. Yeah, let's say take an H takes. Uh -huh. Something like that. Yeah. Doesn't it look a bit promising for white? How about if something has happened? No? No, no, no. 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 It's Kramnik it's just came back. Kramnik came back. He has 37 minutes against 36. 
but for 19 moves, it's mm -hmm. it's not too bad, but it's no, not but extremely comfortable either. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, here we could see a little bit of uh, time trouble in this game. Yeah, when we look back at the lower board where we are analyzing, I would think if anyone is better, it should be white here. Mm -hmm. And I'm, but I was thinking, can you play e5 and maybe e4 is a some kind of threat. At least here you start creating counterplay, but you could, yeah. of course, also just be creating weaknesses. I was briefly I thinking about g5, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, looks like yeah, a strange. Maybe one. after f5, it gets worse. Yes, it gets worse, worse, so. worse considerably. Um, Although I would take on g seven and e five and say that was yeah, a uh, <laughs> positional sacrifice. Probably not enough. No. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Well, should no. you take on e five and play okay, bishop like g two? We got a computer evaluation up there that says zero point one. Mm -hmm. I, it's probably not uh, very very relevant. We, we seem to think that queen f four is the only move, but. There must also be other m moves, I think. What about, for instance, bishop d6 straight away? What would that be? It's not clear what my idea is, but I think basically I want to take control of the of the c-line. He just played, well, he queen, played f4. queen f4. So okay. It is the most natural move, mm -hmm. uh, so it is as expected. And now Andreken will have to... Yeah. I think he will have to spend some time to see... Uh, well. Well, queen f6, he's not going to play. It is, uh, mm -hmm. it is quite obviously uh, well worse for, for black. It's the worst of the options. But both f6 and f5 are playable. I think generally <coughs> he's a very optimistic player. Yeah. But, what that, but I can't f sort of make up my mind. Does it mean he will play f6 or f5? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't I think actually, it's... Yeah, I think Stylistically, you can't really make any. No, sort I of think it's a very here. concrete uh, yeah. decision, and uh, that's what uh, he will also think. He's well, you look could for argue, a good move. You could saying. argue that f5 is more energetic, as it also well puts some kind of um, well, yeah. it attacks attacks a little bit. But f6 could uh, could prepare e5, for instance, mm -hmm. in the future. So maybe f6 is a bit more logical. We mm -hmm. have a from Sid Gandhi. Mm -hmm. He's writing that, uh, do you think the rating difference between the top players and Carlsen is justified or do you think it's exaggerated? Oh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was a bit biased on this one, so yeah, it should be you I, actually. You think I should answer. But, well, I think the rating system is is rather accurate in some sense and if, the, if it's self-adjusting. Uh, I haven't been doing any statistics and I don't know if Carlsen's rating is based on let's say beating, well, I was about to say lower rated players, but they're actually <laughs> all lower rated players, I think he yes. would point out. But um, that I haven't done that sort of statistically speaking, but well, I think he has actually beaten Aronian within the, well, not this year, but last year and such. So I think it's sort of reflecting his results against the, mm. the, the, the players very much. And uh, well, right now it's, I think it seems to be fitting, but okay, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm very biased in, in that respect. But I yeah. think the rating system, despite its disadvantages and, and such, it still seems to be a very good indicator of how a player has, has been well, doing. It is, it is the best criteri criterion yeah. we have for, the, well, for, for establishing the player's strength, uh, generally. M so. Maybe one would say that the rating system doesn't take in that well, some players, for instance, like myself, will play 10 games a year. And that means that, the, I mean, the rating might reflect how we used to play and not how mm -hmm. we are playing. But someone like Carlsen or the other top players are actually playing quite a number of games. And mm -hmm. there is a lot of statistical material in, in, yeah. in, in that sense. So, well, I think it's, well, I think if you compare it to, let's say, for instance, tennis rankings or even, well, worse, maybe the UEFA football rankings, I think the chess ranking is quite good, uh, at least in sort of predicting, uh, well, the differences in strengths and of outcomes. So mm -hmm. I think, well, Carlsen has, has quite earned his rating, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I can see that our players are, well, remaining players are, are taking their time now in um, basically all the, mm -hmm. all the games. Yeah, and Reagan most likely will uh, think a little bit about what he likes more, f6 or f5, and it's not so clear. Well, it's hard to give him <laughs> advice. It's yeah, hard to I say which one is better, simply. Uh, yeah, I think so. So uh, we will have a look at Topalov Mamejarov, as they have, they have gotten this um, oh. endgame. 
And this looks, doesn't it look a bit complicated? <laughs> or <laughs> well. Is it? well, we left you here after with Mahmoud Yara thinking, and it was not clear to us what was he thinking about. But he did, after all, play the move Bishop d4. Well, Topalov was caused to back and knight c3, d6. And you are right, he did take back the rook on e6. Yep. Rook fd2, rook g3, and now Topalov took this pawn, takes, takes, and now bishop takes g4. Sort of a slight desperado. Mm -hmm. And now hg4, rook, rook takes g2. Has, has happened. Mm -hmm. And is this just a, a dead draw? Is uh, Topalov putting pressure? Well, Topalov is playing the aggressive moves directly. Well, I guess you can also argue is g5, was that aggressive or well, just H5 defensive? Well, h5 could be a, yeah. a very natural well, reaction. Well, if, if you took on a6, well, this move will attack this pawn and even worse, the h pawn would run. So, mm -hmm. so g5, I think, was just a good move. You think yeah. h6 No, no I think h5. maybe you should start with rook f2, let's say, uh, hitting the f4 pawn. Uh, okay. And uh, if you have to... If you have to defend it, well, h5 would be very typical because you don't want to be, uh, well, uh, boxed in well, like this and this. But how, well, king g7 followed by h5, I, I can understand, but h5 kind of just take it. Yeah, well, he just played rook f2, let's have a look. Uh-huh. And, and uh, you could have uh, a point there, <laughs> yes. Uh, is, it, is there any sort of idea in, if you take on a6, he takes on f4? Could white be a bit quicker in some way here with his pawns, but they are weak. They are weak, but of but of course, uh, well, the c pawn is just a passed pawn. <laughs> yeah, but probably the black king would even run that direction. And uh, yeah. well, despite we spoke about this h and f or a and c pawn ending, that they are uh, quite yeah, often but drawn. But those two are very far away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the black could start considering running with his king as well to defend. Mm -hmm. So I would really think that Topalov wants to to sort of cling on to his. Uh, yeah, I really upper. agree that after rook f6, king g7 is the best move. Yeah. As the <laughs> well, as eight, the eight, h5, h5 will be. Uh, this actually unpleasant. creates sort of per perfect harmony that you cannot. Uh, well, king f7, king h7, f7 would would be sort of uh, hanging. But maybe king g7 just here and now h5 coming next is, is almost a threat. No, rook f6 is not a good move, most likely. So either he should take on a6 or play rook d4. Ah, rook d4. Just, uh, well... Rook d4, well, I like in the sense that it's defending this pawn and also it's cutting the king, which mm -hmm. means I would start having hopes of, well, maybe not exactly queening the c pawn, but, but still. But at least trying. Rook d4, mm -hmm. I think. It's a nice mix of a sensible move and a very aggressive move, and that doesn't that sound like Topalov. Uh, yeah, rook d4 is... Uh, I, I, I absolutely agree. Rook d4 is most likely what he's going to do. But even so, it does look quite draw, as I would say. Very much so. And you could even... Maybe you could start playing something like f6, and if you take it... I think it, black has then to make a pawn. couple of exact yeah. moves. Uh, that's, sure. that's it. But I do like rook d4 a lot, I would mm -hmm. say. That seems like the best way to keep things under control. But mm -hmm. he does look quite aggressive, actually, uh, Topalov. So maybe he is thinking, you think he's, he is considering to take an a6? No, I think he's con I think it's more likely he's considering to play rook d4 followed by c4. That would be my hunch. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, we will go for a short break now and uh, we will keep an eye on all the games and we'll be back very soon. Thanks. Seven of FIDE candidates tournament, Levon Aronian defeated Sergei Kayakin to join Vishwanathan Anand on the top of the cross table. Anand had some advantage with black against Peter Svidler, but he couldn't achieve more than a draw. Vladimir Kramnik won a wild game against Shahriyar Mamidyarov. 
Dmitry Andreykin escaped from the bottom by punishing Veselin Topolov's overambitious play. The first game to finish was a battle between Dmitry Andreykin and Veselin Topolov. Already on the seventh move, White introduced a novelty. But his plan was quite slow, and Black threatened to take the initiative after a quick castle and pawn sacrifice. But Topalov chose a wrong path, and White first secured the advanced c6 pawn and then evacuated the king to safety on a1. Black was running out of options as his pieces couldn't get to the good squares. When Andrekin took the weak d5 pawn, Black position immediately fell apart. Another novelty in Berlin, in the game of former world champion Vishwanathan Anand, proves that he has plenty of preparation left from the match in Chennai. Peter Svidla spent 40 minutes to make his 15th move, and his position looked depressing. But then suddenly Anand pulled a break and allowed White to somewhat stabilize the game. Anand started over again by giving the queen for rook, bishop and better pawn structure. But Svidla found the straightforward plan for equalization and the game was agreed a draw. Levon Aronian also played the popular Berlin line against Sergei Karyakin. White had difficulties in getting his pawn majority going, while Black slowly propped opponent's structure on the king's side. Despite the apparent simplicity on the board, Karyakin was spending lots of time. Few moves before the time control, White changed two pieces for a rook and some pressure on the back rank. He did win the bishop back, but then Black captured a handful of pawns while constantly threatening the White King. Karyakin tried to seek the escape by exchanging the queens, but Black pawns were too fast and the game was concluded in Aronian's favor on move 53. A truly mind-blowing game between Shahri Armamidyarov and Vladimir Kramnik started with Ragozin Queen's Gambit. White emerged with a small but healthy advantage and Kramnik proceeded to perform his traditional positional squeeze. At some point Vladimir rushed with a central break e4 and Mamidyarov got the chance to unbalance the position. The position was immensely complicated and Black had to find a sequence of computer-like moves to stay in the game. Mamidyarov's hand slipped in the decisive moment when he allowed promotion with check, instead of creating checkmating net around White King. After that, already Black had a winning position, which Kramnik easily converted. After seven rounds, Aronian and Anand are leading with four and a half points. The leading Bulgarian grandmaster was born on the 15th of March 1975 in Rus. Veselin learned to play chess at the age of eight and very quickly proved to be one of the most promising players of his generation. In 1989 he became under-14 world champion and runner-up in the 1990 under-16 world championships. In 1992 Topolov gained his grandmaster title and entered the chess world's elite. From the mid-90s this ultra-talented Bulgarian won tournament after tournament and soon became a candidate for the champion's title. In 2005, Topolov proved his strength and superiority by winning the FIDE World Championship in San Luis. In 2006, in Elista, Topolov lost a controversial rematch with Kramnik on a tiebreak and so lost the crown. After a small loss of form following the match, Topolov had regained the number one spot in the ratings by the end of 2008. In 2009, he won a candidates match against Kamsky and earned the right to face world champion Anand. The match for the title was held in 2010 in Sofia. Although Topolov lost to Anand, it was very close and it went down to the last game to decide the outcome. In the candidates match of 2012, Topolov was defeated by Kamsky but he did not give up on his championship ambitions. Having won tournaments in London and Zug, the Bulgarian was the overall winner of the 2012-2013 FIDE Grand Prix series and is again one of the main candidates for the title match.
Topolov is known for his robust, uncompromising style. He plays every game to win, and the combination of a sharp tactical eye coupled with fine positional skills lets him create chess masterpieces of exceptional vigor and beauty. Hi, we're back after a short break and it seems that one more game is heading for a draw. Topalov Mamitarov is very likely to finish soon. This uh, rook end game well, seems to be quite drawish, wouldn't you say? I agree so, but I think uh, Swidler and Kramnik is trying very hard to, well, for Kramnik's sake, catch up with the two leaders and for Swidler to get in striking distance. And I think, mm -hmm. well, it's true, Topalov Mamitarov is very likely to be a draw, but I think we still have quite some action coming up in, uh, in the games here. Should we have a look at uh, Kramnik and Draken first? We see, see and mm -hmm. here in, in the camera. After Queen F4 and Draken did play F6 mm -hmm. and it looked like, well, a very ambitious move, but Kramnik answered back with a very ambitious move as well and sort of exploiting that uh, and Draken did not play F5. He could play F5 here, but he played F6 and Kramnik played the move Bishop E7. Yeah, it and is a very interesting... It's a very complicated Except. position. But, uh, well, yeah, I'm not completely sure what is his plan next. Well, I think his plan is to, for a start, contain. Um, yeah. And, But also, well, maybe it's Queen it's E6 it's could be a move, I maybe would Maybe it's think. a very nice way to uh, make sure that E5 is not happening. <laughs> maybe it's a completely prophylactic and move. Just so I can see it as well, why is E5 not happening? Well, because I take on e5. Knight e6, and I'm threatening. Aha, uh -huh. sorry. That, that, that was my mistake, well, of it course. It could be that you are brilliant by, by coincidence, yes. or, or by in intuition, <laughs> we're calling it. I Queen f3. Queen f3, and, and if I take here, maybe you can just take yes. back, and it's completely... I mean, this one is hanging, and, and probably worse, this, this thread is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe well, it that, actually that was my plan. <laughs> that worked out brilliantly. <laughs> so... But what is a dragon actually going to do here? If you can't play... <coughs> I mean, Well, e5 was not necessarily special this idea. But let's say idea. something like g5, but this looks... It looks terrible. Well, you want to br bring the knight to g6, that's what yeah. you're saying. But I think uh, queen d6, I, s I want yeah, to do myself as well. Even worse, to flash some tactics. What about this, actually? If you g4, you can take... Ah, oh, it's actually made in... I was about to say you yeah. also win the queen, but it, <laughs> rook g7 to g5 is made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yes. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Just, yes. Well, so, so g5 is, is not exactly good. No, bishop e7 is... Uh, it's a very, well, interesting, a very interesting move. interesting move. And, uh, um, and puts Can we go queen g5, maybe? W well, and now you want to... No, I think yeah, you're ready to play a position... Which is considerably worse. But how exactly? I will also hit d4 in the process. I understand, but I will take on g5. Okay, I take back. And uh, let's see, even if I play bishop c5 simply. For for the time being, at least. Uh, but I like that I get an e5. And this knight is actually okay, going he just in, in this it. direction. And he's that's, played it. That's so quite a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not clear that Kramnik will take, will take it. I was just thinking that maybe he should take on g5 and play rook d3 instead. But of course, then you play rook c8 and you get the yeah, c line you, back. Yeah, you're losing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it somehow it is close, but the timing is a bit wrong. But also, wouldn't you be attempt? I mean, be very tempted with attacking the queen on g5. Let's say queen g3. Mm -hmm. It feels like we are almost about to trap it, doesn't it? Or well, what about queen d2? Yeah. <laughs> That's Maybe now queen okay. e f queen e three and when, well, what I'm saying is that if something like this, now I've actually repaired my structure and I keep the c line and mm -hmm. this it could be very nice. Still for a pawn I've down the on the king's side, but it doesn't for matter. For sure, but I agree. I mean, the pair of bishops and the, the c line, it's mm -hmm. very huge factors. Well, uh, this looks uh, uh, promising I, for white. I, I, I like Kramnik's position. I would but say. he shouldn't. He probably shouldn't take on no, G5. No, I think taking on G5 somehow times out a, a bit wrong, and, and black might sort of uh, come a bit to life. 
Yeah. Uh, basically, after, let's say, Queenie Free here. You think uh, immediately? You well, let's say even immediately. Uh -huh. That doesn't really matter. A four is, uh, is a threat, I think. Yeah. You can't really afford to have your queen uh, no, it's so basically stuck. And can I play a move like e5 here, actually? But maybe you just take it. But, well, I, I want to break out for at almost any cost. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I want to play knight e6, uh, sort of to be more, more concrete. Well, it could be. Yeah, it's complicated. There is nothing to say. Well, let's say, uh, well, we could see. Maybe even something like this, and you really keep things under control. It, it's a very difficult position. We could I see think. on the screen that something exciting was happening on, uh, in Svidla Kriakin okay, game. Okay, so, so, so let's, let's jump there. This mm. one will be for us for a while, I think. Yeah, let's have a look at, at that one a little bit. <coughs> okay, I think we were in this situation a while ago, and Switler was considering to give a check immediately or yeah. not. And he decided he to do that. He checked, rook d1, bishop c6, queen f3 as expected, yeah. and rook a d8. It's okay, Switler played rook a1, sort of fortifying the e5 square, mm -hmm. and now after queen d7, Switler has played bishop takes e6. It's quite an amazing move, I would say. Yeah. But no, maybe it's, it's simply it's just forced. He's, uh, he, he has no choice. Yeah. And taking on c6 is... Probably he needs this bishop. So bishop e6, knight e6. And I was about to say, he's probably going to go queen g3. It's maybe the only... Ah, you can even go to h3, actually. Well, you're threatening me. <laughs> yeah. So you think it's going to be queen h3 now? Yeah. And because of the threat on, on the h... I think you have to take on g5, right? Or, or not? You see another move here? No. You really. I guess you have to take. And will you even consider taking with the bishop? Hmm. This is... This is complicated. This is very complicated. Well, what I started thinking was taking here. It's threatening this rook. And I want to win a tempo for, let's say, in this position. I would be hoping of something like this. But maybe it's actually complete crap after queen f7. Maybe I'm just uh, doing too much here. But you think you like just worse? But it's something like rook takes, I would think king f7. <coughs> and uh, what to do about this? So how That's what I'm saying. Aren't you just worse as white? What is Whitler doing here? Sorry? Yeah, it's uh, simply not I I don't get it. Obvious. How? Ah, sorry, uh, we have missed. It was already a draw ah. in Mamecharov Topalov. So we are going mm. for the press conference now and we'll be back soon. Enjoy. No, it was quite interesting. Uh, so, okay, G6 is not now the most... Uh, popular, but uh, well, there of course I don't know exactly. Было очень интересно. G6 не самый популярный ход сейчас. And here I try to castle long, which is like uh, well, one of the plans. Я не знал точно теории в этой позиции и решил uh, сделать длинную рокировку. Это один из планов. И позиционный, как скажем здесь. Uh, and play positionally. Я не знаю, как, скажем, на этот ход мне не понравилось какой-то ход типа first b6. On this move, I didn't like something like this, for instance, queen b6. Не знаю, что происходит. And I don't know what's happening. А если просто queen b5, first d8. And if just knight b5, then queen d8. Then queen d8. So that was the reason I played f4 to keep my king on on c1. Это была причина, по которой сыграл f4, чтобы оставить своего короля на c1. For example, now of course, uh, also I don't know. Okay, maybe it was better to immediately jump, but. Здесь я не знаю, может быть лучше было сразу yeah, прыгнуть на d5. E5 or. Yeah. Тогда e5. 
Or, or Queen C3 also sometimes. Или ферзь С3 какой-то момент. If Queen C3, I can no, take and Rook D1, says Shahriar. So here, well, now I don't know, because, uh, for example, uh, after B5, if I start uh, King B1, maybe sometimes uh, Queen B8 or Queen B7. Ну, здесь я не знаю, потому что если B5 я начну с король B1, может быть, ферзь B7 или ферзь B8, возможно. But probably that was not so, well, I don't know, probably now, now for, for example, G5 is simply strong. Например, здесь G5 But просто B4, сильно. Ну, тогда B4, я не знаю. Может быть, это то, что мне стоило сделать. также возможно. Но, может быть, это лучше, чем то, что я сделал в партии. Здесь я ожидал хода E5. But of course, then if I take, for example, uh, if Bishop takes, I think. Uh, ну затем, конечно, если беру now, sure if, и слон берет, uh, то сравнивая с партией, я не уверен. If, uh, jumps, я не уверен, что у черных есть все эти прыжки. Но D8, я думал, что это защищающийся ход. Now, now На самом деле он довольно умный. Потому что теперь в этом варианте я не знал, что будет происходить после взятия, потому что черные хотят взять на B3 в какой-то момент. Здесь еще проблема в том, что никак белый Ефи не может бить сон А6 всегда. Also the problem is that white cannot take on E5 because of bishop H6. И если бить вот король B1 все время кон C4 уже. And here if you take on king B1 there is always knight C4. Ладья 8 очень хорошо из-за этого. Rook E8 is a very good move because of this. And Yeah, knight c4, it's somehow... Did you explain I, this? No, actually I missed uh, the idea exactly. Uh, this I missed the idea in this position. And of course now, uh, uh, for example, problem is that uh, first I thought uh, Конечно, здесь проблема в том, что я сначала думал, что можно c3 пойти, тогда просто позиционно хорошо у черных, потому что не знаю, как остановить ферзь a5, ферзь a3. Может быть, критическим является ход ферзь b4, но я испугался подобных ходов ладья b5. Мне казалось, что это очень опасно для белых. Послан d4, я думаю, ладья a5 и e5. Если я возьму... Здесь, может быть, просто можно взять на a2. Может быть, это было лучше. Вероятно. На самом деле, действительно, это выглядит лучше, но я испугался этого всего. И Е4, возможно, наверняка. Не уверен, что это так просто. Бишоп d4. Да, это возможно, где-то e3, но я не уверен, может быть, это лучше. Вероятно, это было критическое. Может быть, слон b2 спрашивает Анастасия. Я думаю, что это лучше должно быть для белых. Также какой-то ход С3 тоже должно быть не очень хорошо. Но я испугался хода ладья Б5. 
Мне казалось, что это очень опасно. Но на самом деле, может быть, не все так просто. Но может быть, даже E5 здесь, не знаю. Мне казалось, что здесь очень запутано. Здесь ладья d2, я думал, что практически выигрывает пешку. Например, после слон c6 хотел сыграть король e2 и слон f1. И тогда это просто выигрывает пешку. Но ладья же 3 очень хороший Because ход, и думаю, что это уже равенство. Потому что следующий ход h5. Mm. Okay. Is, uh, kind of Но финальная mm. позиция, конечно, просто равная. Здесь, может быть, ладья g4, возможно, было вместо ладья f2. В середине отмечает, что это ладья d4. C4 очень сильно будет. No, I thought rook d4. Здесь я думал ладья d4, потом c4, c5. Я не думаю, что у белых лучше, если я возьму на 6. Мне кажется, можно только хуже получить, если будешь рисковать. Я думаю, что можно даже получить лучшую позицию, если вы продолжаете играть так, как говорит Шахриар. Нет, просто... Окей, здорово. Это просто не Конечно, ферзь b4 критическая позиция. Сначала я подумал, что ладья d2 это лучше, потому что я выиграю пешку и у меня будет спокойная игра. Но здесь мне казалось, что у меня слишком много ходов в этой сложной позиции, и это как раз позиция в стиле Шахрияра, поэтому... Без фигуры, да? Without a piece, says Shach. Actually, Shachriyar, when you played this knight c4, I mean, did you calculate, how far did you calculate, and, uh, or you just like this line? Shachriyar, когда вы конь c4 сыграли, насколько далеко вы считали, или вам просто нравилось это? Мне просто конь не нравился, так скажем. No, but even here, I'm not sure. I just didn't like my knight, says Shachriyar. Дело в том, что если ход белый король бьет... In fact, even... The point that is white is moving, then king b1. И слон d4 там же... And bishop d4 ну, наверное, так надо играть где-то, вот что-то еще одно надо пожертвовать. Шахрер сказал, что, наверное, это так, как он должен быть. Нет, ход, может быть, еще один ход, может быть, еще один ход, по-моему, Е5 и шах есть. И ладья Б3. Я думаю, что есть еще один ход, и рук Б3, и я не знаю, что это будет. Может быть, это лучше было. Может быть, это было лучше. Мне казалось, что это немножко опасно. I don't know. It seemed to me that it is a little bit dangerous. 
може би лучше, но не казах за да скоро че не опасно. Maybe it's better, but on the board it seemed to me that it's very dangerous. So just to clarify the situation, Shahrar, because I didn't really hear your answer, you played it just because you felt that it might be worse if you don't play this, right? Чтобы просто прояснить ситуацию, то есть вы сыграли конь c4, потому что иначе считали, что будет хуже позиция. То, что еще, я думаю, что вчерашний парт тоже влияло. Not really. I also think that my yesterday's game influenced my play today. После хода конь c4, конечно, и я прекрасно знал, что сегодня мой соперник Весин хотел выиграть партию, наверное, больше меня. И вот этот вариант вообще же самой партии получился очень хорошо. И он никогда бы вот эту позицию, которую форсировал, он никогда не форсировал, если бы тоже, ну, чтобы чувствовал, что хочешь, ну, не так опасно. Он тоже чувствовал, что опасность есть, из-за этого форсировал. И я думаю, что ход конь c4 очень правильный ход, как раз в тот момент, когда я играл, я еще раз говорю, или ты должен защищаться очень долго, или ты должен конь c4 решать. Well, my opponent today, Veselin, uh, for sure was play, was uh, willing to win this game too. So uh, I think I played knight c4 in the right moment because if uh, I could uh, go to defense or I could play uh, this way, and uh, I think it was just played in the right moment, this move. We are back for the games, and uh, well, quite surprising, uh, t uh, quite, quite a surprising turn of events in Kramnik and Draken. It almost looks like uh, Kramnik decided that uh, his attack, well, his initiative, uh, hasn't given him anything, and he's trying to make a draw. At least this is uh, how, well, how I read this G5 move yeah, that, that he has just made. Things has gone out of control, as, mm -hmm. as I see it. We had this position. Queen d3. Yeah, and after Queen d2? Queen d3 happened as we kind of expected, and then Queen d2. But then cr we thought really Kramnik's idea had to be Queen e3. But he played the move g5, and that's, that's and a that's huge surprise well, to us. Well, that's strange because he could have taken on g5 yeah, himself if before. You <laughs> if you remember here, yeah. it was possible to take like this. But now, if Kramnik exchanged the queens, we get exactly the same position, but without a white pawn on g4. Mm -hmm. We do understand the pawn on g4 would be blocking the bishop on h3, but we actually don't see how to exploit it. Our best guess is Kramnik wants to play like this and then to take on f8. And just to, well, Maybe to make a draw here. This is like sort it. of a mm -hmm. way of trying to make a draw. Let's say you take with the bishop and, well, rook e3 and you are, you are aiming these pawn. Well, the e6 pawn, but after the e6 pawn, probably the pawn mm -hmm. on d5 will drop. And this could be a very likely yeah. draw. He is lacking two pawns, but, well, he's going to mm -hmm. get at least one of them back uh, very soon. Well, uh, the reason this is a little bit surprising is that in this previous position, after queen d2, right? Yeah. If we go back we a bit. We thought that queen e3 was nice Queen for e3 is uh, nice for white, as uh, it seems like you have to take on e3. And after f takes, um, well, the the pluses, the trumps of the wise position are still there. Uh, you can still play mm. bishop f1 followed by a4. The c line is still yours. And even the d4 pawn, which was, uh, well, a constant source of worry for white, is now very well protected. Mm. What is it that Kramnik didn't like here? Mm. It will be very interesting to find yeah. out. Well, it simply is uh, not so easy to see. A check on d1, but it looks extremely dangerous because after king d2, the queen on d1 is almost trapped. So it's it's uh, no, it's a curious moment, and I think yeah, it's, Kramnik it's has yeah. definitely lost control. Also, he doesn't look overly happy with the situation. I, I am thinking that maybe after g5, well, he forgot that queen can uh, go back. You really think he forgot queen well, takes g5? Well, it's that's well, that's a guess, of course. Yeah. I simply d well it's also. There is nothing it came, massively it wrong with, with yeah. f takes g5 either, no. maybe. 
uh, Make- but simply it's hard to understand what is it that well I think even on Dragon he looks at it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> some incredulity what happened here yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah. suddenly he's two pawns up yeah at least briefly and <laughs> look uh, mm-hmm. he's glancing at Kramnik and uh, well, yeah. uh, okay. it seems like he's he, almost... He's going to take on g5. Okay, okay. Well, uh, well, it's it's difficult to guess any of his moves, it seems. But now he's simply two pawns down and two central pawns down. So that's also a great way to Bishop lose takes it. d4. What is it that his point is here? He really... Thinks rook f3? What, rook f3? What, what is it... What is it aiming at exactly? Even that I is not clear. Even rook c8, I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, oops, she had oops the pawn. It's getting out of hand for Kramnik, I think. Uh, Again. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. I uh, would say. It's basically the exact same scenario like yesterday, but well, here the, com- the position is less complicated, I think, simply. Well, it is. I still think he has quite decent compensation if you g- go something like rook to c6 mm-hmm. and maybe bishop h6 yes, to follow and you simply. might take on f8. Mm-hmm. It's actually going to be very hard breaking down the white position but mm-hmm. I don't think the Kramnik has ended up here by sort of uh, aiming for it. I think he's ended up here by accident and now he's trying yeah. to make the best out of what actually has happened. Well, oh. maybe it's uh, maybe you're right that it's not uh, yet scary for him as mm. he will also... Goodness. Well, Okay, he put yeah. the rook there. Yeah. He has activity, of course, yeah. in this position. <laughs> Acti- who do you think has the best winning chances here from a practical perspective? I You're sure it's... <laughs> no one. <laughs> <you're> <laughs> <think> no one. <laughs> well, no, well, I, I mean, yeah. uh, is there anything better for Kramnik ac- apart from playing bishop h6 on the next move? And if there no. isn't, then he will just take on f8 and take on e6. Yeah, I'm starting to wondering, draw. what is Andrei King going to do? Maybe it makes sense to poke the rook on, on, on c7, and when it goes to b8, maybe I can take over the c line. I don't know which rook is the best. What, okay, a6 is hanging. Yeah, you shouldn't give but away a6, and b5 is hanging as well. No, yeah. I don't think you have reasons to be, well, that aggressive. No, but I also want to strike in some sense before bishop h6 comes. It's not clear that what it's doing, and I understand. Well, I think Andrei can, well, should, should think a little bit about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, well, at the moment it seems that the most likely scenario in this game as well is a draw. I, I as, think... Uh, well, okay. what is two yeah. pawns down at the moment? I think it can be anything, and I think we're going to... I think. Th- the most likely scenario it could be a, a kind of a wild time scramble, actually, in a sense. But I think if we have to predict the result, I agree with you. I think a draw is the most likely. Mm-hmm. Kramnik's compensation is good, but, but not of a it's sort also of missing two points. It's not, a, not of an aggressive uh, sort of um, nature, nature, in, in mm-hmm. a way. Now we're switching to uh, the game Peter Svidler against uh, Sergei Karyakin, where actually, uh, well, the thi- things have started to get out of hand for white, too. Uh, so we have uh, we have two f- well favorites in this in in those two games. Well, playing the white pieces mm-hmm. and and more points in the tournament at exactly. least. Exactly, but um, they are not doing. I think uh, that this well is at the, the position we had at the lower board. Is maybe the critical one, and maybe here Switler missed a good chance. He should have taken on e6, and now rook takes g6. Maybe Kayakin would want to give an exchange with uh, rook takes e6. That's it can't, it can't, it can't be, can't ruled, be out. ruled out. But mm-hmm. something like this would have been very interesting. But Switler took on e6 with the bishop, knight takes, queen g3, and now a very nice defensive move, rook c8. Mm-hmm. Because should you take on g5, then with this move, you're going to threaten the rook and win some time. And after rook c8, something like bishop f6 could be very strong. That's but true. just going rook c out eight first, it seems that, well, white is not really able to sort of do something very aggressive. He played the move knight eight three, eyeing the pawn on, on f7, but Kayakin just played just queen f7, and mm-hmm. Swidler apparently didn't want to take on, f- on g6. I would think is the reason, like, takes, takes king f7, and next it's going to be rook h8, and it's a... Uh, 
actually extremely uncomfortable for yeah, black. Yeah, well, suddenly the bishop C6 yeah. really uh, comes uh, into life. Well, it it is very much alive, but it's just not hitting anything. So after queen f7, Spittler has played queen h4, and Kayakin has played bishop h3. But he wants to put the bishop on h5, I think, right? And how is... Yeah, I think Spittler well, is in trouble. Let's say <sighs> knight g5. Knight takes, rook takes. And now I would guess putting the the bishop here, is that extremely solid for black? Well, I think we are past the the, the st well <laughs> the stage where black is trying to be solid. Yeah, well, what I mean is that it completely blocks all the attack on mm -hmm. this side. And then, well, we have free hands. To, I'm not trying to make a draw, but I'm trying to yeah. sort of... Uh, preempt any kind of uh, yeah. counter Well, if we have to evaluate the situation, um, they still have uh, 12 moves to make. A Siddler is down to 8 minutes, and objectively he's worse. I think he should go for knight g5. Well, just a couple of moves ago he went knight h3, so apparently yeah. he thought that this wasn't his best chance. But I think now the situation has changed. He should go for knight g5, and claim that it is um, well, it is a an opposite colored bishop uh, position, uh, mm -hmm. which has gone wrong for him. Okay. Well, he didn't. Well, he doesn't, he what doesn't what did so. he do? He played bishop d2. Bishop to d2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I would think it doesn't spoil much. In no, the sense that but how well the trend is very bad for him. Uh, that course. I agree to. But if you want to play knight d5, yeah, you, you can, can do it a bit later it. as well. That I agree with. Maybe bishop g4 would be a good move to sort of... Uh, well, what, force, what about force. knight g5 still? Yeah. <coughs> and I'm going to take it and you will take... Well, with the queen, let's see. Mm. I would like to put my king on g3 here. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And Well, I would like to put my king on f7. So <laughs> That's maybe true. we would have something like this. And rook h1. Rook h8. And a free, for instance. Oh. Here, the worst is over. Aha, uh -huh. you're saying that I'm running into a position like this. Well, um, you still are probably not yeah. worse as black. But here we are talking about white trying to maintain the balance suddenly. Yeah. And uh, Maybe you're yeah. right that this bishop on h5 could be a, a quite a strong defensive piece, mm -hmm. but not more than that. Well... I'm afraid that long term, something like, let's say, rook b8 and then b5 would be a way to, to open up things. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe it's more complex than we thought. And Swidler's bishop d2 is, he's trying to also lure the, the black bishop to h5. And he's or thinking, g4, yes. yeah, that it will be out of play. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe putting the bishop on d2 is also, well, he's keeping an eye on the queen's side. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that could become very important. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, should bl black play b5 at some point soon? That's going to be an important um, I think it's clear that black too. is better, and uh, I would say this is by far the best position Kayakin has had yeah, in this tournament. Yeah, I was also wondering, uh, this is the best position for Sergei I, so I would really think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, I maybe he's been slightly better in one of his, some of his white games, but not mm -hmm. more than that. But still... I think Swidler do have quite some defensive resources. Uh, uh, well, they are mainly still. connected to the fact that he's uh, well. That it could become uh, opposite colored bishop yeah. position where, yeah, mm -hmm. where he has let's his chances, let's of course. Let, let, let's see here. But uh, well, we thought that let's say the two leaders making a draw, it could actually sort of open things up for for the competitors in, in order to catch up. But uh, Topalov Mamadyarov has been a draw, and right now it seems like mm -hmm. Swidler and Kramnik, if anything, is fighting to not lose today. That's well, how, how I see it. Well, sometimes really wanting to win yeah, is, yeah. Not a, is not <laughs> well, an advantage. Not, no, no, I, un I understand. But, uh, well, I think Kramnik would make a draw, but would he lose and Swidler not win? The closest rival will be in 50%, actually, yeah. amazingly. It has, and it's not like we have seen a lot of draws in this tournament. I think Not at all. before today, Fewer than apart usual. from one mm -hmm. result, we were on a 50% uh, decided games. Mm -hmm. Today could end up in even four draws, but I think still the games today has been huge fighting games, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, should we have a look a little bit about uh, at, at, at the game Kramnik well, and let, Drake? Let's sort of switch a bit back and forth. I think you're right and let's see, see how it develops. Mm -hmm. So, so Kramnik... 
we had this position where Kramnik put the rook from c3 to c6 and and Reichen followed out by a5. And Kramnik had played bishop h6 and, and Reichen has played b4. To me it looks like, well, they are almost agreeing to draw any, any <laughs> points. <so> really? <laughs> it's two extra points. Uh, yeah, yeah, but well, they are... Okay, now comes okay, king e2. Is he really trying to play for a win? Okay. Well, how is he making a draw here? Well, I thought that, well, you take on f8, you take on e6. And, uh, no, of course, king g2 followed by f3 well, you f can play. Mm -hmm. Now, at least bishop f8, he's uh, running into rook f2 check. Yes, I but understand that. I think maybe he's just trying to improve his position a, yeah. uh, a bit. And, well, he, he thinks, and rightly so, that, well, black uh, pawns cannot really uh, run away no. that far. What happens if uh, Andrei can place e5? Maybe something like rook f6 even. Well, you also allowed rook g7 check, but maybe also, that doesn't bother you. Yeah. Maybe well, bishop g7 could also be a move to put it on f6 actually. Yeah. Maybe e5 is... E5 is very Maybe risky. this is the, the problem. I'm just trying to make yeah. some sort of move uh, for black that uh, has... Um, yeah, that's going forward. Do you think a5 and b4 for from Andreikian, is that putting the pawns? On safe squares, or is it trying to be aggressive? Well, it could be both, of course. Well, it could be just that he simply doesn't have any other moves. <laughs> that no. could also be the problem. What about a4 now for him? Like this? Yeah, just like this, simply. Mm -hmm. Well, um, if... Uh, I'm wondering if your rook will be distracted at some point. Well, I was thinking takes, takes, mm -hmm. and I thought first rook c8 could be incredibly strong because, well, you will break through on the 8, but it seems to can me you that... just take... I thought you could go back. You think you can take, but I thought takes... Ah, bishop e6 is hanging yeah, and exactly. f8 is hanging. Exactly. I thought this That's would be, right. a, be a mm -hmm. disaster. Yeah, that's but a disaster. But in, in this position... Mm -hmm. Rook a8. Rook a8, as far as I could see, yeah. works. Unless right. there is some good move, but I, I I don't see it. So no, I think. But also a four. You're saying that it's the threat of a b a b rook a two maybe. No, I th well I think uh, I don't think black has any very scary threats here, but no. I think uh, well simply white has just enough counterplay to get the pawns back. But even when you take on f eight, I take back with the rook bishop mm -hmm. e six check king h eight. Isn't it black who has more threats in the position because f2 is weak? But I can also play f3 before taking on f8. But then a b a b rook a2 will will happen, especially if I've played the move a4. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But uh, I think actually it's it's a very complicated position here. It could be very balanced. It really looks like this to me. As mm -hmm. as oh, I think a4 uh, makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, there is no doubt about that. But. Well, just a four is a very l human yeah, move. I, I I would even say that after, well, you s you are saying that f two will be hanging, but let's say I take on a four, okay, and takes take on f eight, and okay. after rook f eight, yeah, of course I'll take bishop takes e six, and after your king moves, just play rook c two. Ah, oh, I was even thinking, what about rook c eight? That could also that I think could also, yeah. I think something but like this could be making a draw. Yeah, it's just uh, even. Let's say rook a8, we could swap rooks and uh, have rook an opposite... Rook c2, oppos d5 is hanging. Yeah, or I think opposite call of bishop endings. This looks very Actually, likely, I think. It could be that uh, a lot of stuff is coming off and uh, mm -hmm. we might just, just see a draw. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a bit early to say this game is completely finished. But uh, I think it's going to head towards a draw. You think Kramnik will be relieved or <laughs> upset? Well, well maybe he will just no take it as a fact. I have no ideas as well. Yeah. It is uh, well from here, from the commentator's room. It really looked like he had a promising position, even when he well um, sacrificed a pawn. Yeah. Uh, after he sacrificed a pawn, that this uh, well, this uh, huge control of the sea line that it was mm. giving him more than enough compensation. But uh, the g5 move, I can only interpret as trying to make a draw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Simply, I there is no other explanation. The g5 really surprises me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, S Anis Giri mentioned that, well, queen f6 was a sort of blundering a pawn, but I think he, he, no, di he didn't well, really mean that. No, one. I don't think but, he meant it. But what happened later with 
queen d3 and d5 it yeah. is it is hard to explain no it it, it really is also. well kremlin has been involved in some very tough games yeah um, both long games and also emotional well, games and such it could also see well of course uh, looking at the at today's results we can say that the players are slowing down but well <sighs> you can also so. say that simply they are getting uh, tired it's it's the eighth uh, round and uh, it's not been slow games today. I no, would no, say no, no. But so uh, well, the results. Uh, yeah, look yeah. At y If you just look at the results. Sure, sure. But I think that uh, simply, yeah. uh, it's uh, it's uh, well, the the tiredness is also becoming mm -hmm. a factor in the second well, half of the it tournament. It could be. And uh, well, generally, younger players should have an advantage yeah. in this situation. Well, we can also see that Andrakin is doing quite okay in today's game, and Kayakin. Well, it seems like the, the best position he had, mm -hmm. had had uh, for a while. Yep. And well, Swidler has just played a move rook g3 there. Should we actually go back to that and have yeah, a, keep an eye on, let's on the Kramnik as, uh, as, and as Reichen Well, game. Kramnik's game, it could be finished quite soon. It could be just a draw as far yeah. as we can see. There we mm -hmm. have Swidler walking around. He's mm -hmm. I don't think he looks happy to no, be not, I think not he looks all. like he's, yeah, he can't believe we what saw he here did or something. Bishop d2, Bishop g4. And Swidler did not go for exchanging off uh, the knight. Mm -hmm. He has played the move rook to g3. Well, and I almost have the feeling that he's uh, sort of, well, he's playing it too ambitiously. Yeah, his concept, I think strategically speaking, black would really like to take this knight. But of course the question is after rook h3, well, the obvious threat is made on h8. No, but why would you take the knight? Uh, this bishop on g4, I think, just completely kills off everything. Now you have your okay. hands, t uh, sort of, your hands are untied on the queen's uh, flank, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we see the computer I evaluation. was sort of hoping that the king could go to somewhere around a8, but it's a bit far, maybe. <gasps> well, yeah. maybe so it's just unnecessary. But I think that Spitto's plan is to, to bring up uh, uh, sort of more pieces like this and then probably play f3 could even be sacrificing, but I think with the knight on e6. No, but you're just mm -hmm. saying keep the knight bishop on g4, basically at all cost, and that's. Well, uh, I'm worried about that. Well, the the on the qu queen side, there's nothing left anymore, and no. uh, if you don't have any realistic um, mm -hmm. uh, threats. Okay, we see an engine evaluation there that says zero plus yes, this is seventy-eight. This is which very is serious. It is, is quite quite some ad advantage, one one mm -hmm. would say. It is. Uh, yeah, big advantage for black in this position, and no, things haven't gone well for Svidler no, in this game. He played very ambitiously yet again, uh, like yeah. he does but generally in this tournament. And uh, up to a certain point it looked like uh, he was doing very well. But one has to say Kayakin has played very sound positional chess and also mm -hmm. with quite some ambition. I mean, he did allow Swidler quite an attack and uh, he simply thought that he's had the resources to defend against it and it seems like he's been completely well, right but today he's well he plays well yeah. for sure yeah i thought he did put himself in a rather difficult situation but today he's actually handled it uh, very well very well yeah it's still way too early to start celebrating i think in the uh, kayak and camp but uh, he's done very well today and I think today we have seen that he can play ambitious and very strong chess as we have seen many times before but yeah. not so much in this tournament. No, but I think uh, also he's in some way forced to do that. Yeah. Svidla really wanted to win this game. Sure. That's very clear. Maybe he you're saying that it was not like Kayakin had any option of just playing uh, solidly for a draw. No, Svidla actually well came with, he played knight f3, g3, put pressure yeah, he and played, took risk. Well, I'm sure that Kariakin mm -hmm. plays what he thinks are the best moves. Yeah. But uh, right now, well, no, it's interesting. We're also getting in the area of, of uh, well, quite a serious time trouble, I would say. Uh, both players are down to seven minutes for, for and some seconds. Moves, right? Yeah, in hmm. the other game, well, they have taken on A4 and Kramnik, sorry, and Draken has taken back. And it looks to us really like that game despite also having interesting time pressure, mm -hmm. it's just heading towards a draw. That's so very nice, we have it ah, on now the screen, we can, we as, have both. as we can, <laughs> we can at least keep it on, uh, yeah. under control. But Swidler is 
Well, Swidler actually has less than a minute per move, but still he's walking around. I think he's simply nervously walking yeah, around. Yeah, I, I think, think somehow, and sitting at the board waiting is actually at times quite tougher than, than walking around. Yeah, and I think so. I, I think I, I, yeah, I can't imagine he's happy about I think this actually, position. I think, uh, well, the enterprising Swedish uh, chess player Tiger Hiller Persson wrote about somehow that he took a, a small sprint before the time pressure, simply to get his body ready for this, and I think yeah. just sitting and waiting. Aha, uh -huh, Queen E7 happened. Queen E7. It's a very logical move. But isn't it playing it... <laughs> too, too solid. Mm, too solid, that's what I'm thinking, yes. But you think that Switler will consider taking off the queens? Well, I, d I, I don't know. Maybe he will just play bishop g5 and try to mate him. <laughs> He's not going to take that one. <laughs> queen e7, really? Mm -hmm. oh, but what I'm thinking is, let's take off the queens. Yeah. And play knight g5. Mm -hmm. And, well... Maybe I'm a bit too dreamy, and but something like this, f3, bishop h5. You're saying that the bishop <laughs> is completely out of Couldn't play. Couldn't you start... <laughs> well, the problem is that black will Almost just play... Almost be optimistic. No, yeah. I don't think so. Maybe not, but it's a draw. I think, it's I think just a you're draw. not better with black, because this bishop is kind of imprisoned there. Yeah, well, we were just uh, praising Kariakin, but here he yeah. tries to... Well, well, maybe he evaluated the position better than us. Uh, that, that's well, not impossible. Well, better than a computer is also... <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, that maybe it's tougher. But let's say, well, instead of queen e7, something like rook c6 was uh, promising, mm -hmm. just trying yeah. to hit those pawns. And uh, I think this reminds me, I had a game in my youth where I played the king's <coughs> Indian with black. Uh, and, well, this is what would be with colors reversed, but I think Zvitan put a rook on sort of c3 and suddenly... It came to, to this side and actually decided the game in attack. And there mm -hmm. is some similarities here where, well, it should actually be the king's Indian players giving mate on the king's side. But sometimes but it's reversed. sometimes it's reversed, And rook yes. c6 could be a, a very nice move. Well, Just rook c6 is a good move as it uh, will. Even, yeah. even it seems that it keeps g6 a little bit mm -hmm. under control. Yeah, no, although it's not necessary. I like it uh, as well. But, but let's say queen e7. Yeah, the other you think Swidler is going to mm -hmm. take... On, uh, well, I think he should. Yeah. Uh, unless he, yeah, unless he's gonna take on g4. I don't know. <laughs> no, but that's it's not a great. It's I think it's not. I I no, thought about I it as well, but it's too little, right? I mean, what are you even hoping for there, right? It it seems. It's uh, not clear to me yeah. at all. No, no, I don't think that he should at all. I think he should take on e7, and uh, he he should be happy that uh, you he manages to. Does to he think? Does he it. think? something like this mm. let's say takes takes similar positions again with sort of imprisonment of the bishop on on h5 well let's say queen d7 f3 bishop h5 you think it's possible no, to be a bishop he took on e7 okay. yeah i think that's the way to do and this. takes back and, and now we really think he should take off knives right because now bishop h3 i think must start being a threat. Yeah, you, you still yeah. think so? I, I think so. I think he should yeah. play, well, knight g5 is probably the most mm -hmm. uh, natural move. Yeah, let's get position. a tempo hitting the rogue exactly. afterwards, right? And, uh, well, and then, thanks to this move f3, well, what, what he achieved is that mm -hmm. the bishop will be completely locked on h5. So, let's say knight g5. Okay, it's actually not clear does he, that he has to take this uh, knight at all. But let's just take it, takes, takes. Here, f3, bishop h5. And you think, yeah, knight g5 played. Mm -hmm. I think you say there's no way. Yeah, anyone is better here. <laughs> no, I don't no. think so. I think, uh, okay. well, if anyone, w black is better here. Really? And uh, okay. you have to make sure that, well, he doesn't... Rook yeah, rook e6. And, well, the same idea, rook b6, rook a6. It's not like f3 has to be played, actually. It's only... Bishop f3 would be a threat, I think. Mm -hmm. I think he's yeah he yeah. did it he's f3 and bishop h5 mm -hmm. hmm. no i think it's well it gives you a certain um, aesthetic pleasure to see <laughs> the bishop on h5 okay, okay we something just has happened yeah, we on have the other a, we game. have a draw in Let's in, in Kramnik and Draken. quickly at least go to the board there but they actually yeah they they I didn't even play out the moves no i think after a4 Kramnik took it, and then he took on f8, and after rook f8, it seemed like a draw was agreed, yeah. because it's basically going to be down to an opposite uh, colored bishop position that is just uh, a dead draw. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, yeah. 
I would guess Kramnik maybe is a bit disappointed because it looked pr promising for him. On the other hand, it also got out of control. And uh, well, I think he's very happy that yesterday turned out so well for him in the yeah. end. So, and none of the leaders won today, so he's very much in striking distance. He has yeah. to play them both. And also, Kramnik had some tough games. Maybe he needs to recover a bit of energy. Well, in it's some basically sense. status quo, just like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Svidla? Well, uh, we will uh, finish uh, following the time trouble in the other, in the last remaining game, and then uh, mm -hmm. switch to the press conference. Yeah. With some luck, maybe the players will stick around here <laughs> discussing <laughs> the games. Yeah. Um, somebody can keep them there, but it will <laughs> be even more helpful. Well, be free just played by by Svidla, which is. Well, I think that he will just uh, try to be very, very uh, solid there. Okay. You've, you're completely sure that... No, I really don't think White can try to win this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, fascinated with having shut out this bishop on h5. I, I but understand uh, that. It looks nice. It's still there, though. So maybe you're right. I don't know. Well, a6 could be. a6 followed by b5 uh, yeah. could be an option. And you have to make sure that you have a good answer to that. But I think it's close to... I think you will start putting the king on, I would think, f2. And then, oh well, putting the rooks back, and you will also be ready in the b line. Mm -hmm. Well, I probably I even something like rook h3 followed by king g3 is just faster. And then mm -hmm. you put your rook to h2. Sure. And like this, you just have uh, things under control. Um, Mm -hmm. The rooks just come back, and this is very mm. important. No, okay, this is but just going to. But be you a think you thing. think Kayakni is gonna try? No, well, he, if he wanted to try, he wouldn't have played queen no. e seven. But maybe Kayakin will actually be a bit disappointed on himself, or maybe he simply th always thought that there was enough. Yeah, to he, play, he but could but have. But, but today but it looked like he actually got a, a, a very nice position and was better on time. I agree and, uh, with you. And this this could be his chance. I agree with but you. But of yes. course. Yeah. Well, well, for Switler, <laughs> yeah, it is clear that with Switler's opening choice, he was tr very much trying to be aggressive. But it he makes a huge difference saving this game than for not saving yeah. it. That if, is, that if is he lost this well, game with White, yeah, this, this it would have been bad. Mm -hmm. sure. So this is, this but is quite uh, interesting. Well, it does seem that the players are getting a bit tired. I really think so. And Somehow for, for Switler, should he catch up with the leaders? Actually, ah, Aronian, he has lost two individually. Yeah. Else, but because else I was about to say that he has actually had uh, a lot of decisive game which make his tie break very good. But uh, well, uh, it's true it that might it might not get to that No, stage. maybe he, he actually could have a very key game with uh, Aronian when he's white there. Yeah, and, uh, that's right. And he has Anand in the last round, which could turn out to be a, a, a very important game for the final standings mm -hmm. as well. Well, King F7 played, and yeah. uh, let's say but Rook H3 could be... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rook H3 is oh, yeah. a very nice and a very... Uh, I would say yeah. it's a pleasant move to make. With the idea of King G3 and Rook H2, just making sure mm -hmm. that the Rooks are just on time to come back to protect all the pawns on the queen's uh, side. You think Kayakin would play rook a6 now in order to create something there? But he could, but for yeah. instance rook e2 is a fine uh, reaction. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could very no, well be that it, it's uh, probably this is very difficult to, to break uh, uh, through mm -hmm. for, for either player. It looks... I think it looks like just a positional draw, basically, and of course it's an extra pawn for for Switler, but it doesn't for really matter. For Kayakin. Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh. he's actually created some kind of threat. Aha, uh -huh. the idea is, of course, Rook E8. Yes, yeah, this, this, this pawn on, on E5 was hanging, he's just defended it. But now the point it is opens that up options like G5. Yeah, but the bishop on H5 is always exactly. hanging. So, that so it doesn't really... No, matter. but at least it creates some kind of uh, uncertainty in the in the white position, I think. Or you think simply because the bishop on h5 will always be hanging, there is nothing to be done. I think that, uh, yeah, white has just enough, uh, mm -hmm. has yeah. just enough resources in this position. <laughs> you're, you're probably right, that there's just nothing to do uh, because... It's a classical, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a classical example of the... <laughs> Shut out piece, which uh, <laughs> w 
ruins your chances of yeah, uh, but of it's playing it's for still a there winner. though. And well, often I get okay. He's he's actually doing it quite aggressively. I think rook a six. Now, I think rook e two is it's a very obvious response, right? What else? Yeah, rook e two. I mean, there is a threat on the pawn on on a two. You have to do something about but that. I think it has a funny threat. Let's say if you play rook e two now. And rook h8, right? Uh, now, the obvious king g3, if I'm not mistaken. Would lose to bishop takes Well, I don't know if it, it, if it will lose, but it okay. could lose as... as, as um, mm -hmm. It would lose another pawn, yes, yeah. and it would probably lose so the game. Maybe he's going to go for that, actually. Rook but king g2 exists. Uh -huh. So king g3 is just a small trick. Yeah, and you could even... I guess you could also move away the, the rook yeah, from yeah, e2. Yeah, it's not, not a must to play like no, this. Uh, no. He doesn't have to fall into this. Just no, play rook e2, king, king to e6. e6. And uh, there are two more moves left. Siddler is going to go king g3, I think. Yeah, it still seems to me that the position has improved a bit for, for Kayakin here. King g3 played. Now he does have some kind of free hand to play like uh, like this, I would say, rook b8 and b5. That's yeah, exactly what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. You still think this is a trivial draw for Switlam? Should he... Maybe rook h1 to c1 is the right way to go here. And mm -hmm. try to, when b5 happens, you at to least sort of... To be able to take on c4 with yeah, the Yeah, and Kayakin will seriously have to consider, mm -hmm. who am I helping with this pawn break? But Kayakin is actually, well, he's put his position on the king side. He's a sort of a very safe fortress, and he's, uh, you know, getting ready to play on the queen side. But maybe well, it's, it's like just too little. I like your idea of rook h1 as after yeah. b5. You can just take on b5 and play rook uh, even c1. Even I <laughs> thought first idea. rook c1, yeah. but maybe you are saying b5. Let's not give him a chance to, to regret with b4 yeah. and play like this and... Um, this yeah. is very, <laughs> very, very solid. Yeah, I would still think king d5, let's say rook to e6 and a5, but maybe a rook on c4. No, it's it's probably mm -hmm. not realistic. Well, there is one more move for Svidler to make. Mm -hmm. Or not. And yes, there is I one think more move. Yes. Let's let them, let's they, are, they are so low on time, but after this move, I think we will switch to the press conference. Immediately, but, Well, yes. this, uh, if I got it right... But in two minutes, we're going to have uh, this one yeah, managed, finished. right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, okay. so I know they're low on time, but the probability of any of them losing on time is basically non-existing, I would think. Um, yeah, I really think he will play. Yeah. But he is actually... Uh, why is he running his clock <laughs> <laughs> like this? Yeah, 30 seconds. No, the bishop g5. Okay, bishop g5 played. Mm -hmm. Is there any... Does he want to put the king on f4, maybe? I think that maybe he's a bit. Uh, he was a bit worried that g5 could be uh, yeah. a resource at some point. That's, but that's why That's what I mean. This. He wants to have the king on f4, and then his rook, then his king side is sort of taken care of. Well, it's completely sealed. Yeah. You could say. You think? Well, just have a guessing competition. Well, Kayakin dare to play b5? No, he's played f4 check. Wow. wow. F4. We really? did have action. <laughs> F4. That was worth <laughs> waiting for. Okay. okay. Well, that is a. I, I like it. I mean, it's probably still a draw, but it's a. It's a very clever way of doing it. I think Bishop F4. He's gonna go Rook F8, and suddenly the Bishop on H5 is doing something mm -hmm. very useful. That's right. We promised you a press conference, so, <laughs> so now we are switching <laughs> to that. See you soon. Position looks very perspective. It's logical to double the rooks. I thought that it was perspective. 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 I thought that it was
Black has a beautiful move. Knight B8. Я, честно говоря, не был уверен, что здесь у меня много, потому что ладья C8, линия. Ну да, может быть, на ладье я покажу да, себе конь b8, и на ладья d6 я делаю опять под конь d7. Рук d6. И белых нет защиты от слона f8. Knight d7. And... Ну, то есть включение возвращения. No, no defense. Да, ну а после возвращения на c2 ладья у черных находится ход ферзь b6. Да, да, да. И перестройка коня на c6. Да, конь переходит, конь, конечно, не надо Рук c2, queen b6, and now knight is moving to c6. Ну, в общем, да, мне казалось, что, конечно, жертва пешки очень принципиально, потому From что теперь пешка в 6. Я думал, тут в разных редакциях просто ее спокойно отдать на, на d4, тоже одна из возможностей. Скажем, пойти там f4, ну, мне кажется, коня на f8, наверное, полезно все-таки поставить, хотя можно It's даже и без этого. The, the вот я не знаю, какую, тут думал, какую из пешек отдать. Такой был странный выбор. Ну, скажем, вот f4 просто я подумал, например, сыграть на ферби d4, скажем, разменяться и просто тут продолжать так в позиционной манере. Может быть, слон d6. Ну, правда, мне надо отъебить, но e5, ладья d1, мушки. То есть, мне кажется, что белые здесь не рискуют в этом эншпиле, но с другой стороны... С другой стороны, выиграть тоже будет очень сложно. Наверное, не, знаю, risking, не уверен, что что-то особенно убьет. Ну или так. Ну у меня как-то план А4 успеть пойти. Мой план был играть Ну как-то слон Е7. Рук И Д8. Ладья Д7, ну и скажем А4. Рук Д7, А4. Может быть, к эту пешку приставать к ней. White starts disturbing the pawns. Рук a7. Так, ну скажем, взял. Рук d7. Найт d7. Не, мне кажется, получше черный. I think black black structure is better. Не, ну мне казалось, да, что это как-то мало. Я могу это как-то очень тонко играть опять. Ну что-то это как-то, да, я я не верил в то, что. Поэтому слон цепь, конечно, очень очень интересно. Все-таки эту пешку держать и на ферзь f3. Не знаю насчет хода ладья c3. Может быть, кстати, со слона c3 надо было начать. Да, ферзь f5. Да, ферзь f5. Мне это не нужно. Ладья c3 теперь шаг появляется на b1. Да, мне это не нужно. С другой стороны, просто может не надо вот играть на компенсат просто ланды шесть пойти. Maybe I should have played for compensation. Ладец шесть. Ну все-таки мне кажется где-то же пять конь же шесть есть план. Maybe g five. Не так просто. Knight g six is a plan for black. Сложно. Но мне как-то ладец три казалось очень принципиально, потому что ферзь шесть выглядит опасно. Мне кажется, ферзь шесть очень опасно, потому что, скажем, ланды два. И ужасно опасно. Ферзь шесть восемь. 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 Да, наверное. Но правда, я не знаю. Мне кажется, даже здесь просто, просто очень длительная компенсация, даже если я возьму. Мне кажется, взял и просто захожу там ладец c6, h4, просто делаю ходы. Ну или там слон h4. Не знаю. Как бы на коне f6, ферзь e5. То есть мне кажется, белые в общем-то так. Ну там h4 начал просто. Ну белых компенсаций, но все-таки черные, конечно, так крепко, то есть этот коне f6, коне e4 как начнется. Может не так просто. Может надо было пытаться сдвоить. Но в целом, не, не, ну ферзь f5 мне понравился ход. Ну в смысле мне кажется правильно, потому что. I did like queen h5 move. Не знаю, что может быть надо было просто король же два, то есть ходить, да? Maybe king two here. А же пять, а же пять, ну и ладец восемь тоже, да, да. Не, же четыре. Я честно говоря здесь как-то считал, что такой ход дурацкий какой-то не мог опровергнуть. I was thinking about bishop h six. Выглядит очень странно. It looks very strange. Да, там f пять как-то. Я думал, не, ну я могу так пойти, а что-то высчитал какие-то. I could play a four. Так, я тебе просто хочу слон Е5, и мне кажется, выиграть слон Е5. Поэтому там конь на Ф8 вырезаны. Но, к сожалению, h 6 я не нашел слон Е5. 
И я же чуть-чуть не успеваю на один темп, потому что у меня же всем кроме BG5. Потому что я просто хотел, ну, как-то элементарно, потом по DNF просто зайти, но он не успел Поменялся и конечно всем. На G7. Ну, правда, не знаю, вот это G3, но это там... Ну, да, 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 но как бы вопрос темпов. Ну, как условно, я не знаю, через E2 был ход еще тоже тут как-то... There was a move also Queen E2. Да, как-то так, что ли. Maybe something like this. И ладей в 3, в 5, как-то что-то не мог досчитать тут тоже. Ну так, конечно, очень опасно у черных, но... It's very dangerous for black here. Раз 4, ладей в 3 мог пойти, да, здесь они... I also could play maybe rook f3 here. Хотя сейчас, я думаю, может, вообще g5 надо было пойти. Maybe just g5. But the threat is rook c8. Не, ну мне кажется, так перспективно. Ну, во-первых, я, правда, и после f5 так сразу не видел. After f5, I did not see how to play. I wanted to win here beautifully. The only move is rook d8. Bishop e5. Рук d7. Да, если я d7, наверное, побили, побили там. Правда, можно даже, наверное, взять, я боюсь, да? Нет, а вот здесь я d7, когда же f выйду. В смысле, так как? А так, я думаю, надо побить два раза. В смысле, там, да, да, там, там, и потом все семь зайти. Exchange, exchange, and then. Да, может быть, да, так, как-то что-то. Рук си севен. Не, это все уже, да. Почему? Я семь, сейчас я шесть. And that's all. Пока этот же товарищ висит. Он же два сидит. Молодец, все хорошо. Так что как-то нахуй. Maybe rook seven here. Правда, взял шаг на е пять. Takes takes check e five. Про, а, ну да. Ну, в общем, надо считать, да. Это, в общем, не знаю. F5, вроде вот говорят, что компьютер рекомендует F5, не знаю, да. Компьютер рекомендует F5 здесь, here, может быть, здесь мне так понравился ход слон E7, но может быть он неудачный, я не знаю, может, потому что я не знаю, like какой следующий ход у черных. Bishop E7, but maybe it's not very successful. Uh -huh. Может, E5, E5 типа E5 грозишь, а я, я не был уверен, что грозишь. В смысле, я же просто... Black threat is E5. Ну, там я как-то, я не был до конца, потому что я, может, просто уйду на E5 ферзем, типа ферзы F5. Там еще какой-то слон. И5, квин Ф3. Не, ну я думал, типа слон Ж2 сделать ход какой-то. I thought about the move бишоп Ж2. Ну он какой-то такой вялый. Ну опять же ферзь Ф5. But it's not very active. Ну да, ферзь Ф5 может быть, да. Опять может быть, да. А если, может быть, так тогда надо было, да, пойти? Maybe бишоп Ж6. На Е7 он так, ну правда, да, тоже ладит. То есть на Е7 он так очень красиво стоит, мне кажется, там все... Блокирует, но... It stands very nice on E7, blocks everything. Ну да, я даю... Я даю... Просто ходит мне... Слон H6 грозит. В смысле, почему грозит? Надо 6 слон подвести. Ну, в конце концов... Рук D8. Ну да. Не, ну, в смысле, я, может быть, ладец 6 как-то... На H3 висит. Maybe рук C6. Так, а если здесь слон E7 пойду, это не... What if I play bishop E7 here? Нет. Сейчас подойдет, начну подходить. There are no moves. Не, ну как-то с виду не опасно. Ну не, но главное, что белые всегда внимательно смотрят, когда хотят, то есть. Dangerous for black. Ну я не к тому, что белых сильно пьет, но, конечно, так и обязан был играть. Я не знаю, зачем я то же самое. Of course, I had to play like this. Сделал. I don't know why I did this without a pawn. Не, ну просто на самом деле, потому что здесь у меня что-то какие-то были галлюцинации, я хотел какие-то маты. Had some hallucinations to made here somehow. Что-то были какие-то безумные идеи. I had some crazy ideas to play like this. Короче, же восемь солнце три. Что-то вот такое любопытное. To play something like this line. Ну потом что-то решил. Вместо солнце три ферзь аж четыре не было тут. Ферзь аж четыре здесь. Ну как бы угроза. Queen H4. The threat is bishop F8. Ну можно же даже аж пять как-то. Аж пять солнце три уже. Не знаю, но еще какая-то, но это правда тут тут тут, ну там все решили, да, то есть тут можно проиграть точно совсем быстро. То есть я не знаю, но какая-то я думал, может какие-то маты, но не нашел время, начал поджимать и решил пойти же пять, мне казалось, что более-менее это так. И я решил пойти же пять, мне казалось, что более-менее это так. Ну смысле здесь у меня уже не лучше, но правда как ни странно, мне кажется, и не хуже, то есть настолько мощный белый поэт, что несмотря на две пешки. Maybe my position is not worse. 
что-то серьезное придумать, потому что ну, да, наверное, I didn't see any serious ways for black. Пешкой, но да, но даже это, не так, даже это не так просто придумать. Maybe it's not so easy to invent something here for black. Я не знаю насчет слона шесть хода. Ну какая-то да. I'm not sure about bishop h6. Может просто слон g4, может быть, да, имел. Maybe just bishop g4. Ну вот, может быть, я как-то h4, h5 какие-то угрозы буду что-то Bishop g4 with the threat of h4, h5. Да, h5 тоже непонятно куда дальше, да. But what's further, I don't know. Да, ну, не, ну, может, слон e7, да, поставить как-то. Maybe bishop e7. Ну, правда, всегда ладья 7. But there is always rook a7. Не, ну, наверное, она ничейная, поэтому, что у меня все-таки активность какая-то. I think it's a drovish position. Ну, а здесь, да, король g2, не знаю, ну, ход как ход. King G2 is a normal move. Ну я не знаю, тут как-то думал на выигрыше может попробовать поиграть. I was thinking about playing to win. Что-то это уже очень, наверное, by Rook C2. Серьезно так. But it's too serious. Не, ну с этим настолько у меня как бы доминантная позиция, что мне кажется, равно я не рискую особо. Но выиграть я не вижу как. My position so dominating that I don't risk. То есть только если черные начнут играть на выигрыш, вот тогда какие-то у меня могут на появиться шансы. Там слон за четыре. Я пока хочу слон за четыре, аж три, аж четыре. Ну просто ходы делаю. I just want to play here, Bishop. I think it's draw. No, I decided to force it. Here. 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 Ну, в общем, да. Вот, видимо, если какой-то у меня, по крайней мере, конечно, вот надо было здесь пытаться играть эту позицию. Maybe I should have tried to play differently here, to play this position. Наверное, я думаю, что она все равно в пределах ничьи, но все-таки здесь, скажем так, мне кажется, все-таки белые играют на выигрыш, а там черные. Вот разница. Probably it's just in the limits of draw, but here white is playing for a win, and in the game black was playing. Дмитрий, как ты оценивал эту? Как бы позицию в некоторые моменты этой партии чувствовал ли где-то опасность? Дмитрий, как how did you estimate this position during the game and did you see some dangerous points in the game? Ну эту позицию, как я сказал, я уже оценил лучше у черных, а опасности я чувствовал вот после дебюта где-то здесь, да. Но как я уже объяснил. Находится такая форсированная линия с конь b8, где черные защищаются. А так, если бы белым еще добавить один темп, то, конечно, их позиция могла бы быть выиграна. In the previous position I felt quite safe. I thought that black's position is better, but after the opening I saw some danger. But as I said, there is this safety line here. But if White had had an extra tempo, so it would be dangerous for black. Is there a question? Vladimir, today morning, on our website, Chess News, Murtaz Kashgalev made an analysis of the first round of the tournament. He talks about each of the participants, and in particular about you, he noticed such a thing. He called it a serious moment that you нежелание у вас играть спокойно и определенные проблемы черным цветом. Ну, чер... к черному цвету мы вернемся завтра, а вот сегодня, по-моему, партия просто наглядно продемонстрировала, может быть, правоту Мортаса, потому что и G4 был, не обязательно ход и G5, не обязательно. Вот вы что думаете? Действительно нежелание играть спокойно? У вас были возможности более спокойной игры сегодня? Грандмастер Муртас Кашгалеев в веб-сайте Chess News made his analysis and he was while speaking about Vladimir Kramnik's uh, games he said that uh, there are some dangerous points that Vladimir plays is pushing too hard he doesn't want to play quietly and he also mentioned the prob uh, problem of black but uh, after this game we want to speak about your playing too aggressively maybe нет, ну, во-первых, все-таки здесь турнир, где только первое место, в общем-то, имеет значение, по крайней мере, для меня. Поэтому надо выигрывать все-таки немало партий для этого. 
Это первое. А второе, ну, уровень сопротивления, уровень соперников очень высокий. И чаще всего просто вот так вот, разыграв спокойненько и так, в такой очень классической позиционной манере, выиграть партию очень сложно. Поэтому, ну, хорошо все играют, сопротивляются. Чаще всего в какой-то момент надо... Надо, в общем-то, как-то идти вперед и пытаться как-то прорвать оборону, как и сегодня тоже. Ну, я мог не жертвовать пешку, но тогда, наверное, какая-нибудь туповатая ничья получилась бы. То есть, поэтому, в общем, ну, не знаю, мне кажется, что это естественно. Да и вообще, по-моему, все довольно играют, все, кто там выигрывает, достаточно агрессивно играют. Мне кажется, так времена прошли, ну, только вот Карлсон единственный, кто может... Не ходить туда-сюда и ничейную позицию ему что-нибудь зевнут, и, и он возьмет очко. Мне как-то в ничейной не зевают, поэтому я предпочитаю пытаться как-то все-таки... Не, ну я утрирую, конечно, но как-то пытаться и, и играть довольно остро и амбициозно. Вот такой мой ответ. Mm -hmm. two points. In this event everybody is playing for a win, because only the first place matters. And the secondly, um, the level of opponents is quite, uh, is quite high and you cannot play just for a draw to play positionally and uh, to get points. Not quite high, very high. Very, very high, yes. <laughs> the highest possible. Yeah. Yes, and you, always you need to be aggressive, you need to go further. Maybe uh, to, just to break opponent's defense. Maybe only Magnus Carlsen can play uh, to and fro, you know, and uh, win the games when somebody blunders him. Of course, I'm joking, but uh, nobody blunders me. That's why I need to push, uh, uh, to push hard. And uh, I also can say that everyone here is playing too aggressively. Владимир, вы обычно как бы очень внимательно смотрите, как играют ваши соперники. Есть у вас какое-то ощущение, ну, я не знаю, насколько неожиданно стала довольно быстрая ничья Раняна с Анандом? И, ну, опять-таки, может быть, не совсем по адресу вопрос, но как бы вы оценили вот позицию, в которой они согласились на ничью? Mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir, it's well known that you are watching closely uh, other players' games, so how can you estimate the quick draw of uh, um, Levon Aranyan and um, Mishwantan Anand, and what can you say about the position where they agreed to a draw? Ну, мне, у меня лично, кажется, финальная позиция в пользу черных немножко. То есть, но ну, если у кого-то лучше, только у черных может быть, мне кажется. Но с другой стороны, я бы сам белыми был бы был очень доволен сделать ничью. В такой позиции фигуры не ходят. Это какая-то жалкая пешка, никому не нужная, зато полный пад. Но с другой стороны, во-первых, выиграть ее крайне тяжело черными, а во-вторых, с турнирной точки зрения, все-таки Ананду ничья очень выгодно, потому что он фиксирует в случае дележа выигрыш турнира. Да? Поэтому плюс черный цвет, поэтому, в общем-то, довольно логично. В общем -то. Я могу понять обоих соперников. I can understand both the players because uh, the black's position is better there. It's in favor of black. Yeah, I would play it slightly better. Slightly better. I, would play it, I wouldn't play it uh, and And why I wouldn't play it with white pieces because uh, their position is passive and this extra pawn is not very <coughs> is not very strong and very necessary. So of course we should also think about the tournament's position of the players because uh, Anand is leading and uh, to make a draw with black pieces is quite good for his standing. So he, he's just his. Oh, because because, because in, in, the, in the case of tie with Aranyan, he is winning the tournament winning, because yes. he won the match. So yes. I can fully understand that he is, uh, he agreed. He is happy with the draw. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. И сегодня, кстати, Левон сказал, что вот эта идея ферзь 3 пришла к нему во сне, когда он дремал. Uh, такой вопрос к обоим участникам uh, нашей пресс-конференции. Как им приходят новые такие идеи дебютные? Левон Аронин said that uh, the idea of uh, Queen B3 came to him when he was napping. So uh, how often or if these ideas came to you while sleeping? In which moments? Ну, я, which я могу лишь сказать, что Фер Б3, я тоже, мне пришла в голову идея. Но у нас такая ересь, что я да, даже в ней не было, я даже в рапид бы ее не сыграл. Бы. Извиняюсь, this... конечно. Uh, sorry, but also I had this idea of a queen b3, but it's such a nonsense that I wouldn't even play it in rapid. Ну да, first b3 — это идея стандартная. Я скорее восхищен ходом d4, а надо. Видимо, он был готов к этой идее, как ни странно. 
queen b3 is a standard idea. I'm uh, more likely, I'm excited with Anand's move d4. What? Uh... I have different dreams, but it's not about ideas. Не, ну мне на самом деле идеи приходят, но тоже не во сне, во сне никогда нет. Просто бывает, думаешь там что-то прикидываешь там. Обычно часто, кстати, на на велотренажере, например, потому что скучно и надо о чем-то думать, думаешь о какой-то позиции. Так, но но потом почти практически всегда получается с временем шансом, что потом ты пришел. Поанализировал, говорит, так интересно, все пришел, поставил на компьютер через минуту, <laughs> понял, что это полная чушь, в общем, обычно так у меня. Of course, ideas also come to my mind, but it's not in, uh, in dreams. Usually I have new ideas while cycling да. in the gym, um, but uh, it often happens that you invent an idea, then you came to, then, then you come to a computer and uh, quite quickly you close it because it's, it's not working, this да, idea. Да, но еще добавлю, что таких идей, как Fair B3, у меня просто россыпь, россыпь. могу, <laughs> могу до конца of, карьеры играть. I have plenty of such ideas like uh, Queen B3, I can use them till the end of my career. В любом случае есть хорошая причина, почему ходить в тренажерный зал. Anyway, we have a good reason to attend gym. To find new ideas, maybe. Yes, to find new ideas. Я хотел задать еще вопрос относительно, скажем так, общей турнирной борьбы. Когда играются турниры в два круга, насколько придаете значение, скажем так, первой партии с тем же соперником в первом круге и, и, и имеет ли она какое-то значение, как бы, ну? При уровне подготовки, я не знаю, может какой-нибудь внутренний злость. Uh, while playing two round robins, uh, how do you <coughs> estimate uh, the first uh, play against one and the same opponent? Does it matter much to you or not? And which role does it play during your preparation? Я то все время так отвечаю, может быть. Да, у меня как-то опыта особо нету двух круговых турниров. Ну вот э, два чемпионата России играли до 20, там были, например, партии с непомнящим довольно принципиальные. Я же в первом и во втором круге хотел выиграть, а так не могу ничего сказать. I cannot say I, I cannot say much because I not very experienced in playing two round robins. Uh, yes, I played it in Russian Championship under 20 and uh, two games against Jan Nepomnichi were very important and I wanted to win them both. Для меня не, но ну, я да, никакой разницы нет. Ну, просто обычно во втором круге уже ситуация более такая определившаяся, ну, более ясно, кто на что должен играть э, и так далее. То есть кто-то может быть более агрессивно, кто-то менее. Ну, в общем, короче говоря, вот только в этом разница. А так, э, не знаю, как-то вообще об этом даже не задумался. I don't think about this much because there is no difference for me. So maybe in the second round the situation is more clear. That's and many opponents play more aggressively, maybe many of them not, so it's only this. Most, most of opponents they start to play aggressive because most of them they are not leading because there is just one leader and, and then okay, they need to, to win, to catch up, especially in this tournament like London, actually I, I could feel that people started to play much more aggressively in the second round and uh, that is usually that is a difference, but otherwise yeah, I never thought about it really. Ну да, обычно в таком турнире, как здесь и как в Лондоне, люди, которые отстают от лидера, начинают играть более агрессивно, чтобы догнать его. Вот, кстати, когда проходят чемпионаты мира, например, по Блицу, там, мне кажется, имеет значение, ну, когда играются с двойные туры, там имеет значение первый цвет, первой партии, потому что, естественно, белый выиграть легче, а когда человек белый побеждает, то он в хорошем настроении играет вторую партию, а проигравший он, наоборот, унывает, ну, по крайней мере, я по себе сужу. It usually matters in the Blitz World Championships because if one wins the first game with white, so he is very happy about this, and if he loses, so he becomes sad. At least I'm speaking about myself. If he wins by black, he is also very happy. But uh, he doesn't have time here to come to terms with himself, so he is just shocked after lose. Any questions? No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
снова как бы не тайбрэк, а какой-то ряд показателей. Вроде в прошлый раз было достаточно критики того, что тайбрэка не было. Как на этот раз организаторам Экипы удалось снова провернуть это странное правило? So the question is about uh, the regulations. Uh, last year there was a question of uh, the necessity of playing a tie break game wh while tying. But uh, here there is also no tie break game. So how did the organizers manage to do without it again? Why don't the players do anything about this? Because this rule is not very Healthy. Нет, ну отвечая на первый вопрос, я думаю, что просто копировали, да и все. Я думаю, что копи-пейст был сделан с небольшими изменениями дат и так далее. So I think that the organizers just copied it, that made copy-paste. А, а скажу честно, по поводу второго вопроса, я, я в общем-то, могу только ответить этим же вопросом, да, потому что я не знаю, почему никто не... Мне просто стало интересно, потому что было много критики, было много шуму. И я для себя решил, что если хоть кто-то, хоть один участник скажет, давайте попробуем все-таки, я тут же его поддержу. Мне просто хоть один человек что-то скажет, не один, все промолчали. Ну, я решил, ох, мне никому это не нужно, почему это мне нужно. Мне просто это, ну, дело в том, что я вообще уже давно, так сказать, в шахматном мире, и э, скажу честно, пассивность, так сказать, игроков, она всегда меня немножко, так сказать, это смущала, то есть, скажем, потому что, ну... В конце концов, очень часто э, какие-то вещи, против которых я протестовал, в общем-то, я был один, это делал, тратил на это силы, нервы, там, не знаю, время и так далее. И здесь мне, я просто, честно, из любопытства, по большому счету, не имеет большого значения, в том плане, что, ну, ты вообще не понимаешь, будешь ли бороться за первую, потом, если поделишь первую, может, тебе повезет, может, сопернику. Поэтому, с точки зрения моих, так сказать, шансов, я считал, что это не имеет никакого значения. Но мне просто стало интересно, я так вот эксперимент провел, я решил, сначала я тут же хотел написать, когда получил контракт, я тут же хотел написать, что ну вообще-то ребята, вообще-то же э, вроде бы все обсуждали, а потом думаю, дай-ка я подожду, посмотрю, что то Подождал, посмотрел и решил, ну если никому не нужно, тогда и мне это не нужно. Yes, I don't know, because uh, when I saw these uh, regulations, my first idea was to write about this tiebreak, but uh, then I decided to wait and see what the other, what the other players, players will do. So, if uh, anyone would, tell, would uh, deny this rule, would be against this, I would uh, definitely support it, but no one did this, so I decided, okay, let's play like this. And, um, So just, I'm always uh, have been always confused about the passiveness of chess players because it happened quite often when I came up with ideas, when I protested against something and nobody had ever supported me. That's why I decided to... I wouldn't say ever, but uh, rarely, I would say. Rarely, rarely yes. And then, then, you know, just losing time, energy, and, uh, and finally nothing was happening. Ну, so, просто не хотелось терять время, энергию, когда ничего не происходит. So, for, for once I wanted someone else to, to take the initiative, but I couldn't find anyone. So. И вот однажды я решил дождаться инициативы от кого-то другого, но ее не последовало. Дмитрий, почему ты не протестовал? Дмитрий, yeah. why didn't you protest? Я не задумывался. I didn't think about this. Okay. Не, ну тут вопрос не протест. Я не считаю, что это надо протестовать, но... It's not a question да, of protesting. Э, но просто, в принципе, можно было бы так хотя бы вопрос задать. Поэтому... So just maybe someone could just ask a question. Any other question? Well, we're back after quite an interesting press conference by the, by the two Russian players. At least we now know uh, what is their attitude towards the, the tiebreak that we have been <laughs> discussing a couple of days ago. But on a more serious note, uh, well, uh, Svidler is in trouble in this game and Karyakin is really trying to, well, fighting for a win. Very much so. It really looked like uh, up to move 40. It was just going to be a draw, but... Just in the 40th move, something quite dramatic happened, and uh, 
Swidler allowed Kayakin a very, very good chance. And despite being below a minute, Kayakin took a big decision and changed the position. And now he's even played the move rook to e6. And I think Swidler is in big trouble here. Mm -hmm. It's close to a lost position or with some drawing chances. But Swidler is in huge trouble. And this is... Uh, well, we really thought the game would just be a draw. It seemed like this towards the end of the time trouble. Uh, but Karyakin found this uh, very, very nice uh, idea of uh, playing f4, giving... Maybe yeah, we should show let's this. Let's show it here, the mm -hmm. position. Well, this was the position in move <coughs> 39. And now Swidler played the move bishop to g5. Well, what he really wanted to was to get the king to f4. And maybe he thought that with less than a minute, there was no chance Kayakin would play f4 check. But Kayakin did it. And mm -hmm. the point is that when you take the pawn, then after rook f8, well, there's going to be pressure in the f line and the f3 pawn I is weak. And this bishop suddenly becomes, well, has quite some purpose. And it's been rather difficult for Switler to untangle here. He played rook f2, but there is very little he can do. And somehow, well, the king has to protect the bishop on, on f4, right? So he played the move rook f2, and now Kayakin played rook f5. And the problem is the bishop on f4 is protecting the e5 pawn, but there's also, at time, the threat of uh, g5. There is this funny line we could show, for yeah. instance, if he plays rook h1. Uh, let's say, one, let's uh, say rook h1. like that. You could even play g5 in this position. Mm -hmm. Well, now, okay, it's possible to put the bishop back on, uh, on c1. But the line we wanted to show was takes, takes, here, takes, takes, and then simply king f5. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's going to be mate next move. Well, maybe the way we, we showed the line was not the most relevant, but this tactical motive is there. So Switler had played the move bishop to c1, and Kayakin took the pawn, and now rook h1, king f7, bishop f4, rook f5. And simply, well, again, Kayakin is a pawn up, but the bishop on h5 is not, no longer as imprisoned as before. Actually, we thought here that maybe Swidler will just go back and forth with his bishops. Let's say something like putting the bishop on h1. And when Kayakin is going to threaten the f3 pawn, he would simply stand like this. But Switler chose a more aggressive approach. He played the bishop to, to b8. And something is wrong with the evaluation. Yeah, I, I, think, I, right? I should mention that uh, yeah. this 8.8 <laughs> <laughs> is really not what is, no, uh, no. What is happening right After now. After bishop b8, Switler wanted to somehow make the rook attack the a7 pawn. But Kayakin, after quite a thing, played the move rook e6, threatening to, to penetrate on, on e3 with the rook. And, uh, well, Switler did not want to take the a7 pawn, but played the move rook h4. The strongest move here. Seems like the strongest him. move, mm -hmm. but I think he is in serious trouble here. Mm -hmm. It's still, there could be some drawn opposite color bishop endings that might save him, but I think, well, rook e3 looks very logical, attacking That's these two he pawns. Mm -hmm. ah, he just played it. Mm -hmm. And then Swidler has played the, the move rook f4. And At least he's found all the moves, uh, all the best yeah. defending moves it is, so far. It is close. It's sort of a borderlining winning for black, Swidler drawing. So in that sense, despite, you can say, limited material and not a very tactical position, it's still quite a, a very intense and interesting struggle mm -hmm. because we are really close to Kayakin getting his first win or Swidler saving it and still remaining on 50% in the tournament. Mm -hmm. That's right. And now the concept is that uh, white is trying, well, of course, obviously, to, to take on a7, but this rook takes d3 is probably not enough for black. We can have a look at it You're saying briefly. something like rook yes, d3. Yes, and bishop takes a7. And now uh, there's the even the threat of, of yeah, this pawn. The problem here is, uh, like it often is, when you have, in, in the opposite colored uh, bishop endings, if you have your pawns on the color of the opponent's bishop, it's quite nice if you're attacking, but uh, once <laughs> once your pawns start to be attacked, you can lose them all very quickly. But is it actually a threat? Let's say I go king e6 in this position. Would you dare taking on f5? I and think then I take have here. to. But somehow g5 now... 
It I looks would, scary. Oh, I would even consider playing King F4 before that, before taking on C5, for instance. Oh, like this. Just Maybe I can just play King F6 and it, it would more or less transpose. You're right. That could be, yeah. yes. I, it's a even tough that is It's a tough decision easy. for, for mm -hmm. Switzerland to defend. How is it time-wise? 38 minutes against 42. Hardly any difference and they have to make 12 moves. Not, but not th too this difficult. This could that. take... Take quite a while, I, mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> you are very welcome to uh, tweet your comments or qu and questions, and please use hashtag candidates2014. We will be happy to answer your questions. Yeah. Uh, in this position, it is true that uh, it's not easy for Svidla, but he could be helped by the fact that he doesn't have uh, many alternatives here, like we've seen already more than once no. in this uh, tournament. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Switler probably was kicking himself just after move 40 because, well, he, he gambled, he played for the attack. Things did not work out well. And then he defended very well, and I think he thought he basically had the draw in his pocket, which I think he did actually have. And then on move 40, he made one irresponsible move, and suddenly it's back again. He has to make a very hard defense here to save yeah, the draw. Yeah, this bishop g5 that allowed a 4, it was not necessary. He had other moves there. Uh, he could have gotten I think gone so. back with the rook. Basically, rock. not making a move would be considerably better. <laughs> yeah, actually. but sometimes uh, you that's, have to, that's yeah. a big problem in yeah, chess. Yeah. No, he was short of time. Let's see. a6 has a six. been played. Well, it's a very natural mm -hmm. uh, way to play it. And uh, yeah. I think Svidler will play bishop a7. This must be his idea. Yeah. He has to try to hit those pawns uh, while he still has so time. Let's see. Again, it's not even clear it's a threat, I think, but... Uh, it's the only threat he might have in this position. Yeah. Which makes it quite... Well, bishop takes c5, of course, is a threat now because of the pin in the f-line. But yeah. after king e6... You mean king e6. If you're gonna... Mm -hmm. uh, somehow I'm so happy with this bishop being out of play that taking here, bishop c5... <laughs> Yeah, it but, seems scary. but White has a very good uh, resource uh, previously okay. before taking. He can play b4 here. Wow. No. And b4. What about a check here? That, wouldn't that maybe also have some sense? Yeah, but maybe you are driving the king to d6 where uh -huh. it uh, also you, wants to go. Okay, so you're saying b4 here uh -huh. undermining. It <laughs> would really be very nice to take this d4 pawn. And uh, then uh, the, the bishop comes to life, it's yeah. hitting g7. It really. I, I don't think it's over yet, but, no. but I think I. I it, but it would make his. Uh, move. his uh, and if you, for instance, take on b4. Yeah, if you, you take on b4, I really think that bishop takes d4 makes uh, your life easier. But I'm also. Well, my point is I take on d3, and now I've gotten some queenside majority. I need something to, to try and win the game. and. Maybe this is this is mm -hmm. helping. And what about rookie four instead of ch taking on? Th that could be a nice yeah, move. Like this, uh, for that I, I agree to. And, uh, and d four is go is going to fall. Yeah. It's just a question on the, uh, which point I will take it. Well, yeah, I would say it's an exchange in some sense that I have gotten a queenside pass pawn. It's getting complicated here, and mm -hmm. Switler, of course, has decent drawing chances, but uh, he still does. Still, yes. compared to what he had, had he just made. Not allowed this uh, tactic on, on move 40. Yeah. It's still, it's completely uncomparable and he's, uh, yeah. he's not going to be happy uh, about no, this. No, because, well, he gave a necessary chance and, as it seems, a very good chance to, <laughs> to his to opponent. I think he will play bishop a7 as well. What else? Um, yeah, that's true. He really yeah, there is doesn't ha have... Hardly any other move when d3 is, is, is Exactly. He has such. to do something and do that quickly. Yeah. But, uh, so, he's, uh, I yeah. really think so. Mm -hmm. But we can see that players who try to put pressure with white, <laughs> they <laughs> end up in trouble almost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the latest trend of this tournament. It seems like that. You're taking... Yeah. <laughs> you At least you Basically, you should just wait and uh, the opponent will... That's, well, that's, that's more or less what Kramnik said, said, uh, said, yes. said about Carlsen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, no. Okay, bishop d6. Bishop that's, d6. That's a worse move. As but a, why? It's well, it is a worse move because king e6 will hit the bishop uh -huh. and he will be forced uh, to take on c5 and then this idea of yours so, will so work. So we're getting this kind of position, king e6. <coughs> you also have a move bishop f8 here. 
Oh, we have a tweet. Sorry, there is a new tweet, yes, from Mate Bricht. Do you think Svidler and Karyakin are too nice to contend for a world championship title? They both, they both sometimes seem to lack uh, that killer instinct. It's a bit well, in my personal say. impression, uh, uh, quite some of the recent world champions, even including the present one, are quite nice <laughs> <laughs> people. So yeah, exactly. I, I wouldn't think so. I mean, that also they're lacking killer instinct. I think Swidler, if anything, in this tournament has played uh, well, pretty, has pretty, an pretty of wild. It. <laughs> I would yes. more say that he lacks a bit of solidity in a way. Yes. I mean, let's imagine he had forced a draw against. Uh, oh, taking on f four. Mm -hmm. That is, at least to me, it's a surprise. Um, but I, I understand that <coughs> earlier maybe mm -hmm. people were talking about Switler and that sort of, um, well, maybe he had a lot of other interests than chess and basically mm -hmm. seemed not always to be very aggressive. But I think in this tournament, not at all. And Kayakin, I think he's very much trying. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, uh, no, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. But actually... Important things are happening at the board right now. They seem to play oh, like they seem it's to a forced line, yeah. more or less. G5 check, king G3, rook takes D3. We're okay. getting this position. He wants to play G4 next. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Well, I will make the usual comment. It's very close to being either a draw or winning. But it's well, yeah. not very relevant info. But uh, <coughs> You think Swidler will treat this as a fortress, or you think he's tr going to try and break out now? I mean, you can't just go back and forth, let's start king d2. How I think for a start he has to do something about the g4 threat. Yeah. And this, I think, uh, he's going to go king g2. And, and what happens next? Let me go question. forward with king f5, and yeah. I would think that you have to have the bishop, well, I will call it staring at the d-pawn. <coughs> That might not be a very <laughs> elegant uh, expression, but... Maybe not. Yeah, he just played king g2. Yeah. And my point would be that the uh -huh. rook actually somehow it, it can't break free because after rook f1... It's a nice I, I point. I would consider this. Mm -hmm. And of course it's important that this opposite color bishop ending is not lost. But if it's not lost, how are you going to make progress here now? This should be the, the point that... It could just be yeah, a fortress. That, so maybe king e5 is an advanced way of doing it. But rook e2 check. Yeah. And you think king f4, oh, king f4 bishop d6 check? Well, my, that's my point. That how are you progressing here? That's very interesting. Yeah. Let's see. Uh -huh. He has an idea. He has an <laughs> idea at least. Yeah, uh -huh. bishop to e8. Yeah, I think also... Well, it's, this bishop has been on h5 so long, given the chance to, to remove it, it must be nice. Mm -hmm. And bishop c6, I guess, would be a huge threat. So wouldn't you run away with the king as soon as possible? I could also consider going back to g3. But after bishop c6, aren't you... I'm ha I have a threat of king f5 and g4. Mm -hmm. Isn't that going to be... Huge, actually. Oh, He's played king, mm -hmm. king back to f1. Yep. And I think he's making it, a draw here. Is it just me, or is Switly over the worst here? The king yeah. is maybe coming to e2? Yeah, I or? think so. I really do. Yeah. The point is that now he will uh, hit the rook, and the rook has to be there on the d-line to protect the pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the problem for black right now is that uh, he cannot even play king e5 due to rook e2 check. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, <coughs> it really seems that there's something that uh, Karyakin missed. No. I, I don't quite get it either. Uh, in some, maybe, well, maybe Karyakin's point was simply that even without bishop e8, here there's just not much to do anyway. So this was the way to, to sort of uh, move forward. Yeah, but if we Maybe go back a few moves uh, at the point when uh, Siddler just played bishop d6, right? Yeah. Here. Uh, mm -hmm. And Karyakin just played rook takes f4. He gave up on the idea to have uh, these pawns uh, un undoubled. undoubled. And that was a very, very interesting idea from his point of view. Well, king e6, <coughs> I would say I quite liked. Because if he takes an f5, 
we are going to take like this and yeah. I think that is a completely different uh, yeah, scenario. It's, it's, it is a similar position, M but it's a different maybe scenario. Maybe there is this move, bishop to f8, but of course it is sort of uh, looking a bit, uh, well, well, risky, the bishop is floating around and maybe maybe you could just play b6 and next take on d3. Yeah, exactly. Something uh, like that could have been terrible for white yeah. as compared to what we are, really we are getting here. here I could easily believe black is just winning. While if we jump back to the actual game position, yeah. I think it's going to be a draw. Mm -hmm. And well, I think you agree, right? Uh, well, I agree as I don't see a no, I, way I, for black to proceed. Simply, no. uh, there doesn't seem to be a way. He must have missed uh, something, uh, something important. Is there a, even a white threat in this? Is king e2 a threat? King e2 is a threat, of course. Okay, you do have bishop g6 as a response, so... You are yeah, pawn, you do. pawn up, but um, the problem, however, is that let's say if you play bishop g six, uh -huh. here you, you will mm -hmm. go king to e two, maybe. I would try that. Yes, I would go to because e2. I think your the point is that if check here king d two, well, it still looks a bit scary to me. The well, king goes up here. Uh, rook e2 exists. I think it's a draw. But uh, uh -huh. let me correct uh, what I just did. Okay. Instead of king e2, yes, I yeah. will go king e1. Okay. And here I would like to have uh, rook d2 possibly, yes. I don't think it matters that you have, <laughs> you can have three pawns doubled on the g line. And uh, now if I... And you think something like this? Yes, uh, I would tr try that. This I don't know. Yeah. Bishop, t bishop takes d4 check. Bishop d4 check. Something like. Rook f2. And now rook f2. And ah, you mean that you will I take. I would go g4, mm -hmm. but you will probably take on g7. No. I think you are Should right. Just be a draw. Yeah, there is still some pressure left in the position. I don't there think is. Kayakin will just say. Oh, okay, pity. Uh, let, uh, I spoiled my chances. Let's let's uh, get no, it they, over with. They, they I think he's going to try for quite a while. But of course, uh, he's probably spoiled yeah, and the, the, almost the winning position. The big part of it, yes. Yeah. For instance, after bishop g6 also, I'm not completely sure. Well, uh, you played this bishop g6 before. Mm -hmm. I'm not completely sure. Uh, what is your plan if I just play bishop b6? What is it that you want to do you want to bring your king over to f4 maybe yeah you're basically saying you're gonna stay put and not do anything at all right i would uh, be tempted to try that yes mm -hmm. and even after bishop b6 here yeah bishop b6 i have some sympathy for in the sense that i don't have to bother about you playing b5 anymore somehow this yeah. just keeps uh, everything under control and Basically so. ask the questions, so what, what's next? What's next, yes. Yeah. And if he doesn't have a satisfactory answer to that, then, then it's finished, more or less. It's still a bit uncomfortable for, for black, for sh yeah. sorry, for white, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. But nothing like it was a couple no. of well, moves ago. Before, now we're talking about uncomfortable, not lost, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so. So this is huge progress here. Okay. Well, they're going to sit here for a while and also, yeah. well, please uh, feel very free to, to, to tw tweet us. But I wanted to mention one thing about the press conference that you said that they spoke about the tiebreak rules, yeah. right? And this is, well, I think what the, the questioner was hinting at was that uh, last year's candidates, Carlsen won on tiebreaks because he had more wins than Kramnik. And I think at that time, well, somebody was saying, wouldn't it have been much ni nicer with a playoff? And... Um, well, I think, well, that could very much be a point, but I think Kramnik didn't really want to bring it up because also then he would look like a sort of sore loser, and I think in principle it could be very nice with a, a playoff. But I can understand Kramnik for not bringing it up because mm -hmm. then you, he's basically, he would be saying that, well, or people would say to him that you're just bringing this up because that's exactly what happened. And well, as Kramnik ex said, well, he was hoping somebody else would bring it up, but nobody did. And uh, well, then that's, yeah, that's <laughs> I think fair that's, enough. that's sort of mm -hmm. more or less what, what happened in, in, in that re respect uh, there. Bishop h5 was played quite quickly. I wonder what, what is after his point after king e2. Let's see. King e2, he most likely wants to just play rook e3 check. 
Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. If king d2, actually the position would be repeated. But maybe Kayaken is simply regretting playing bishop e8. So yeah. I think we saw also in, in some earlier round, was it uh, Anand who had a chance at some point against Andrekin to repeat the position? And he didn't do it. Not because I think he minded a draw, but simply because he didn't want to give the uh, opponent the chance to change his to mind. Change. Mm -hmm. King e2 is definitely something that uh, has to be looked what? at first. Okay, I have to give a check, yeah. right? Rook e3 check and king d2. And now you're threatening my pawn on d4, so yeah. I will go king to e5. And now, well, uh, there are two questions. Could mm -hmm. I play rook e2 here? That's the most straightforward way, of course. Yeah. What that is, is very likely. What is it really you, you, that could be a problem? Takes, takes. Mm -hmm. And now let's just go g4. Takes, bishop takes. And you think this is just, could very well be a drawn opposite color bishop ending, right? <sighs> it's, it's really <laughs> it's difficult always, to say. Yeah. But, but something uh, like, let's say, this and. We are close to that, yes, I think it so. It is a bit complicating that the bishop might come to b1 and start attacking our pawns. If it, if we could exchange all the pawns, maybe it would be a, a trivial draw at times. It's not completely over, right? No, it's, no. It's, I'm, no, I'm actually a bit curious. This could be his idea. And you feel sure that he will go to e2 with the king? Yeah. <sighs> I think that uh, this is what he will be calculating first yeah. of all, and I'm sure. no, quite sure. But uh, let's say another idea that I thought about, king e2, rook e3, king d2, king e5. What about rook g2 here? Yeah. This is trying it, uh, well, from well, another side. It's attacking side. this pawn, yeah. right? Exactly. And let's say, okay, king f4. Now I will take bishop d4, I and guess. If rook takes f3... G7 is hanging, G7. or you want to try rook f2 again. But rook f2, g4 could undouble yeah, the pawns. let's just take on g7. Mm -hmm. Can it really be not well, easily drawn? Bishop h6 check. Aha, uh -huh. that is of course nice to get oh, that one I, uh, in. Yeah, I think I don't, I don't believe in this for black. Would my pawn get to g3? It's not like you have everything under control yet, I would say. And I think no. I don't think it's over for Sweden. He looks also, he looks a bit tired. Well, they've played five hours. It's been yeah, an eventful game. Yeah, I think even we are a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it's good. There's no pictures. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Anand has used up the last amount of, uh, up the least amount of time uh, of all players so far. Is that a good sign or just coincidence? Well, I think if we go back 20 years, it would just be a fact. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. It's hard to say. I think it's no. It's I think a good thing. Fourteen rounds yeah. is is maybe a lot for for any player, and somehow keeping some energy yeah. resources left. I have been with him actually in two fourteen round tournaments, the World Championship tournaments in two thousand and five and two thousand and seven. And to be honest, I have no clue if he used a lot of time or not, mm -hmm. not that much time a at these points. But it could be a good sign for him that uh, he's keeping probably quite some energy uh, for, for the latter games. And we have another uh, tweet. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Why Anand is playing so safe games? Yesterday he had a good chance, but he chose to go with safe. Uh, you had uh, quite, quite an opinion about it. Yeah. Well, I think that he, d he did sort of... Um, I think he's tried to win yesterday. I understand the criticism that he tried to play quite safe yesterday. But look at the press conference afterwards. Both Switler and Anand thought that uh, in this line after rook takes f2, that white had a very dangerous attack with, uh, with, with queen h5. Ah, he played king e2. Mm -hmm. but, but let's stay on this, the, the subject here a, a mm -hmm. bit so we don't forget the, the question. Rook takes f2, I think, was a strong move, but it actually depended on a line with queen h5, and there was a check on d4, king h1, you had to take something on g3. And the black king, after some peak of sacrifice, seemed to walk to uh, b8 and be safe. And I think Switler said during the press conference, well, I would be happy to play this position with white. Well, that position was actually a piece down and seemed to win on black. But the evaluation of rook takes f2, as far as I could see, was hanging exactly on uh, that line. So one could argue that, well, of course, we should play it riskier. But that's very easy to say when you know that it's good. 
I think it would more be, one would argue, it was a matter of miscalculation from both players to a certain mm-hmm. extent. It's but true. it's also a, su- a sign how complicated it was. Very, very much so. And I think also, well, if we go back to the two World Championships tournaments I spoke about, and let's uh, talk about Mexico, where things went very well for Vichy and he won the World Championship. He actually, for instance, had a, he missed a, an almost winning position against Morosovic, but it was complicated and he got a bit out of hand. And he thought things were going well and wanted to keep on track. Uh, of course, you can argue today, maybe he should have played on. I think Kramnik made his opinion clear that he thought, well, the tie-break rules actually makes a draw, I mean, almost a quarter, well, a quarter of a point more uh, valuable for, for Anand than for, for Aronian. So it was reasonable. And uh, you could argue he should play more aggressively uh, and such, but I think, well, things are going very well and uh, for him. And also, well, we should remember the expectations that were to him before the tournament by, let's say, so-called commentators, uh, well, so-called experts. <laughs> commentators <laughs> is oh, more a, a, fa- a fact than a, a <laughs> thing. But, uh, and no, also, he has, <coughs> as, if I remember correctly, he has four white after the next six games. Mm-hmm. I think if we start being critical of Wishy now, I mean, we're really not considering the expectations that, that there were before this tournament. Mm-hmm. Maybe, well, Grishuk had a point that the surprising thing is that Vichy had quite some bad tournaments, not that he's doing well here, but um, he wasn't seen as one of the favorites, and uh, he hadn't had a bad position here, and he even had chances for more. And um, no, I think, well, Vichy has every reason to be happy, and he is one of the contenders to, to win this tournament together with Aronian and Kramnik, uh, mainly. But, uh, well, I think that's already has been expected, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and well, Swidler is thinking in this position where uh, we discussed both Rook E2 and Rook G2. Mm-hmm. The problem with Rook E2 seems to be exactly what you have mentioned. Uh, I don't know if it's a big problem, though. Uh, just taking on E2. Well, and that's uh, what he's thinking about. If yeah, it's yeah. a problem, <laughs> yeah. I, I Maybe he will uh, he will prove that it's not at all. Let's so see. Rook takes, takes, takes and, and G4. G4. Mm-hmm. And after F takes, Bishop, Bishop takes G4. King D2. We have an ending like this. Yeah. Here my hunch, my money would be on a draw in this uh-huh. position. Yeah, I agree with you. But also, uh, here, the good thing for, for, for White, uh, the really good thing for White is that he can put his bishop on E7 as far as I can see. Uh, so let's say if now uh-huh. uh, if now he I plays G5, right? Let's say Karyakin plays G5, then bishop E7. Okay, you're and saying there is an immediate tactic. Yeah, simply. immediately. Well, you'll have to lose mm-hmm. one of the pawns. Of oh, course, so he will not do that. So, so he will play something like bishop f5, I mm-hmm. guess. But even here, what about bishop e7? Mm-hmm. How are you going uh, to push uh, these pawns? So your point is, if I go king f4, threatening it, you're going to go bishop c5. Yes, and then you have to play d3. And if I play d3... Well, for a start, there will not be the problems with the bishop to b1 attacking the pawn chain, mm. right? No. And most likely we are getting into one of these scenarios where, yeah, the pawn will not break through. I think simply, well, now I will just make random moves and uh, co- please stop me when I do something. I actually got it wrong. Yeah, yeah I think you got it wrong. G5, uh, the concept is that we're going to stop the pawn on, on G5 here, right? And now... Not for long. Gonna, I think you, you have no. You have to make a, a passed pawn. You think it's necessary? My point would be that it's difficult. To, ah, you can actually go king h4. So you're saying mm-hmm. I'm drawing because I will start pushing on on, on yeah, the and also the and side. and the and even the um, the the corner is not mm-hmm. in Black's favor. No. Mm-hmm. So, but he played rook g2. So this uh-huh, this so is he a, actually a didn't bit want to, to futile risk this. even. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rook g2. And now our debate was king f4, bishop d4, and we thought rook takes f3, right? Mm -hmm. Can you play the move rook e7 if you want to stay up materially? Yeah, that's interesting. That could actually... Yeah, that could be the the only uh, serious move in this position. Yeah. Does he keep... I mean, if he keeps an extra... Like this, I think it doesn't matter, <laughs> to be honest. No? Why, why would this extra G-pawn matter? 
Well, <laughs> yeah. Can you explain I, to me? I, For instance, you play... Um, how will you draw it then, just to be concrete? Mm -hmm. Rook e2? I can start with Rook e2. But I thought Rook d7. But my point would be not even Rook e2. Okay. Let's say I just play... I just put my Rook on g1. Mm -hmm. So I take on f3 with my bishop. Yeah, and I play... Uh, He's played king, king f4. C3. Yeah, this is just what uh -huh, we are sure, looking sure. at. Sure, sure, this is what we're mm -hmm. looking at. And you think here, you ah, you want to go rook e1 in this position. Yeah, I oh, I oh. want to say that uh, I have a perfect control over g1, and in the meantime, I will start uh, doing something uh, myself on the queen's side. Whether it's enough or not, I don't know. Well, I would be worried about allowing the pawn to to g2. I would say so. But maybe in positions like we have on the lower board, I would think rook e1, rook d7, king c3, and I think we could get in bishop e5 check, and it keeps things quite under yeah, control. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it really matters that there is an extra pawn on g7? Not maybe in, in this kind of position, no. I thought that if I didn't manage to blockade well in time, but uh -huh. it seems to me that you might manage that. But I still don't think that Switler has, has uh, made it. No, no, uh, I agree with you that uh, that he hasn't made it yet and he has uh, to continue to, to defend well. Mm. You can see also he's spending a lot of time and, and energy here Ki after King F4. Could he have another good move in this position? I would, I would doubt it. No, well... He needs to take on d4. <laughs> that's ah, the that's really the kind of chance that doesn't come come along too I often. I really think so. He could be thinking about bishop d6 check, of course. Yeah. Okay. Then he has to go to f5. And yeah, yeah in case of king f5. And you think he's thinking rook e2, if that's a drawn ending. But uh, I mean, that's for a start. I think after taking g4, this he could just have had, and even here there is rook takes f3 as well. So. Maybe yeah. he was surprised by King F4. No, I don't think so. No. Well, th this we is the move. Uh, now that we he see an evaluation up there that says, well, a bit more than half a pawn for, for Kayaki. Yeah, that's. Uh, well, it's hard to comment on that. I think. It doesn't really say us anything. Switzerland mm -hmm. is shaking his head a bit, but now actually he looks more fresh than I would say ten minutes ago. I think he's. Yeah, well, it tends to happen when you feel that you almost saved <laughs> the <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he feels that at the moment. He's taking on d4. Yeah, he's though. taking on d4. It's fine. And now, this is this must be the the, the right yeah way. Of course, rook takes f3 will happen. It's not. I think rook e7. Sorry, rook e7. Seven, yes, that's what I meant. It could also mm -hmm. be rook f3. No, but rook e7 happened because it's a much more ah, uh, it ambitious did, it move. It did actually yes. happen. Okay. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now Svidla has to still be a bit careful, of course. I, I would really think so. It's you are not completely sure how no. to do it, right? No, I'm not sure uh, at all here. I'm not even convinced it's a draw. Okay. It could likely be, but... I mean, this is the kind of position so where, of course, you're close to a draw, you're close to a blockade, but somehow you have to sit there eternally and he will, he will try a bit here and there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, somehow things can almost only get worse well, they get better if you get to exchange rooks into a, a completely drawn position, but he's not going to allow that. No. But maybe, maybe it is just that he can somehow find a fortress and, and stay with it. He, he seems to think so, at least. He, he seems played, to know what he's rook doing. E2. Now rook uh, d7 has to happen. Yeah. I That's think if the you only take way. E2, it's... Uh, well, it's the optimum version for... for well, that... Okay. He's going to play rook d7 just yeah. to... To show it, I think here after Bishop F3, well, we're gonna go King F2, and the the King will stand here, and we will very, very manage to safe position. <laughs> well, I think actually all you need is to put the pawn on A5 and the Bishop on B6, and the rest doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. So that is not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So, but here after Rook D7, yeah, Rook D7, he could play. Ah, for ah instance. there was even a check on E4. 
I would think King C3 is his idea. Me too. I think that he would play King C3. It looks more simple somehow. I would think King C3, Bishop F3, and then to give the check. And then next it's going to be Rook E3, and he's going to try and keep a blockade on the, yeah, on the yeah. G3 exactly. square. Exactly. That's, and this that's is precisely what he needs to That's the to fortress manage. he's going to... Mm -hmm. Start mm -hmm. holding, right? Yeah, we can show this position after king f5, for instance, mm -hmm. here, and rook e3, right? And, let's and say if you play g4. Uh, of course, the rook will try to go in the direction of uh, g3. Let's maybe say rook it's, d1. Maybe it's more uh, intelligent putting the bishop on b8 instead of g3. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't change it. Not massively. overly, but, but you could be right. And for instance, now he can try well, something Well, it's also like not that, let's say, rook d1, you can play bishop b8, and the bishop on f3 would be hanging, would you play g3? Yeah, for instance, you can play rook e7 here, mm -hmm. just just yeah. uh, Maybe also start pushing the pawns mm -hmm. at some point. But that should be a draw. No. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but I still think there's going to be quite some play, play left in, the, in this tournament. In this game, even. <laughs> Yeah, well, while while uh, Svidla will be taking some time. No, he's not no. taking time. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, then we will not have a break. <laughs> ah, actually, now they have crossed move sixty. Uh huh. So just the uh, time was was. Remind added. me, this is the first time in the tournament we crossed yep. move sixty. I think yep. so. Now we will That's see right. increment for for a change, right? After each move, now they will get. 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes so that's that's finally. Uh, and you can also see the arbiters are coming with new score sheets for the uh -huh. players. That's here. correct. King uh -huh. C3. Mm -hmm. My feeling is it's not sp special score sheets. Switler was writing something. Maybe he's adding, you know, instead of move one, he's adding 61. No, no, I don't think so. You don't think he's adding that? Oh, no. I think okay, they should have special score sheets really? with 61. Maybe, maybe yeah. Although okay, well, so. I, I have played a lot of tournaments where I have been writing. <laughs> Very much. That's why I, I got the idea. Uh -huh. I mean, in one of these rare occurrences when I play so long games, I, I, I tend to add these kind of things. Yeah. So, so now, okay, bishop f3 seems to be the, the move here, clearly. Yeah, maybe also it doesn't matter which kind of move you will actually make here. It's, I think the position will more or less stay the same, right? Mm-hmm. You, well, I was thinking you can take with the king, but uh, I think it doesn't really matter. But it, uh, yeah, taking with the king is very similar. It will lead to a similar position, mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, uh, let's leave uh, Sergei to think a little bit, and we go for a short break, but uh, we'll be back uh, very soon, and we will see the end of this fascinating game together with you. Seven of FIDE candidates tournament, Livon Aronian defeated Sergei Kayakin to join Vishwanathan Anand on the top of the cross table. Anand had some advantage with black against Peter Svidla, but he couldn't achieve more than a draw. Vladimir Kramnik won a wild game against Shahriar Mamidyarov. Dmitry Andreykin escaped from the bottom by punishing Veselin Topolov's overambitious play. The first game to finish was a battle between Dmitry Andrekin and Veselin Topolov. Already on the seventh move, White introduced a novelty, but his plan was quite slow and Black threatened to take the initiative after a quick castle and pawn sacrifice. But Topolov chose a wrong path, and White first secured the advanced c6 pawn and then evacuated the king to safety on a1. 
Black was running out of options as his pieces couldn't get to the good squares. When Andrekin took the weak d5 pawn, Black position immediately fell apart. Another novelty in Berlin, in the game of former world champion Vishwanathan Anand, proves that he has plenty of preparation left from the match in Chennai. Peter Svidla spent 40 minutes to make his 15th move, and his position looked depressing. But then suddenly Anand pulled a break and allowed White to somewhat stabilize the game. Anand started over again by giving the queen for rook, bishop and better pawn structure. But Svidla found the straightforward plan for equalization and the game was agreed a draw. Levon Aronian also played the popular Berlin line against Sergei Karyakin. White had difficulties in getting his pawn majority going, while Black slowly propped opponent's structure on the king's side. Despite the apparent simplicity on the board, Karyakin was spending lots of time. Few moves before the time control, White changed two pieces for a rook and some pressure on the back rank. He did win the bishop back, but then Black captured a handful of pawns while constantly threatening the white king. Karyakin tried to seek the escape by exchanging the queens, but black pawns were too fast and the game was concluded in Aronian's favor on move 53. A truly mind-blowing game between Shahri Armamidyarov and Vladimir Kramnik started with Ragozin queen's gambit. White emerged with a small but healthy advantage and Kramnik proceeded to perform his traditional positional squeeze. At some point, Vladimir rushed with a central break, e4, and Mamidyarov got the chance to unbalance the position. The position was immensely complicated, and Black had to find a sequence of computer-like moves to stay in the game. Mamidyarov's hand slipped in the decisive moment when he allowed promotion with check, instead of creating checkmating net around White King. After that, already Black had a winning position, which Kramnik easily converted. After seven rounds, Aronian and Anand are leading with four and a half points. Uh, we are back, and um, just as was expected, um, Karyakin just took on f3, and uh, Sidla has made a move rook e8. It should be, it's more likely to be a draw here, but uh, there are still some practical problems that White has to solve. Mainly, he has to solve uh, the problem of stopping the g pawn effectively. Yeah, I think we were. We thought that he wanted to play, to put the bishop on e5 and the rook on e3 and stay yeah. solid like this. Mm -hmm. But now actually Kayakin can put his own bishop on, on e4 and stop that setup. How that changes the evaluation of the position, yeah. I don't know. We have to go uh, further in the line. Let's say now if he plays bishop e4 <laughs> and uh, bishop e5 check, right? And something like... King to f3. King to f3. Uh, of mm. course, rook g8 exists, and that could be but Swidler's pawn. Do you feel confident <laughs> I don't about giving up? But also, I can this. put the pawn here. Now, uh -huh. actually, let's say I have a bishop on f5, which is protected. And, uh, well, these things will sort of hog each other, and the g pawn will, will go mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. This is getting a bit out of hand for Swidler, as far as I can see it. So, I think well, we still have more drama coming here. But maybe Swidler's idea is, would it be rook g8 in this position? But how is that different? Uh, still g6? Yeah, exists. and then I would hurry to play rook g7. Mm -hmm. Is he saving it into a drawn opposite color bishop, ending like this? Maybe this is his point. Maybe Swidler actually has seen further than the commentators. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, that's that, that could be. <laughs> that sounds very likely. Yeah. Bishop. Because this uh -huh. ending, I would think... It is just a draw, right? I think simply that we're going to have the scenarios with the bishop on d4, and uh, 
I don't think the the G pawn will will queen here. King D two has to go back. No. Uh, King has to go back G4, quickly. King D two. I think. And well, sometimes you try to break through with the king, right? But uh, but that's not that kind of position. I, I wouldn't think so. And uh, yeah, here the king is coming to E three and such. So. No, it looks uh, very much yeah, like, that's a, like a Yeah, uh, that could be uh, an accurate maybe way to do it. Maybe this is Swidler's idea. We're mm -hmm. thinking, should he go bishop e4? It's very likely to be rook g8. Mm -hmm. And if g6, then rook g7. What about moving the rook away to, let's say, d8? It's not like we are winning b7. No. Either. Then maybe rook f7. And if bishop f5? There is actually a pawn hanging on b7. This is, to me, this is still a pretty complicated position, but at mm -hmm. least we've gotten some extra pawn. Yeah, the, uh, this should be fine. I think rook f7 is, is important. Yeah. Well, I'm I don't think it's over yet. No. I think he is definitely putting some pressure. And now. But it is Karyakin now who's thinking after yeah. rook e8. And th we can see on the clocks, they have added 15 minutes each. Right? Yeah. I think that's after move 60, 15 minutes each, and they're going to get. A 30 seconds extra yeah, per move. Yeah, time is not going to be an issue here. <laughs> Let's see. It's uh, unless, half an hour goes away quickly yeah, yeah. if you start. You start. really think it could still <laughs> be such I, a long I, I think you're going to be right in the sense that it's not going to happen in this game. But, uh, well, I mean, well, I called this game a, a draw, I think, a couple, a couple <laughs> of hours ago. So I will, uh, one, one hour, 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I think it's just, well, we really thought before move forward that this one is just over. Let's see. see. He's gonna put the bishop on e4 yeah, at least. That's what he's doing. Um, uh, that he's doing in order to have uh, g6, uh, in order to be able to to save yeah, this pawn. Uh, on G7. And also, it stops uh, the bishop rook coming e3. to e3 mm -hmm. yeah, and things like this. Yeah, yeah. I really think Swidler is gonna go rook g8, g7. Now, this must really be his point. Or he could start with rook f8 check. That yeah. uh, that is also fine. Rook f8 check, bishop f5 and rook g8 doesn't change anything. But then you get the g6, ah, then you still go rook uh, And then rook I go rook, rook, g7 rook g7 as b7 is uh -huh. hit. And you have actually, with the bishop on f5, you have weakened the pawn on, f yeah, on exactly. b7. Yeah, exactly. Rook f8 is almost more exact. Yeah. As let's say here, uh, after rook f8 check, what happens if you just go, oh, but king g4. <laughs> It's really yeah. not going in the right uh, direction. I wouldn't think so, no. You shouldn't no. block your pawn like mm -hmm. that. Maybe he's going to check first, though. But I think really his idea is to go for an opposite color bishop ending. And then, mm -hmm. well, that's well, that's nothing to do about it. But when we mention Switzerland, opposite color bishop endings, yes. people will go back to his game with Kramnik, where he resigned in a drawn position. That's oh, uh, that I'm but also, also from this, uh, he I had think even Mamed in this Yarl, tournament. But I think uh, also, if no one else will remind us, Switzerland will, will do it himself. So yeah, but And also against Aronian, I think. Against it, Aronian. Was all, uh, it was uh, mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah, so he yeah. had quite some unpleasant, yeah. unpleasant end games yeah. here. Let's Let's see if this one actually turns out pleasant in the end. There is good chances of it, I think, mm -hmm. from his perspective. Let's see. Yeah, rook f8 check uh, is uh, attractive if if uh, if he's sure, if we are sure that after bishop f8, mm -hmm. rook g8, it's a draw, and uh, it really seems like that at the moment. Mm -hmm. So let's maybe have a look at this once again. Rook f8 check. Rook f8 check. Yeah. Do you think bishop, bishop f5? f5? And rook g8. And now trying to run quickly with g4. We're just going to take on g7. It doesn't seem like you will be in time at all, right? I really think not. No. As, uh, as I also have these three pawns against yeah. two. It's going to so be... Okay, rook f8 check. the check. check. Okay, mm -hmm. then. It's nice if they will do the analysis for us, actually. So <laughs> he's, he's given the check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, as after bishop f5, rook g8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, no, I, I like giving the checks first just to get the bishop to a square where it doesn't defend the, the pawn the on b7. On b7 mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I think also if you listen to the Kramnik uh, and Reichen press conference, mm -hmm. you, I think or even the earlier press conference, there was uh, in both conferences there was questions by Rustam Kasimdjanov. He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's the second of Kayakin in the picture. I think earlier we spoke of that the second very rarely will be at the playing hall during uh, during the actual game of play. They will normally be at the hotel resting. 
but I think Ka uh, Kazim has been tweeting or writing about uh, that he's actually been picked for a doping test today. So that's part of the reason why he's actually at the playing hall and even, well, it seems at the press office. So mm -hmm. that's if you wondered why, why is Kazim Janov actually at the playing hall, well, that seems to, to be the reason. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Rugafe check. He's actually thinking quite hard here. But I think it doesn't really matter which move he plays. But Maybe let's King, King G3 uh, could be a tempting move in a way. I somehow want to get a bit closer. Uh, and let's say Rook G8. Mm -hmm. If G4, would it change any dynamics here? No, I don't believe no. that. That you have uh, too, too good control of as you will uh, mm -hmm. put the, your bishop on D4. Let me and do then King F2. Bishop and D4 check. Check. King F3. Yeah, then King F2 wasn't uh, very no. good. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. But yeah, you, say, you have uh, a point. You play C5. You're just going to play instance. C5. I play G3. G and you're going to push another one, I guess. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. Now that suddenly no, King E2 I, I is happening. I would consider King B4. King B4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to say was maybe King D2 is a good move. And the point is, after G2, you always have this move. And you can't break through with the king. And if you try breaking through with the king in that direction, bishop I'm going to hit your pawn, if I could make an arrow, like this. Yeah. And when you stand on h2, there's no threat of g2. And if you go to h3, I'm going to go back here. And should you do d2, and I'm going to go two. here. Mm -hmm. And you can't break through yeah, with the king. Yeah, this is a well-known trick. I, I think so, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Sort of. A trick uh, or maybe yeah, trick is maybe end I game think device. A, you could let's, let's call it end game sort of yeah device in, in a way. Yeah. So, but let's say if we go back here and after Bishop F five, mm -hmm. uh, I think we can uh, illustrate this point once again. Rook G eight must yeah. be the move. G six and Rook, rook G seven. Okay, Rook takes Bishop takes because this you have to calculate quite accurately mm -hmm. this as well. G four. Yeah. And King D2, right? But isn't it drawing in the... S uh, I mean, the, the blockade... King F3, I don't think you you managed you to blockade no? it, but uh, the same Maybe thing saves you. Are uh, you sure? Actually, the Bishop E5? Okay, sorry, King E1, for instance, here. Mm -hmm. But now Bishop B1 would start bothering me, and, and these pawns could go. Maybe it's not so simple, actually. Uh, that's what I'm thinking about. We have to uh -huh. find clarity so in this line. Rook g7 takes, takes g4. But uh, the point is that y you might as well give up one pawn on the on the queen's side. Yeah. This must be a draw anyway. If you manage to block the g. You are trying to say something like a4. Let's say bishop a2, b4 takes... A five, for instance, and this is, and uh, this is just a usual. It is draw. extremely important that after G three you play Bishop E five. That's how I understand. Well, bishop D four you can still do right because yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but basically the point is that you your keep concept is that mm -hmm. you will hang on threatening this pawn and after here, well either way to G one and yeah. it's actually not gonna matter. Maybe you're right that this is just how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. He played bishop f5. Okay, he played bishop. Plus okay. I think they are basically going to play out our, mm -hmm. our analysis. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and hopefully confirm them. Uh, the yes, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Uh, no, this is... This is... Oh, I mean, commentators will get a lot of things wrong, but even computers will get these kind of things wrong. Especially because in the end games, yes. Yes. And that sounds a bit strange, because there's actually fewer pieces left. But somehow this long time, let's say, um, fortresses uh, or sukswangs can be difficult to evaluate for Especially the computer. Especially fortresses, I, I think. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in 2007 with Anand for the World Championship Tournament. At the same time, there was a computer match happening. I've forgotten uh, uh, which two programs. And there they also ended up in the opposite colored bishop endings with maybe two or three pawns more for one of them. Mm -hmm. But this was a draw, and I think the programmers was telling us that, well, of course, any human would avoid this position, but it's very difficult to explain to a computer that something is just, uh, this is just a simple fortress, because, mm -hmm. well, they said we gave them, you know, all kind of minuses in the evaluation, but even so, it is 
a lot of pawns and the pawns are close to queening. It's easy for a human to understand, well, no, here actually nothing progresses. Mm -hmm. But, well, explaining it to a computer is tough. Easy for some humans, I think, also. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have myself <laughs> made a lot of mistakes in... The, in, in <laughs> you have to be very good, actually, to, to see those fortress mm -hmm. things, uh, especially from far away. But, oh, Swidler has left the building almost. <laughs> That's a bit okay. surprising. Yeah, <laughs> the arbiter is running out. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I don't know. But what I was about to <laughs> to say, rook g8 must be the only move, right? If you don't go for this ending, what else? He hasn't made his move. No, no, I understand. But uh, okay, uh, no, I, I'm just uh, yeah, making sure. Yeah, there is hardly any other move, right? Or you could you switch back to? Oh, this must be his idea. I think it's his idea, but let's just uh, why, let's why say rook e8, mm -hmm. g4. Rook e1. Will you just be in time with this? No, here there's maybe bishop e4 stop. But this is much okay, less yeah, stable is, and That didn't make a lot of yeah. sense. But uh, yeah, it just Switler didn't play rook d8, so so I had to just left. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> left. <laughs> uh, hopefully he'll be back soon. But uh, rook g8 must really be his point, I think. I, I would really must very be. much think and, so and because uh, without that, uh, for play. Well, I think that for players of that strength, it's. Uh, these things are very obvious. Um. Well, I would think it's obvious by a negative elimination. This is the chance that's left in the position. And, well, he has kind of aimed for it, right? Because if this is not his idea, well, why would you put the bishop, sorry, the rook on f8, right? Mm. I think it really has to be rook g8 and, and going for this, uh, this position. Mm -hmm. It seems like it. Would you think that after rook g8, g6, rook g7, there could be some practical chances in going for the more complex line like this? This I could actually... I think that would be a, an interesting try from Kayakin. I understand the computers really do not think so. but I uh, really don't believe that. As after uh -huh. rook takes b7... g3, g4... And rook e7. g3 and rook e1. I'm playing it in the most, uh, really, most straightforward way. So am I, g2? B4? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will make it into the record books of uh, having lost the safest no, I don't ending ever. I, I don't think so, because you have this idea of playing king f3 and maybe sacrificing. Uh, yeah. But but here we have to calculate very accurately. Yeah, okay, bishop d7, keeping your pawns under control. I, I still stand by, I think this is a a better practical try, and I can actually see this happening. King, oh okay, King B three, for instance. Of course, if Sweden doesn't come back, we will never know. <laughs> he will. Yeah. Uh, some. I, well, I did get an extra pawn for a reason. A four. Okay. I ah, sorry. Yeah, a four yeah. was a very bad move. Yeah, and even maybe so. King B three was a very bad move. Okay. I see. You could already play Bishop A four mm -hmm. at times. Ah, Sweden is back. Uh huh. Yeah. It has to be this line, right? But um, here, you really at least think it's a, it's a. I think this is a good legitimate try. Legitimate uh, way to do things. I would think things. so because here it's complicated, uh, and I really think the other line is, is very straightforward. Mm -hmm. That's and, uh, that's a nice thought. Well, I actually I think this is a, is a good chance, and uh, uh -huh. and that this, especially with time and everything in consideration, it's not going to be very obvious what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's less straightforward than I That's thought. That's what I mean. The <laughs> other one actually feels safe for us yeah. uh, humans, that this yeah. is seems under control, we know what to do. Uh -huh. The other one, there will be calculations and stuff like uh, this. Yeah. Um. It, it, it is a bit more difficult, I agree with that. And uh, there especially, well, uh, this uh, G6 pawn, it has a lot of value, <laughs> since yeah. you cannot... Uh, you cannot just put your rook behind the pawn and control it. So let's say he hasn't played rook d8 mm -hmm. yet. No. But he is going to do that. I think also he gave the check to get the bishop away to from, lure from the there. bishop, yes. But uh, he's not happy with something since he's spending so much time, I oh, think. Oh, I think. You think he's, he's just sort of he's getting. He's checking and rechecking, I think. Yeah. Okay, you think he's afraid of rook d8, d6, rook d7, and should the ending just be lost, it would be sort of criminal not checking it right now. Yeah, I think so. I think that's he, a good, good he, point. He, he really cannot afford doing that. Mm -hmm. This end game he has to check 
a lot of times. Yeah, at some point you also have to have some faith in your mm -hmm. evaluation and say this is uh, the way I it should be done. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we spoke about this post before that you actually completely calculate things blindly, but uh, well, without looking at the board. Mm -hmm. But he's just trying to evaluate some opposite colored bishop endings and the position on the board will only disturb you. He's simply trying to, he's putting his pawn on the pawn on g3 and on, g, on g2 in his mm -hmm. head and trying to figure out, is this just a complete draw? Mm -hmm. And for that, looking at the board has absolutely no relevance whatsoever. That's true. I think it's, it's just no, going to disturb you. Yeah, that's true. And well, that is a rule that only cal calculates for maybe 20 players in the world that, that can do this. I right? think for more. To be honest, I really okay. think that uh, that uh, many Ma grandmasters sure. don't mind uh, calculating. No, maybe you are right. That so uh, that. Well, let's make it a thousand then, but uh, <laughs> not more than that. Let's do that. I yes. Somehow, as a, if we have to give advice to school kids playing chess, it's probably not going to be that one. Uh, no, but, no. But, uh, uh, but you but are I right. think uh, Jonathan Rawson, he has a very interesting uh, point about it in his. Uh, I think it is in his book. Uh, Chess for Zebras, if I'm not mistaken, where he says that uh, he has spoken to a lot of grandmasters about this board that they see uh, in their heads, and uh, that uh, well, the stronger you are, the more the more abstract the pieces are. It's not like uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Rook G8 played. Yeah. Rook G8 played, and uh, it's not like there is some certain color of of the pieces, or that the contours are very very clear, mm. but. Uh, you really feel uh, mm -hmm. where the pieces are and uh, how they are moving, and this is so ingrained in your um, uh, okay. in your head that. Yeah. Um, well, I think you are right, and also, yeah, if you ask a chess player what color is a chess board, I mean, in your mind's yeah, eye, yeah, I, I actually have no clue. To <laughs> exactly, be I don't think that you think about it, but probably it has some I sort would of color. I assume it's black and white, but uh, even the board they are playing on is that. Is that black and white? It's no, probably this is brown. Th yeah, brown and yellow, I think, more like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, well, of the two boards on the right side, does anyone feel more natural than the others to you? Not really, I no. wouldn't say so. I think both are fine. Yeah, that's also my hunch. And I mean, I think we simply, we look at the position, right? And, uh, well, make it yellow and we might object <laughs> a bit, but I think else... Uh, I think uh, if you make pieces red or something, yeah, that really disturbs your eyes, sure, that would be tough. Sure. So uh, Svelle decided that he has this uh -huh. under control, I think. You think so? <coughs> rook g8, g6. He ha it has to be rook g7 now. Yeah, here, here already, there is no turning back. He has to do this, I think. Yeah, it's also, it makes no sense. No, no, no. And then, course. well. And then the question will be, either Karyakin takes on g7 or plays this I interesting like, I thing. I like giving up the b7 pawn. Yeah, I, I have to say. That, yes. I wouldn't probably do it, because <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. It's, of. it's very nice giving I think away. It's, I uh, think it's a good, good move. Pawns that don't belong to you. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I no. And I actually, I actually think it's likely Kayakin will do it. Although one would argue he has been doing things safe in this tournament, but I think also he's very schooled. And he understands that this ending is just a draw if he exchanges yeah, the rooks. He has, uh, of course, uh, yeah. a very high uh, chess culture. So, for sure. So this could be uh, something that, um, unless we are making a mistake, and it's uh, not a draw, but it really <laughs> seems yeah. like well, it is a draw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I, I, we really think so, that rook mm -hmm. d7 will happen. And this position yeah. is just going to be a draw. Mm -hmm. So let's see. He, he played it, and now it's an interesting moment. Mm -hmm. As uh, quite unexpectedly, Karyakin has this extra idea of giving away the pawn. I think also, generally, well, you should make it as complicated as possible for the opponent, and also, I mean, if you are on the side trying to win something that can't really be won, but is risk-free, made it as, as little theoretical as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not exactly like uh, Aronian's <laughs> queen b3 today, but, uh, no, but still. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, uh, well, you saw in the press conference, Kramnik said that he has <laughs> an endless number of similar ideas. <laughs> <So> yeah. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I like his queen b3 today. I mean, uh -huh. it's it's putting a lot of pressure on the opponent and it do have some value. And I think you can get away with these things for, for a game at times. Even, Especially again, if even you are on that level. 
I mean, would of course you have to check it carefully, and yeah. I think he has done it. And uh, I think so. I mean, he was not just uh, freestyling at all. I mean, no. you can also see that when they discussed some lines, one got the impression Aronian knew what he was talking about, and also that he 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 sort of stayed silent now and then. If you have to play something like this, mm -hmm. which is objectively not very sound, you really need to be into the details. Of course, he was taking some risks, but um, well, he was that not winning the game is also a risk or, uh, and such. So you actually mm -hmm. have to put pressure, and it's. Uh, I really like it. Um, well, more classical players like, let's say, well, we can go back to Fischer, Kasparov, Karpov. They would not dare something like this because they no. would play it much more soundly in some sense. But yeah, but uh, chess was different back then very too. Very much so, as, yes. As in the, in the uh, most classical mm -hmm. openings, you could hope for advantage. Yeah, I think also at that time, this preparation advantage that you actually can have by looking at something maybe a bit dodgy with the computer, didn't exist uh, I exactly. mean, <laughs> I can't imagine a couple of seconds being told to look at Queen B3, <laughs> D5, e, D4, E3. Yeah. That would not yeah. happen, of course. No, no, that, that so. would be very strange. But Kayaka is thinking hard here. And yeah, uh, this he's, is he's trying to make up his mind whether yeah. it is uh, still risk-free to give away this yeah. pawn. Because it's also, well, if he thinks that uh, there is some risk <laughs> for him yeah, in that, no. uh, then it sh he shouldn't do it. Of course, if you end up with pawns on G3 and G2, being blocked by a bishop <laughs> and then white is pushing on the queen yeah, the you will the feel a bit silly yeah yeah that but, uh, that shouldn't happen uh, in this still game I, I still, still like it i would mm -hmm. say but uh, no, it's going to be interesting how he also well we shouldn't forget that quite a lot of time has uh, happened here and normally one can just take how much time they've gotten and then uh, sort of deduct what they have left but now with increment it's more difficult but i think they've played Five five hours and forty minutes by now, yeah. right? They must be quite tired for sure. Yeah, and I think this is well. It's clearly the longest game in sort of uh, in, in measured measured in time. Yeah. So maybe also yeah. actually measured in moves as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I think it's been a very fighting tournament, but the games has not been very long in that sense, right? No, no, the games haven't been uh, oh. very long. No, uh, we're not complaining as commentators. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. No, but uh, I think sort of. They have been exciting, though. Yeah, so yeah. This is this is a fact. Actually, tomorrow Karyakin has um, a game against Kramnik with White. With White, this will be yeah also quite interesting. And we have uh, Anand Topalov. Is, is Anand has the White's pieces against Topalov? Yeah, you mentioned that Anand should have four Whites in the remaining six games. I'm wrong. Or no, 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 no. I no. I think you're right. I, I I'm just so. uh, asking you again. It's I actually think I think right. Anand started with two Whites out of three, and now he had four Blacks in the in five games and then well he's sort of getting it back but yeah. well we spoke about it earlier that well normally in double round tournaments it is a bit uh, uh, tricky and normally I think round maybe eight and nine has to be switched in order to avoid somebody getting three blacks in a row mm -hmm. but this time there is this extra twist that the first three rounds has to be an Russian championship and this means that they simply have to um, make a new kind of uh, sort of um, system, system, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I assume they have done it in a rather ideal way. But maybe some mathematicians even can come up with a, a better formula for this in the future. Um, well, if anyone out there, <laughs> pen and paper, just to <laughs> yeah, start, start having a look at it. But yeah. uh, um, well, it is a bit strange that Anand suddenly well had uh, four game four blacks out of four five. Four blacks out of five I is extreme, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, that, that uh, is that is even a in team championships. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get four out of five you in you your will team. <laughs> you will complain a bit to your captain. Yeah, and I, I, and I your think teammates. so. That, sort of that wouldn't be very uh, uh, common. No. Oh, sometimes it's even. Uh, Although planned, I remember no. that uh, yeah, that uh, some some years back, for quite some years, I have played a great um, Russian team uh, in the Russian Club Cup for St. Petersburg team. And one year, uh, our one of our main players, Natalia Zhukova, he, she was doing extremely well with white. So we decided that uh, since things are going so well, she should just continue playing with white. And I think she had something like seven whites uh, mm -hmm. out of an eight uh, okay. uh, game tournament. Where, where she made a plus six, and uh, I think two two of the players took the load of black games, but it worked but extremely well for us. At some point, the English team, uh, and we're really talking some years back, it could be the Malta Olympic, I'm not sure, but I think they 
basically wanted to put John Nunn always with the white pieces because, well, he was scoring fantastically with that and he was very strong theoretically. And mm -hmm. more or less, um, they, they simply put their lineup after that. And I think he did very well and the team also did well. And of course, so tactical considerations you should definitely take I at times. So. It also individual tournaments no, is, is individual a bit, a yes, bit different. We, we are going into another direction yeah. here, so of course. Team, but team but maybe it's different. quite complicated actually making uh, a sort of pairings where they don't get into these kind of things. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure there is some kind of method of, of calculating that, but it's mm -hmm. definitely above my skills. But, but I don't think that uh, anyone has been complaining about that. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, there was, oh, there was an interesting tweet, actually. Hi, is Rook takes D4 actually a good move? It's a bit embarrassing. I, we haven't thought about this. I this think is that it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be close. So King, King takes D4, D4, G4, Rook E7 has to be the first option, right? Yeah. Or Rook takes B7 as well is interesting. Wow, this we haven't seen. This is quite interesting. So here G4. <laughs> Let's say from R Adrian Larson. Yeah. It's a very nice idea. Takes, Rook takes and B7. then let's say G3, Rook E7. E7. Are you just in time to draw this? Let's maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah. G2, G2, Rook, Rook E1. E1, King to F3. Wow, this is complicated. And uh, King, what about King E5 here? King E5. And if King F2. Rook C1. But there is the move Bishop D3 yes. threatening to go F1 at oh time. Oh, you see s Mike Ross is also saying that Rook takes D4 is winning. Is it actually winning? <laughs> well, uh, he writes that Rook takes D4 and three exclamation marks. And <laughs> normally... Rook D4, King D4, B6. We haven't even considered that, unfortunately. Wow. This is quite that a... That was a lack of imagination. Takes, takes, and B6 could be winning. That is amazing. I mean, full credit to, to the tweeters for finding, yeah. finding this kind of... <laughs> Is this actually winning? If he, I mean, taking on d4, I can see him doing very likely. But taking on d4 and playing b6, b6. that would be amazing. Yeah. That's, wow. that's beautiful. Takes, <laughs> that's really takes b6. Is beautiful. And simply, there is no way to defend this. Wow. That yeah. is... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's, let's just have a look. Uh, <laughs> Rook d4, king d4. b6. b6. Well, can that really be winning? It can. Hmm. <laughs> it just uh, normally such things don't happen in the Let's practical see King game. King C3, and now to make matters worse, the winning move is the so-called shouldering <laughs> King E3. It is winning, you think? And after I, I had to admit, I, I peeked at the computer because I couldn't believe it. And then check here, Bishop E4. <gasps> yeah, that's beautiful. And you win beautiful. because of the job of Chief. This is. But I mean, is Will it hu human it? to understand that here you're just going to be in time? Takes, takes, hmm. g3. And you are winning because of queen c1 there is check. A queen c1 check. Wow. <laughs> yeah, what, what, uh, what, 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 what to say? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, also, if we have to excuse, rook takes d4, we should see, of course. But b6. You will hardly find without a computer. Well, of course, if you realize that rook b7... Let me just wait a second. After rook d4, king d4, g4, right? No, uh, b6. I understand, but if he thinks about g4, mm -hmm. how is this position? Well, it seems like rook, rook b7. b7. It's going to be a complicated draw in the sense of... g3, rook, yeah. e1, g2, rook e1. And after king f3, you will create counterplay just in time. Because something like this, g1, and after takes, takes, well, b5, it seems that it's going to end up in a, in a draw. <laughs> but even that is, of course. This is also a scaring line. So, But there is actually a wow. study like win. Wow. It is really beautiful. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Rook g7. But so this actually, whole concept of course, was this wrong. This he could actually... This he is calculating this that. This he could find. Mm. and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, now we know it when it makes it feels easier. But of course, with these double G pawns and the king in, in a position on F4, it must be extremely tempting to take the... 
Well, we didn't think like this two minutes no, ago. No, <laughs> I understand. And, uh, he must be thinking about not that. Maybe mm -hmm. my proudest moment, but still, it, it is. I think it is quite a su surprising line, especially B6. Mm -hmm. That is that is quite a move. Yeah, this is. Oh. Uh, I still think Rook D8 is a nice <laughs> practical <laughs> move, but I, I understand that it's less exciting if, yeah, if he's going to do now that now. Now it is. Um, yeah. uh, now you have. Well. Less of a point then. So yeah. rook d4, king d4, b6. Mm -hmm. But b6. But even rook d4, king d4, g4, it forces Switler to do something uh, dramatic. Uh -huh. Well, minus, minus 115. Uh, the yeah, computer that, that, that doesn't, doesn't see it. doesn't matter. Uh, this is in not, in not in this position. That's no. the point. But Karyakin does. Uh, that's my hunch. Yeah. But you think he believes what he's seeing? <laughs> What does he have to lose? It's such a nice feeling to get something so beautiful on the board. Yeah, but for we we know it's winning, but you have to see exchange sacrifice on b6. That's maybe possible. But then after king c3, you have to see king e3. But king c3, of course, is very sort of... Uh, it's not a very obvious move. What would be the point of that even? Let's say b6? Mm-hmm. And if king c3, does it mean that if g4, then king d2 is actually just in time? Because yeah, king f3, king e1. Ex exactly that, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's. Uh, yeah, I'll stop making predictions, I think. <laughs> I, I, oh. I'll be very. It's also, I mean, Kayakin, it's been. 5,050 minutes now. Now you have to calculate something to that extent. Uh -huh. Where even we sit here with computers and, uh, with, well, it's not always running, but still, no, we, we have quite some, some tools to yeah, help, we, help, we, help us. We, we were trying to think yeah. on, on our own, oh, yeah. admittedly. Uh -huh, rook d4 is really winning. Hmm. Well, I think it's clear that rook takes d4 followed by b6. It's just, uh, it's just a win. Mm -hmm. There seems to be no escape there whatsoever. Will he do it, though? He's down to 19 minutes, but oh, he's been will. thinking for a while. He's obviously mm -hmm. calculating these lines quite hard. Yeah. And I think, uh, despite that it is a rare beauty, I think for a player of that strength, it's probably not too difficult cal calculation. No, but b6 is a bit of a strange it's move. It's true in that Svidler has missed it, but uh, he, he had well. to think of rook takes g7, he had to think of rook yeah, d8. I think also, well, missed it. It's not even clear that he's missed it. I, did he have any other choice? I, I mean... Yeah, actually, if this is winning, then uh, it's most likely also that uh, just keeping the rook on e1 should also be just winning for black, as you will bring your pawns closer well, and sacrifice uh, at well, some point. Well, but maybe you could put the bishop on d3 and not allow it. I think that's going to be... Uh, well, that's it's a discussion. It's going to be a complicated mm -hmm. uh, analysis in some yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, that I agree with. I, I'm sure yeah. that this uh, endgame will be analyzed many uh, times uh, after, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Well, he see. looks like someone who's calculating a long and complicated line. To well, he is, but also the clock is running down. But we are in the increment phase. And increment. Increment <laughs> phase, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think I mean, 17 minutes left, it's not going to be a huge problem. I think no, he can no. even go down to five minutes exactly. without feeling if overly worried here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that he um, can afford to do. Yeah. But wow, will he? He would. Uh, he would be equal on points with Siddler then. Should he yeah, win yeah. this? Yeah, uh, I mean, right now he's on share at last. But yeah. he would climb to minus one with, with Switler, with Mamedyarov, with Tupalov, and, and with if Andrekin. I'm not wrong, with Andrekin. He yes. would actually be in fourth place. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's hard to uh, believe. But it's hard to jump. That's more. that's how it is. If he jumps as many spots for the next round, he will be in red. Yeah. But it's not gonna. It's not possible. But that's true. No. But wow, this also means that we could have Kayakin and Aronian plus two. Sorry, Anand uh, and Aronian plus uh -huh. two, Kramnik plus one, and the rest on minus one. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of tournament yeah, it is. Yes, it's been very. But not because not a lot of games are decided actually because uh, everybody on the no i think on the yeah. contrary it's because there are yeah he took he took on d4 okay <sighs> and Switler will take back and now the really fascinating moment is how is he gonna proceed after king yeah, takes d4 which has mm. happened is he gonna play b6 
he still has. What you, what's your call? Uh, it's such a move to make. Oh. Such a move to make. Yeah, it came. Wow. Fantastic. It is fantastic. That is impressive. Yeah. And mm. yeah, maybe Swidler already knew what has hit him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't rule that out. No. You think Switter will go King C3 and then after King E3 he's basically going to give up? He has been lucky here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, as, but as, uh, but yeah. I mean, King C3, he's going to go King E3 because G4, King D2 is so easy to, to see. But it's, it's a tough blow, I think. Uh, you know, um, being Swiddler in this position, you think you have how basically made a draw. And then e7, g4. And you can't even <laughs> start pushing. The problem is that there's two g pawns, right? I mean, yeah. somehow the race never makes any kind of sense. Yeah, if you could only have uh, this extra pawn, extra b7, but mm -hmm. he just made sure to, to protect that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, he's shaking his head. I think he can't believe it. Simply, what yeah, has happened it's to just him? Uh, what can you do? Yeah, but uh, there seems to be absolutely no no defense here. Let's say rook e one. Ah, and even g four rook e one. Yeah. Correct? Well, king f three would be a good move, but even g three check king g four, king e three. D2 is still winning. And I think now the extra G pawn becomes maybe important because the king can go to H2. Obviously, the, uh, the extra G pawn is something huge Well, here. we are discussing something like this. And in some scenario, after king H2, king F2, you can push the G pawn. And He's uh, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. He, he probably really <laughs> can't really, yeah. Well, maybe he thinks, okay, it's, it's beautiful at least. But... Uh, it's a bit tough. There is what would yeah. you try? Let's say uh, king c3, king e3. And the problem is that after the check, bishop you're going to go bishop there b4. There is nothing you can try. Yeah. I think king c3 is a worse move, actually. I think that yeah. it's better to well, play rook e1. Now there is the well, there is the pawn race, but the pawn race is not very complicated. Uh, exactly. You know. It seems like it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, b6. Okay, he's actually gonna no. <laughs> I think he thought he saw something, but then he didn't. King C three played. Okay. Well, Kayakin has made two difficult decisions. I would say that the next one here is actually the easiest of the three. Yeah, I agree with you. It's it's a very it's a very common theme in uh, in the end games. This king e3 mm -hmm. and shouldering yeah, the that king. You, uh, sort of I don't think uh, it will it would be easy if you have to just come up with it uh, without uh, having seen it uh, <laughs> in your life. When I, I was young, I was at a training king e3. training yeah. session in Denmark with the former Danish uh, world champion in correspondence chess, Jan Slot, and he. He was showing us shouldering, and he actually did it physically for us <laughs> to under understand how, how, how it was done. That's he went sort nice. of to stage, and he shouldered one of the people. And uh, well, <laughs> since then, I, I, yeah, you King know e the concept, yes. very much. King e three, Kayakin knows it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, that simply seems to yeah, be. Yeah, it. it seems to be, seems to be completely over, right? And mm -hmm. the, the the principal line is this: Bishop e four, and now. The pawn race is just going to be a tempo yeah. short. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if you start something like this, the, the G pawn is just going to go to, to The G2. point is that uh, the bishop on E4 is so excellent at stopping yeah. this uh, mm -hmm. C and pass and pawn. And the double G pawn is, is making its effect and such. So yeah, it's just, well, it is a study-like win. Uh, so everything <laughs> is where it should be. So here we praised rook f8. Would it be better to... Oops. Yeah, I was to thinking go he about go it. here straight away. I don't Would that make think a difference? it makes a difference. Let's honest. say here, rook g7. Can you still take in this position, or has things changed dramatically? Well, for a start, b7 is not hanging. But here you're no, saying but that maybe rook f7 check. <laughs> maybe it is exactly hanging because now you can take. Now you will take it and get back. Yeah. So you, and if you go b6 here. Maybe rook e7 wins an important tempo. 
So Rook F8 could be also maybe s- maybe Rook F8, wow. which we thought was brilliant, could be mm-hmm. exactly the reverse. Actually, yeah. uh, it will take a bit more time to to analyze that. But yeah, uh, you need to. Wow, it could be that Rook D8. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this is this is amazing. Uh, you can see Kayakin. Yeah, he was having uh, a bit of food. Mostly, likely he is. Uh, he brought some nuts and fruits to to eat during the game. But I think yeah. Well, if we go back to the position on the board. I, I think you're right. I think this bish- uh, r- the inclusion of Rook F8. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure because you need to give it some time sure. and, and, and look at and it more carefully, but it yeah, could be that this I l- was... I lost a bit of faith in <laughs> sort of the quick evaluations of this ending, but yeah. it seems like that could actually have been a decisive mistake. It's too early to, to say, but could strangely enough, that could be the case. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Rook E7, check yeah, Bishop E4. It's, I mean, well, the Swidler's tournament has been wild, to put it mild. Yeah. And now he could actually see himself back to minus a one. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that is amazing. And also the games have been yeah, wild. I mean <laughs> Not only the uh, results. Uh, sure. He's the uh, no, I mean, the draw he had yesterday with, uh, with Anand, for instance, was a pretty I- intense game, including certain yeah. tactics. And his draw with Kramnik... He was uh, basically winning, and uh, I've forgotten. If he must have had one more drawn game, but I can't recall right off. Uh, sort of. But it really offhand. seems that uh, Svidla has dropped most of the points where where he could have saved them. I, I think, think he's the Swidler's most yeah. unfortunate player so far, you could say. Yeah, maybe some would argue that yesterday against Anand, things that could have gone worse for him. That's true. There, there, there it is not. true. But I, it's true that if Svidla sits down and sort of. Uh, Okay, half a point there, half a point there. Mm. It starts adding up. But Very well, so. okay, he's played in. A, I think well for the spectators, uh, it's a fantastic, fascinating style. But of course, a very risky style. Yeah. You think today it's, it's not paying. You think thing. it's because that first prize here is a world championship match that people are actually taking more risk than normal. <sighs> yeah, probably. I mean, well. It's it's a, it's a big thing. Yes, uh, there is yeah. a, uh, p- simply uh, there is such a big difference between first place exactly. and second place. I think at other tournaments, well, maybe you will think, okay, I still have my rating points, and exactly. the s- a second prize is could be also not too bad. But here, it actually, n- that's what I was about to mention. I don't think people are especially calculating rating in this tournament, and maybe that's not. basically you are getting to this. Uh, you have mentioned maybe n- maybe not here, maybe not while commenting that that Bent Larsen had this idea that it would be useful uh, to abolish ratings. Well, he, he had the idea that rating is actually counterproductive in some sense. And I think one of his, uh, well, uh, very good quotes was that sort of, well, rating points goes away while tournament victories actually will, will stand there. Yeah. But simply, well, you know, you will see, see juniors or even the world best players saying, well, it was a nice tournament. I, I, I won I, one I, and a half point. I won one and a half <laughs> rating point. Yes. And, well, Imagine Champions League or a football tournament where they would have some kind of expected score and try to evaluate it from that. I mean, well, there's the Champions League's winner or the English champions, but yeah. if you have done a bit better than expected, it doesn't really matter if, if your rivals did even better. I yeah, would think. I really think that this is one, uh, maybe not such a small reason for the for this format, this mm. tournament format, for the candidates being such a success, because it is a success yeah. last year and this year again, uh, it is mm. amazingly interesting. I because it so. basically, well, in reality, it abolishes ratings. Yeah, there <laughs> It is doesn't really matter. No, there uh, is so much at stake yeah. in the sense that the first prize is such a carrot, uh, I yeah. would say. So yeah, that's true, that yeah. you're not really... Uh, that you don't have time, you don't think about uh, other things. No, I think sort of. Mm-hmm. Well, we even remember the last round uh, of last year's tournament. I mean, Kramnik was taking uh, uncharacteristic risk. He was playing a dubious opening against mm-hmm. Ivan Chuk and so on. Of course, in the end, ironically, a draw would have been enough for him. But yeah. well, maybe then also, had Kramnik just played for a draw, Magnus would have slowed down in some sense. And yeah. uh, Well, it's not like I say we should abolish rating, or there's an obvious solution, but rating points has a, a tendency to... And, well, I think also, I think I praised rating earlier that it's actually a very exact way of measuring 
let's say, expectations and, and such. But mm -hmm. I think it also has a negative effect on, 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 the on, players. on players. Yes, yes. And you uh, will see that mm -hmm. quite some draws that uh, well, the chess lovers dislike so much. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, he's tried rook to b7. Okay. Uh -huh. He understands that rook uh, e7 so check is not going to work. How is the line? Let's. Okay. G4, well, I guess. Yeah. Well, he I'm just, just trying to understand the difference. I mean, Kayakin spent a tempo playing b6, and Switlet spent an extra tempo taking the pawn. But maybe the king's position has changed. Yeah. So let's say g4, rook b6, g3. Mm -hmm. What is his move going to be? Rook d6? The only move, I think. G2 and, and rook, rook d1. D1, correct. Okay, this is actually seems to be what's happening. And if you play a straightforward move like king f2, I guess his idea would be that check king back here. But let's say king h2. Isn't this just going to queen and win? It seems like uh, that to me. What about king d4 in this position you have here? Hmm. You're saying this is actually not so so simple. No, maybe. I think that most likely it is. But he okay, understood okay. that rook e7 check is. So uh, let let's see. Something has happened up there, right? Yeah, they just went yeah uh -huh. along this uh, g4 g3, rook, rook d6. g3 rook d6 yes, and now. Hmm. What is he gonna go? Let's let's look at G two. I think G two. That's well. That's the very obvious move, <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? And uh, and, uh, and it could just as well be well, rook D one is, is forced. Yep. And, hmm. and here after King F two, he might be. You think he is trying to some to study get this because study I, th like I think this this would And what I'm trying to say uh -huh. is something like this and King E five. And actually, you will get in time for the G pawn. I don't know if, if, but yeah. I doubt this will happen. No, uh, but this, this, will this not I think this was his idea. This is his idea. But it doesn't work either. I ah, it doesn't even it work. It doesn't even okay. work. And the point is that you You're have your yeah. king very close. I think. You're saying that this is not working. I thought this could be a, a draw, actually. That's what I thought. King too. F two, and I would think King F four. But you think you're just going to be in time? King F4 is even. Uh, I thought B4, but time. there were like might be Bishop D7. Yeah, maybe even that is not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe there's simply no hope at all for no, Switler. Rook no. D1, he is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we actually we crossed six hours of play now. Yeah, this is uh, it's the uh, first day for sure. Uh, <laughs> I still have plenty of of time left here. Let's see. I think Kayakin is. No, he still. But he can even do it with with tempos. Let's say he can play bishop g4, with uh -huh. the idea that after rook g1 he will play well king f2. Yeah, so let let me the move the rook a, a bit away. Let's say to to c1, I guess. Uh -huh. But then I will play bishop e2, threatening f bishop f1. So he doesn't okay. even get that line where he was. He will most likely still lose. Yeah. Uh, but this is more no. forcing. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's over for Switzerland. But he played the move played G5, G5 only. But Interesting, but probably still enough. Yeah. G5 and... Uh, yeah. I think nothing has changed. No, here, nothing right? has changed. Uh, it probably doesn't make a big difference which uh, move <laughs> order he chooses. I mean, basically, White cannot improve his position let's say, in order to stop the G-pawn. So I would think his only chance is starting to push here. But, well, I think king f2 and if b5, I would think takes, takes, g1, takes, takes. Oh, he's, and yeah. He simply, well, let's say a4, g4, a5, g3, a6, and now, yeah, bishop c8 is going to be a good move. Yeah. The pawns are not queen. Yeah, exactly. The pawns so uh, are not even no. going I anywhere. As far as I can see, there is not even a not single even thing left yeah, for Switler to not, hope not, for. Not even a glimpse of hope here. No. Yeah. Well. Seems so. Yeah, but that's. But also, 
I mean, of course, Sweet Level feel awful. And I think the mistake in Move 40, he's not going to be happy about. But blaming him for this ending, well, we saw Rook F8 check. We thought it was a brilliant move. And we were even, well, we have, well, we're not under any kind of stress. We look at it here. It's a very difficult position. And mm -hmm. finding Rook takes D4 and B6, I think Sagai really deserves credit for that. That was uh, sure. especially bad tournament situation, a, a, a long game uh, and such. Yeah, this yeah. is, uh, no, this is, this is impressive. He's fought very well today. Of course, Vidler must feel bad about yeah. getting into this position well, with of course, White. Yeah, sure. That's a problem. Uh, he, he, he was on 50%. He was, um, uh, he didn't have a, a, no. a bad position in the tournament, uh, a bad situation in mm -hmm. the tournament at all. And um, yeah. But I think Swidler, I mean, he understands he's taking risk and probably he also thought, I'm not the favorite in this tournament, so I have to do something extraordinary. Yeah. But I think he wanted to play this tournament and after the tournament be able to tell himself, I really played it like I could win it and I took the necessary risk. I will not yeah. sit back and say, how did I just put more in this position? We can argue that he took it too far, for instance, against Aronian. But, mm -hmm. well, if you're going to do this very risky approach and really, I mean, want to try your best for winning, then, yeah, it might go wrong at times. And also, well, if it's what the score is going to be in the tournament, that actually only affects rating and surely some lower price money, which could yeah. be quite high in this tournament. Yeah. But Swidler, I think he really wanted to see can I qualify for a world championship match? Mm. And it's of course still possible in this tournament, but with minus one, six rounds left, it is difficult. Mm -hmm. And there is two players but ahead of I, him. I, I agree with you, three players ahead of him. Sure, but two yeah. players with, yeah. with one uh, and a half. Massively and yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yes, but uh, I agree that uh, what he's doing here is very consequent. Mm -hmm. um, he's played very ambitiously against Aronian, which didn't work out well. No, and I think that was simply a misevaluation, and yeah. one should also, even if you have a very aggressive concept, you should evaluate it on a sort of game-to-game uh, -game basis, game -to -game right? And basis. maybe that, maybe there it got a bit far. But I think mm -hmm. what you're saying generally, he's been very firm in this approach, yeah, right? Yeah, I and think uh, so. Yeah. Jonathan Rawson is uh, tweeting that Karyakin's elegant solution is the kind of idea you only tend to look for and find if you're working on your calculation. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I think if, if, if you see this, I'm mm -hmm. sure that it will be included in very many exercise <laughs> books. For sure. <laughs> Maybe in the future. Today, you know, it's, a, it's a race right now to get it published first. Yeah, <laughs> I think <laughs> so. Somewhere. But it's true. This is the kind of things that you will find it if it's a study, right? But yeah, to you find will it find over it the board told is, is, to find is it. nice mm. and uh, sort of. But maybe he got to it sort of by first calculating rook b7 and I such. also think that this uh, sacrificing the exchange is in the air when you yeah. have uh, the and, uh, two passed pawns on the g-line. He just, sure. well, the reason we didn't look at it is uh, because it seemed like the uh, g-pawn is still quite far away. I, it and did. It didn't and feel... Uh, well, realistic that mm. this could mm. work. So I it's true that mm. yeah. it is a very amazing um, a No, solution. it's true. Rook takes d4. It is something we should have considered. I mean, uh, yeah. but, uh, well, no. I think finding b6 is... Uh, b6 is, is, is tougher. A I further, think. very I mean, impressive and Even step. it's a very nice exercise in the sense that, um, well, I think a lot of players, when seeing it as an exercise, they would take on d4 and play g3 and say it's a very easy exercise mm -hmm. and then well the, there is two layers of the exercise which yeah. is wha well you can even argue that king e3 is the third layer but uh, exactly. it is maybe rather easy but that there is two no, layers no, i mean it's true well i think when i was younger i was sometimes solving for instance some duretsky exercises and he would often tempt a bit with maybe an easy move when you get this idea i've actually made it and then there is some uh, well, I would say annoying, but I, I mean it uh, sort of in a kind way, twist in the end. And yeah. somehow you, you remember to be more focused in, in, exactly. in that sense. But exactly. uh, let's see, no, Swidler is uh, he's thinking, right? Or yeah, it's tough to be on this side yeah. of the study. Yeah, of there course. is, I mean, now I think, you can, well, he can do whatever he wants and there's no point in criticizing him for, uh, it's too late now simply, right? He's looking yeah. for, is there any kind of save here, but... Well, we think there is no. It's just uh, everything is. It's not even close. No, simply, it's no. it doesn't even become a race. Okay, B four played. <sighs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Yeah, somehow I think players taking huge risk like Switler has here. I mean, the public we really want that to be rewarded here uh, in a way. And yeah. Of course, it's, uh, it's it a pity. It would feel uh, very fair. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair also, I think Kayakin has taken some risk. I mean, we saw yesterday against Aronian. He, he yeah. I think he tried too much simply, but, uh, but, but simply still. Uh, risks don't seem to be paying off so no, well in No, no, well, that's... I think uh, no. Who has who has risked successfully? <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure I can come up with. Well, maybe Topala would claim he risked successfully against and Kramnik. Uh, but yeah, but against Kramnik, I don't think he risked that I think much. He, no, I think he just also played well. Uh, yeah, and maybe. Well, I think. Well, maybe he would create the image that he really took risk there. But I think he just played a I mean a normal game yeah. of uh, of chess actually exactly. and played well and sort of. No, but if you look at some latter stages of the games, it's true that taking risk hasn't paid. Off spectacularly no, in not this at tournament all, I at think. all, actually. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I think that's actually kind of random in a way. I don't think we can sort of say that uh, as a general rule you should not risk. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. That, that would be wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. But um, yeah, but I think it's actually, you're right, it hasn't paid off at all. At all. Well. No, uh, uh, the only uh, mm. examples I can come up with is when uh, people had to try to save themselves desperately in lost positions or yeah, just but lost. But that, that, that doesn't count. I mean, uh, you don't say, have no, a... Uh, no, no, no. I mean, let's yeah. say like Kramnik yesterday against Mamejarov, he yeah. took certain risks with playing E4 and uh, in this yeah, position. But, uh, but... Yeah, but you can't say the that... The positions so seem I mean, to be... Well, it paid off in the sense that... <laughs> no, 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 no. It didn't. It didn't also. No, he, he, he was won, lost, but... Yes, uh, but he was lost, yeah, so no, not this is this is quite quite strange. I guess Switler is sort of coming to terms with things, and uh, yeah. there's really not much to do here. Um, well, again, we were debating b5. How is is rook d5 a funny move here? It's not a very good one because of bishop g4. But well, my idea was that after g1 queen rook f5, could you hope for something here? King e3, not really. He's played a4. He just played a4. And Kayakin has taken a queen. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I do think he played this uh, g5 move in order to not have to worry about the mm -hmm. king's march to e5. Mm -hmm. So takes, takes. He will play a5? Or no, a5 is also. Not sure I what he will it play. It's mm -hmm. He's going to play whatever move he, he, <laughs> he feel for accidentally. But I think it's going to end with... Uh, a black bishop stopping the pawns and then a, mm -hmm. a, a black g pawn queen. He is going to make a few moves, b5, and why not indeed? Yeah. Like Kayakin can even play, well, simply b a6 is threatening to win a pawn, but it's not really what it's about, right? No, no, so no, not at all. Uh, so simply g4 as well. But maybe it feels cleaner sort of exchanging the pawns, but uh, I, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really matter anymore. The point is that. It doesn't mm. matter. No. Yes. So let's say g4. And, well, if b6, then we have bishop e4 and uh, the pawn has been blockaded. Well, the only interesting, maybe, king d4 is a bit interesting here. After g4, king d4, with the idea after g3 to play, to play what? b6 yeah, and but then bishop, bishop c8. And, and after okay. c5, still you even... Even well, here g2 will and g1 will check, and also bishop exactly. b7 just will, will block the pawns. So, no, I think. Yeah, no matter how, how hard we try, there is, uh, it I seems that there is no, yeah. not even a way well, for. We also gave up on Kayakin finding a win here, mm, but that yeah. was a more complicated position. This one is actually yeah, this one is very, very straightforward, mm -hmm. and I think also. Well, they've removed the engine evaluation, but I think it would be yeah. seriously high at this point. That's so, true. But Kayakin is taking his time and being careful, and I think having played six hours, 17 minutes, it we would be to tempting that, to yes. make a couple of quick moves, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we have seen an example or two in this tournament, at least one of that not yeah. working out well. Yeah, it's so almost minus 10 there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Maybe, I, uh, yeah. Actually, I'm a bit curious how the graphic will handle uh, an extra digit, but okay. Maybe <laughs> 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 okay, maybe that's, that's what's left in this game to see. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. Oh, this this will be well. Uh, this endgame will definitely be mentioned yeah. in every <laughs> every collection from yeah, this and I think particular also, tournament. Well, for instance, Kayakin's second uh, Kasim Dyanov is also writing some reports for here, and he was really praising um, 
Queen C4. Queen C4 I mean. of Aronian yesterday. But, uh, well, what about Rook D4 and B6? Mm -hmm. I guess that... But well, I think he's not going to be the only one exactly. Yeah, so. and I think uh, probably Kasimjanov now will, will be coming to every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> he seems to be that's true. bringing luck to his, yeah, yeah. To his player. <laughs> Let's see. He's, he did want to exchange. So, A, B5. And... Switler is going to take back with something if he doesn't stop it. Yeah. The problem is that uh, the bishop is very, very effective at stopping those two pawns. Yeah. That's really uh, come again? Is no, this no, this no. Is, this, no. This is not the real evaluation. No. Well, maybe it's on a very, very um, uh, sort of s um, low number of plies. And, it, it, so. and he simply had some line where now I think it gets in, it gets real, as we would mm -hmm. say. So. Yeah, let's say if you play. Uh, a takes B5, right? Mm-hmm. G4. Yeah. And C5. G3. That's no, it's so far. After C6. You are just are you just gonna queen actually? Or how is how is this? Did we did I manage to make it a bit interesting? <laughs> I think I did. I think you did. That wasn't uh, Bishop B4. <laughs> Bishop B4, I think, is better. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a nice uh, nice point by uh, from uh, Olympio yeah. Orkan. Yeah, when Svidla gave his G pawn with G six, he <laughs> couldn't have imagined he'd suffer. That's no, true. He'd no, suffer that's, that's because true. of those two pawns. Yeah. It looked like a very good move back then. Yeah, I think maybe let's mention that to Svidla later. But I I, no. I get the get the point. Also, well, you saw I actually managed to to do things wrong for, for yeah. Kayakin, which means that there is a definite reason for playing on uh, for, for Switler. But um, yeah, so what, did, what is it that you did wrong? I, I think I managed to erase it quickly. <laughs> so okay. I think no one remembers. Good, good. good. Yeah, so, no, so we are saying... G4? <laughs> well, maybe I can make the same mistake again. <laughs> if you so try. So G4, yeah. G4, I think I played C5. C5? G3? G3? And I think I played C6. C6. No, 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 I think... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I did. It still li looks very good. Yeah. So, let's see here. Kayakin is thinking quite hard. He has 14 minutes left and he's getting his 30... Sorry, 30 seconds increment all the time. Yeah. But let's see. He's okay, he's G4. about to go mm. G4. Mm -hmm. Well, his uh, Swiller is not going to go B6 yeah. because I think then Bishop E4 is a very clear way to stop it. So uh, if he continues to play, he should either make King D4 or C5 if he continues. And maybe it's not the most relevant point, but actually it seems to me that the clocks on the right side is a couple of seconds ahead of the, the clocks on the, the video sc screen we are seeing. So it could actually be that there's a very slight delay. Yeah, I think so, there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. this, this, this was mentioned already ah, okay, before okay. So in, in some, well, by some people who are probably uh, yeah, following yeah, it very sure. closely. They want to <laughs> Even more closely than, yeah, yeah, than us. Uh, I think so... We got it yeah, here. So, so we, we got exactly to this G4, position. C5. And, yeah. and uh, well, let's find this drawing line at least. At least one. <laughs> <laughs> if G3, C6, G2, B6. Would you play Bishop E4 here? No, then King D4 could actually be, be reasonable. I think C, yeah, C6, G2. B6, C6, G2, King F2. B6. I don't see a drawing line. King F2, B7. B7. Uh huh. You think he's gonna do it like this? Wow, he has to find that this is. Is this the only way to win? Okay, we are really <laughs> 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 not, okay. not not paying attention here. Is this really what he has to go for? Okay, then. <laughs> this is amazing. Is this actually the only way of doing it? Wow. Yeah, I think. 
we should not <laughs> after six hours of and twenty minutes here it's uh, yeah i think i think uh, <laughs> yeah uh, you will excuse us <laughs> uh, yeah you will have to at least so. <laughs> Yeah. No, uh, the point is that if the only way to win this, and the computer is shouting that this is completely, yeah, but for a completely win. it's winning, very easy. Yes, uh, it could be so that uh, the only way he sees also is c6 now. Well, you have to pr try c6 because b6, bishop e4 is just uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that 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 oh. would not make sense. No, no, right? that that so doesn't make any sense. He will do c6, mm -hmm. of course. He has to. So he's gonna go c6 now. And, and in case of bishop e4, just uh, let's have a look at this yeah. one. Bishop e4, king d4, M right? Maybe this is just uh, the way to, to do it, actually. Then maybe, maybe you can uh, avoid getting into the... Maybe bishop e4 is just... Queening phase. Queen d4. And, but where do you put the bishop here? For instance, on f3? On f3. Mm -hmm. And this will just do. He played c6. And here, okay. Played c six, and you're saying the simplest is actually to do. I'm not sure. Uh, after to do like this. But what about king e three here? King e three. And then you'll play bishop h one probably. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop h one. That is the easiest. Mm -hmm. Well, you can. Yeah, sure. Why don't well you just <laughs> put the bishop on h one? You played d two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Played g two. And we're saying b6, and they're actually going to queen. Mm -hmm. So king f2, b7, queen, queen. Is this trivial? Check. King d4. Queen e3, check. He loses his queen, that's the point. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And after king d5? Bishop e6. No, bishop mm -hmm. e4, check. Oh, bishop e6. Bishop e6 six is winning. Check. Yeah. And the, wow. Yeah, so that this they is. See. Okay. But yeah. then he's left with a c pawn. Wait a second. He's left with a c pawn uh, still. But how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, but I think the queen will be on c7, right? King d6? Why? You're saying. I take, take, and uh, play king d7. And. Queen b5 could be the only move to win here. Okay. <laughs> because king d6, yes, king e3, c7, yeah. and queen f5 or queen e8. Yeah, wow. that's right. Okay. Yeah. They are good. They have calculated all this stuff. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, but again, it is such bad luck. Uh, he <laughs> went to, he went to c4. Like this is such a bad luck for white. Hmm? King c4. Bishop e6 check. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he resigned. He wow. resigned. <laughs> but uh, what can we say? It was very beautiful. It's yeah, yeah. It's I it's mean, it's some, really amazing some amazing lines and such. Yeah, and I'm uh, sure that... And even though 6 hours, 26 minutes... Yeah. I still think the press conference is going to be a bit exciting. Yeah, that actually. that, w that you should stay for. But it's uh, yeah, it's a of course it's it's a tough blow for Swidler who is suddenly on minus one, and for Kayakin, of course, uh, a very unsuccessful tournament has uh, suddenly it's just turned become nicer, become much <laughs> yes. nicer. And I think also the the order of when things has happened in that Kayakin actually will have quite some fresh energy, and uh, well, he's wide but. Kramnik tomorrow, if I remember correctly. Yes, so yes, yes. I think we're gonna see some very interesting yeah. games again tomorrow here, but and uh, um, yeah, yeah, and no, well, this a black really win actually. Yeah, uh, they haven't <laughs> been a bit rare. <laughs> That's true. In this tournament, they have been, but yeah, yeah rook takes d4, b6. You don't see so often. No, this uh, was. Uh, I mean, I think this was the move or the move sequence of the tournament. This was so far for this sure. This was, was and deep uh, and impressive uh, stuff. And yeah. uh, again, credit to the tweeters for. Seeing it and for also telling us about it, because mm -hmm. so else we yeah. would have looked <laughs> very <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we passed that stage. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, it uh, is a, it is an amazing. Yeah, uh, but despite that, I hope you will come back and, and uh, follow us again again tomorrow. So mm -hmm. let's see. But yeah, tough luck for Switzerland. Nothing to say, right? But uh, he has to go to the press conference mm -hmm. and, and say a bit. Yeah, that's so that, uh, These are the rules of.
yeah, mm -hmm. of the tournament. And yeah. we'll be back tomorrow uh, for um, the new round. And uh, stay tuned for the press conference. And see you then. See you then. Bye bye. Sergei Karyakin was born in the bountiful 1990s. When he was five, his father showed him how the pieces move. Two months later, Karyakin visited the chess club of the Pioneer's Palace in his native Simferopol. Sergei's talent became evident early on, and to develop his extraordinary talent, he moved to Kramatorsk to study at a famous chess school known for nurturing stars. In 2002, Ruslan Ponomaryev included Karyakin in his team when preparing for the FIDE World Championship final match with Ivanchuk. This invaluable experience helped Karyakin become the youngest grandmaster in the world. He earned this lofty title at the tender age of 12. He was a typical wunderkind. Chess ruled his life from an early age, and he dedicated everything to his main goal of becoming world champion. In 2009, the young chess player changed his citizenship from Ukrainian to Russian. He firmly established himself in the Russian national team and since 2011 has confidently stayed in the world's top ten. Sergei regularly wins super tournaments. His biggest success so far was in May 2013 in Stavanger, where he headed the likes of Carlsen, Aronian and Anand. Karyakin is not only strong in classical chess, he is also in his element in rapid chess. He was rapid world champion in 2012 and won the World Cup in this discipline in 2010. Karyakin's hallmark is all-round strength. He is equally good in calm positional games as in wild tactical flights. Uh, no, clearly White has uh, enough compensation to maybe even press a little bit, but objectively this is <coughs> this is fine for Black. But uh, my hope was that uh, first of all Sergei will probably be slightly surprised by this, and secondly, <coughs> you know, who knows what I what I have there, and he probably also wants to play a game, which was my. My hope. And after night six, queen two, basically white gets a different position. Uh, oh, normally, uh, Sergei's opponents would play knight bd2 oh. here, knight c6. Uh, e4 castles, and uh, this is a different position. And uh, in the game, I save on uh, on the move knight bd2, and we get a completely different oh, we get party. a completely different setup. Я сохраняю себе темп, не играю конь d2, и получается совершенно другая позиция по сравнению с тем, что обычно играли против Сергея. Yeah, I have a date with the doping people after this. Today is a very good day. I'm enjoying it immensely, uh, and will be enjoying it some more. Uh, anyway, uh, King H8 is an interesting idea. Black can start some counterplay uh, on on the queen side straight away, like Rook B8 or A6 or something. But uh, but King H8 is a is a completely different approach. Uh, basically, Black wants to play a five and and close down the king side straight away, and and only then do something on the king side. F5 and close the king side and and uh, I don't. I don't know what what Sergei thought about this position. I mean, I'm. I have many options here. I can. I can maybe even take. Take, take, and I don't know. Play like knight g2, e5, bishop h6, rook g8, and some move here. But I thought this might actually be quite good for black because you play bishop f8 probably. I thought I thought, the, I thought if you want to take, I mean, after King H8, you can play knight b2 maybe first. Yes, but uh, 
Uh, but then maybe Sergei you will not play a five. Uh, it's, a, it's a different it's position because now, now you have queen c7. Yes. Rook. And you you tie me to, to, to rookie one and I don't know, let's say uh, a6. Uh, and basically, the point is to, 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 to get the bishop to f4. This is the, the, the whole idea. And uh, keeping, keeping the bishop on c1 wasn't, uh, wasn't what I thought was nice. And also, uh, I became very, very excited by this thing I played in the game. I thought, okay, knight g5, uh, black more or less has to take, hg. Now, bishop takes c6 is a huge threat, so uh, uh, black has a choice between either knight e7, which allows, which allows b4, and uh, well, some sharp play on the queen side, who knows what's going on, but I was quite happy about this. Or queen c7, and now I have this g6 idea. Uh, but honestly, I, I'm no longer so sure this is so good. Maybe maybe I should have started by, uh, by playing knight d2. But then you can play уверен, something like... Maybe now not knight d7? Yeah, but, yeah, and, and, and basically... Uh, it's a bit slower than, than I would have liked. C takes b4 and a5, basically... Uh, you want to play a3 and take with the knight on a3, normally, which is, why, which is why I didn't play knight d2. And also there was an idea of playing a3 here. Yeah, but then b6. But then b6 and now g6, but I think this is too slow. Yeah. H takes the knight d2, bishop b7, knight f3, and I think you're in time simply by play, to play knight d8. Knight g5, bishop g2, and none of this, none of this stuff works. Even, even let's say takes and rook e8, and then knight f8, knight f7. No, but the rook is. Ah, okay. So ah, no, 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 no. Sorry. It's not, it's not, yeah. <laughs> so basically, I'm, I'm one tempo short here. I'm not giving mate. The knight comes to f7, to f8, and then the second knight comes to f7, and, and there's no, no attack, and I'm a pawn down. So, but I was, I was kind of very excited about this idea because I thought, you know, this will, this will lead to a position which is very difficult to assess, and you know. Some very lively play, but uh, I'm not so sure this is good. I mean, I can, I can do some normal stuff, but then I think it will be very close to equality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B, B, B6, Bishop yeah if, B7. if black gets b6 and bishop b7, Если I think the position, the position will, be, will be very, very equal because uh, nobody goes anywhere. Really. Yeah. I mean, I can, let's say, uh, a3, b6, I can play b4 and b5, closing yeah. down the queen side. A3, b6, b5, 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 and knight d2. And okay, draw can more or less be agreed here because uh, nobody will ever do anything. And uh, this wasn't really very exciting for me. So I thought, okay, let's go. Let's go, let's see what happens here. Yeah, but King G8, Rook E8, I, I, I like quite a lot. I think this is very good. And uh, I didn't say anything else. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, here I was, a bit, I was a bit confused. I can still play, I can still play A3. And probably this equalizes because yeah, I think you have to play a five. Uh, because if you play b6, I think now you're not in time. Knight g5, bishop b7, bishop b7. I think you're losing. Takes takes and f3, and you are not in time with knight f8, knight h7. Uh, so basically, I thought a3 kind of forces a5, and now I can play a4. And once again, I think I should be able to hold this position because uh, it will be very difficult for black to come out of the of the of, from his, from his But once again, this was too boring, too boring to do. Even though I, I, I did not really think I was better. It's much more fun to play knight g5, knight f8, g4, and try for something. And uh, knight d8 I quite like, king h2, and here uh, bishop d7 is a very, very good move, I think, because uh, I was kind of mildly optimistic here. I don't know what you thought about this position, but... Yeah, I thought, I thought I'm, I'm in time. After bishop yeah, but, d7. Unfortunately, because if not for bishop d7, I think I, I might have enough here. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, let's say knight f7, I wanted simply to take queen f7 and let's say rook h1. And it's very, very important that the b7 pawn is still hanging. Yes. So you have to waste another tempo on some stupid move like rook b8, and then I will play rook hg1, rook hg1, and I will have some play, yeah. some play on the... Even, even king g3, rook h4. Yeah, or king g3, rook, rook h4, rook, uh, rook h1. Uh, but after bishop d7, yeah, uh, because I thought I can take on f5. I'm not even sure maybe I should have done something else. Mm, no, but that's even worse, I think. Because... Uh, yeah, I was considering this. 
Я думаю, что просто слон d5, даже слон e6. Я абсолютно уверен, что это слон e6. Я Это не срабатывает. Что случилось? Я думал, что здесь я смогу сыграть ферс h3 и был довольно рад этому. Потому что после взятия на g5 владится Уолсон с слоном f6. Я на какое-то время был очень рад этому, а потом увидел f4. Если бы не это, я думаю, что у меня как минимум Думаю, что вот это какая-то ничья, я думаю. If you have to take on, let's say, g1 and play gf6, I will hold. I mean, I'm not better, but but I should be able to make it. Если черные возьмут на g1 и возьмут на f6, то я уже держу это позицию. I mean, let's say g takes f6, rook g1 is potentially maybe already lost for black. I don't know. А вот эта позиция потенциально может быть уже проиграна. No, no, I mean king g7. King king g7. I thought queen h5 wins on the spot. Я думал, что здесь ферзь h5 просто выигрывает. Here I have mate on d6 in the end. Yeah, let's just put this on the board. I should have some fun today. Понял, что этот ход полностью разрушает мою идею, потому что нет полей гладии. Думаю, что я могу просто сдаться здесь. И это немного поставило спиннер в работе. Так что я сыграл ферзь g3. Теперь блэк должен идти... Я думаю, что рук b8 будет немного более... More exciting, but it might get hit. It gets hit in some lines. So rook c8, and I don't know. Not h3 is is correct, I think. I think so. But in this position, I completely forgot about bishop f3. Basically, finally, you know, old age, old age is catching up with me. I, I've been, you know, I controlled the f3 square for so long that the idea that a black piece might actually appear on f3 completely escaped me. Видимо, мой возраст начинает сказываться, потому что я постоянно контролировал пункт f3 и совершенно забыл, что в какой-то момент туда может пойти черный слон. Но что еще мне здесь делать? Не так просто сделать ход. Потому что мой единственный план это играть ферзь h4 или g3. Единственный план, если я захочу ферзь h4, то я могу даже лучше слона f3, то может быть у меня даже лучше, кто знает. Позиция очень острая. Я не уверен, какова оценка. Но, к сожалению, слон приходит. В этой позиции я рассматривал вариант сдачи партии в это время. It wasn't such a bad idea, actually. It would have saved me. It would have saved me quite a lot of time. Партия развивалась. Это была, может быть, не такая плохая идея, потому что сравнивали мне большое количество времени. Yeah, I should, I should go on. And in this position, Sergey surprised me a great deal. Потом решил, что должен продолжать борьбу. Все-таки в этой позиции Сергей меня очень удивил. Why? I didn't say. I mean, I was I was considering bishop takes bishop takes h3, but I didn't like it. Я рассматривал взять на шестой, но мне это не нравилось. Почему просто не сыграть ферзь до семь? А, но после после ферзь я у меня есть. Просто ферзь h5. 
I mean, you, you get the same position with Queen's on, and I think it will be much harder for me to hold because uh, a lot of stuff will always be hanging. И, вероятно, мне сложнее будет удержать ее, потому что очень многих фигур приключения продолжаются. Теперь я думаю, что у меня довольно приличный шанс на ничью. Knight takes g5 is probably also a waste of a tempo somehow. I'm not sure why you took immediately. You can play rook c8, for instance, and maybe win. Win a number of times in the game, but we were both running running a little bit short of time, so this this part of the game wasn't very high quality. And basically, we come to one final moment of idiocy, move forty. И в конце концов мы приходим к одному финальному последнему моменту идиотизма, это сорковой ход. Basically, any move. Make any move. И здесь просто сделали любой ход. Ладья h2, ладья h1. Any move. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter all that much. Just don't play what I played. And I also, I knew I shouldn't be playing this move, but I thought, you know, it's some some kind of a death wish. I want to say, don't know. Basically, if I if I do something like rook h1, black kind of have to play b5, takes takes rook c1, and. Getting this, getting this bishop on h5 back into play is is almost impossible, and even by some miracle, black manages. I'm not sure how, but if but by some miracle, black manages to play g5 and take on e5, he will have so many weaknesses that I think this should be a reasonably simple. Даже если каким-то чудом черному удастся удастся сыграть g5 и взять на e5, то будет столько слабых полей у чего-то, что все равно это будет ничья. Because now I have objects to attack. Теперь у меня есть просто объекты для атаки. But I thought. Let's play bishop g5. Sergey will play some move. I will put the king on f4. No, I thought, why not? And then, slon g5. Sergey will do some move. I put the queen on f4. And with the king on f4, basically nothing can touch me ever, ever again. Sergey on f4, there is absolutely nothing that can touch me. And of course, I knew about the four check, and I knew I should not be allowing this, but I still, I still played bishop g5, which is kind of, kind of. I knew about the four check, and I knew I should not be allowing this, but I still, I still played bishop g5, which is kind of, kind of. I knew about the four check, and I knew I should not be allowing this, but I still, I still played bishop g5, which is kind of, kind of. I knew about the four check, and I knew I should not be allowing this, but I still, I still played bishop g5, which is kind of, kind of. And now, and now I'm in a, in a lot of trouble. And also, uh, I think basically I had a. There was one position in which I could, in which I could play king f4 and king e4. But it's not this position. Basically, after rook f5, if the rook was not on e2 and I could play f4, this would still be maybe tolerable. But unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I can't. So bishop f4 and now g5, and I'm getting mated because the bishop comes to g6. И в этом варианте после слона в четыре же пять я просто получаю мат после слона же шесть. So I have to take with the bishop, and now you know finally I won back the pawn I gave on move fifteen, but my pieces are completely discoordinated. Пешку, которую на пятнадцатом ходу отдал, но мои фигуры просто очень раскоординированы. And to, to be honest, uh, I probably didn't play particularly well, but uh, I was so disgusted with bishop g5 that for a bit I was just making moves. I think, I think this position has to be lost somehow. No, but I think I played more or less fine. Yeah, but uh, first of all, maybe b6 is even stronger, but even, even all this, basically up to here it's all very logical. Yeah, yeah sure. And this position, just play king of five. Yeah, 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 king of five, of course. Just play king of five. Of five. I, think, I, think, I think it should be easy. No, okay, more or less easy. Yeah, I think this is very close, close to, to, very close to lost. Very close to lost. And instead, Sergei yeah, played the bishop eight, like missing progress, king of one, one, and now Piotr. the game sort of starts again. А здесь партия, в общем-то, начинается заново. In fact, for 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 a while, I thought it doesn't really start because it actually finishes. I thought I was making a draw. Да, и в какое-то как на какое-то время я думал на самом деле, что он даже не начинается, за но за просто заканчивается, потому что я сделал ничего. But Sergey had other ideas. Но у Сергея были другие идеи по этому поводу. So I think bishop five is a good move. Думаю, что наш пять хороший ход. And in this position, basically, what I missed is this this idea with rook seven. I thought you have to go for this position, bishop three. Yeah, but takes, I didn't see. Takes rook e two, king c one. This looks a bit scary, but I think I'm holding quite comfortably because rook e seven check is a threat. Страшно, но думаю, что я должен держать. And after rook e two, I think the simplest way actually is to play rook d seven. 
I'm not so sure anymore. Но теперь я to be не уверен, uh, честно говоря. Okay, you played very logically, but yeah, yeah, because the moves the moves I made they seem they seem very very logical. Хаты, I need to делал, activate the rook somehow. Мне нужно как-то активировать uh, ладью. And in this position, I need to be doing something because otherwise the g pawn will just run. Вот so что-то надо делать, иначе просто же пешка yeah, пойдет uh, вперед. G4 should probably be a draw, I thought, because of rook g8. Ничья, из ладья же 8. Uh, king and if g5, I have rook f8, king g3, and rook g8, and I'm actually winning this pawn. Yes. And uh, the moment there is only one g pawn, I'm holding quite easily because uh, I, will just, I will just be giving up the bishop. I mean, rook d4 probably wins the rook here, but it doesn't really matter because I will, I will easily exchange everything on the queen side. So bishop e4 came as a bit of a, an unpleasant surprise because for, when I when I went for this position I didn't see bishop e4 surprise. and I thought uh, I was actually uh, getting away with it and now uh, what I did loses by force. Теперь то что я сделал проигрывает форсированно, к сожалению. But I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Но я не уверен, что мне делать здесь. If I allow g4, если я разрешу, it starts running quite fast. And uh, trying to defend this this position passively is possible, but uh, not much fun. And also, I don't quite believe it will work. So, uh, so uh, the idea was to play rook f8 check, and okay, after king g4, I can't really do much, but I can play because with the king, with the king in front of the pawn, I can start pushing pushing my guys. A for B for B5, and uh, Black needs to spend some time here uh, organizing his pieces, and uh, I think I have drawing chances. But it seems like Bishop F5 is very, very strong, because I, what I missed is B6, basically. I, I thought Rook G8, Rook G6, Rook G7, this is very critical, and now the, the Bishop endgame is, uh, I think, reasonably comfortably yeah. drawn. And in this, in this position, I thought, okay, G4, Rook B7, G3, Rook E7, uh, G2, Rook E1. Maybe I'm also losing here, but this is much less clear. Because, because compared, to the game, compared to the game, I think I get a, a, a number of uh, extra tempi. В сравнении с партией здесь я получаю king несколько лишних темпов. Yeah, and the king on d4, king on d4, it sometimes, sometimes go, goes for the g pawn and sometimes goes for, for the other pawn. Let's say I don't know. I mean, uh, I have no idea. This is a position for for for, for a machine. Uh, it's, it's very hard for human for humans. Uh, on 15 minutes to, to evaluate what's going on, but I thought I have decent drawing chances. But происходит. unfortunately, b6 just kind of finishes the game no, straight, straight away. My, my only chance is king c3, and uh, maybe king f3 is also winning, but it's less clear. Uh, but king e3 is very strong, and now... Uh, no, maybe rook e7 or... But, uh, or is, is, is it the same? But what's the difference? Uh, bishop, bishop, oh, I mean, uh, sorry, rook, rook, yeah, rook e6, rook, rook b6, rook d6. Uh, now, we, now we, maybe I thought bishop f3. Yeah, but I think bishop f3 just wins. Uh, yes, and, and then, okay, rook, rook somewhere, rook a1, c1, uh, and uh, bishop e2. Ah, просто слон e2. Yeah, and I think uh, I think I'm just never in time here. Mm -hmm. uh, because bishop two, bishop two, one is such a huge threat that I'm just I think I'm never in time here. Okay. Uh, okay. And then the game, I mean, uh, more or less anything wins, but Sergey just calculated this this long line because I thought that in the, the most the most technically technically correct way of doing this, I think, was to play bishop d7. And then play g4, g3, because I basically with the king on c3, which has no moves, I can't even push the pawns forward. I was kind of expecting bishop d7 and was wondering if I should just resign here. 
Uh, but King of Two gave me, well, not hope as such. I realized he probably knows how to win, but uh, you know, at least here he needs to calculate some lines. Well, once again, in this position, посчитать. I think Bishop D7 wins on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, then you go King King B4. Yeah, the problem is I I end up with the Queen ah, yeah, C5 okay. basically yes. C4 yeah, C5 G3 C6 Bishop B8. And I have to play King C5, which is kind of Здесь unfortunate. Which is kind of unfortunate because I'm, I'm kind of making a draw, but not quite. <laughs> uh, and, and also, uh, here I think Bishop B4 is winning for the same reason King D4. King D4. No, no, was on King, King E3? Yeah, and King G2. Yeah. Ah, King G2. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see and once again, once again, I have to resign because I, I can't do much. But uh, this, is, this is, I think, most aesthetically pleasing because, uh, you know, it, or, or perhaps the most, uh, the most uh, sort of uh, uh, computer win. Horrifying, <laughs> sadistic way to win because, you know, I finally, I finally get a queen, but I'm, I'm, losing, it, I'm losing it with checks. Потому что я поставил yeah, Трозя, но проиграю его actually, шахами. Sorry, I should have actually checked your technique here, yeah? Yeah, well, then I have very, very important move. Queen, queen B5, yeah. Yeah, yeah queen, B, queen B5. You know, I know, I know. Because, because, I, I, because otherwise, maybe it's a draw. Maybe it's a draw, no, yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not Queen B5, maybe it's a draw. But after Queen B5, yeah, I kind of have to resign, unfortunately. But anyway, Fun, fun game, uh, more fun for some, but still. Забавная fun партия, game. конечно, более, более для кого-то, но тем не менее интересная. Okay, and uh, I have a question to Sergey. Also, after G6, how did you estimate this position? После G6, Сергей, как вы оценивали эту позицию? It was long time ago, I understand, but just. Uh, конечно, это было uh, давно уже, но тем не менее. Okay, I mean, I was, I was actually expecting G6 because it is На самом very, деле, very tempting ожидал. move and. Very logical, and okay. So this is this is maybe dynamic equality, but I was not sure. Потому что он довольно логичный и предполагал, что вероятно это динамическое равновесие, но он не был уверен. Да, вероятно, она должна быть близка к равенству. But didn't you afraid of some eight ideas, you know, with age? There's no choice. You know, it's kind of difficult to be afraid of stuff when you're making only moves. Да, нет выбора. Странно чего-то бояться, когда вы делаете единственные ходы. На вопрос Анастасии по поводу H5. Микрофон. Петр, получается так, что в этом турнире вы в роли Шахрияра Мамедиарова, которому, как известно, ничего сделать сложнее, чем выиграть или проиграть. Вот, э, когда вы уже поняли, что идете по некому такому рваному графику, у вас не возникало мысли чуть-чуть ну, притормозить, одну, сыграть поспокойнее, вот не такие забавные партии, ну, выражаясь ну, вашей Смысла в этом нет никакого. Как бы соблазн такой есть всегда, и опять же, я повторюсь, я уже говорил об этом на одной из пресс-конференций, я как бы для меня, ну, как бы у меня такой многолетний опыт игры как бы в режиме консервации энергии, что понятно, я могу в любой момент к нему вернуться, но то не предметов не для этого с моей точки зрения. И я не, не думаю, что у меня их десятки еще впереди, чтобы в этом конкретном как бы экономить силу. Well, the question was to Peter Swidler. Uh, the journalist said that uh, he's in the role of Shahriyar Mamidyarov at this tournament because Shahriyar said earlier that it's more difficult for him to make a draw than to win or lose a game. Uh, so in this regard, uh, if Peter was uh, thinking about maybe saving some energy and uh, instead of playing these fun games, uh, and Peter said that, uh, well, uh, uh, First of all, uh, maybe this uh, well, this tournament that there are not so many candidates tournament uh, for him to play. So to s preserve energy in this one, it's not uh, what he would like to do. And of course, uh, he said uh, already at one of the press conferences before that uh, he always has this option to go to the uh, energy preserving mode, but uh, he doesn't think it is necessary. Еще вопрос Сергей. Сергей, о чем вы думали вчера после тяжелого поражения и с какими мыслями на сегодняшнюю партию выходили? 
Well, a question to Sergey. Uh, after the loss, uh, difficult loss yesterday, uh, what were you thinking and with which thoughts you came to play today? Ну, конечно, я был вчера очень расстроен, но тем не менее, в принципе, я вчера сыграл полноценную партию, ну, просто где-то в каких-то каких местах я ошибался, но, но, но все равно была борьба, и поэтому и сегодня, мы, сегодня мне тоже хотелось сыграть какую-то тоже полноценную партию. Ну, я получал много, много сообщений с поддержкой после вчерашней партии. Конечно, я всем своим друзьям благодарен, и они мне позволили собраться в нужный момент. Well, of course, I was disappointed after yesterday's game, but I played a full game, uh, which was uh, uh, full of games, so I wanted to come to play today again uh, and uh, to uh, perform a full play today. And, uh, of course, after yesterday's game, I had a lot of messages of support from my friends, and I'm very grateful for that. Players continue to discuss this uh, situation uh, if uh, white wouldn't play G6 and then what would black do? Probably play G6 Himself. It's possible. It's possible just to stop everything and uh, and then B6, Bishop B7. And да, возможно uh, просто все остановить и потом B6, слон B7. I think in this position um, my only chance is to play G4 straight away, but. Думаю, в этой позиции мой единственный шанс сразу сыграть G4. Но кто знает, что будет происходить? Very difficult position to to assess. Очень сложная позиция для оценки. Okay, so thank you very much for your comments. Большое спасибо за комментарии.